You're saying there's a lot of kind of um, inventions and creativity and trying to conjure up wickets and manufacture wickets and just do something that might just get the batter out of out of that little bubble on, on what with a ball that's not doing much on a on a good pitch. You, you're certainly having to keep Jennings yesterday having to use all these kind of resources to try and find a way. Bailey bowls Fuller, driven, textbook drive, but straight to wide mid-off, end of the over, 334 for seven, after 103. I mean, I, I really liked what Nathan Lyon was doing yesterday with almost targeting that leg stump and the pads of the Hampshire players, having those close in catches, because, you know, that's the benefit of having someone like a Nathan Lyon. Yes, he's, he's a spin bowler, but when you look at the, the changing room and the players he he occupies that with with Pat Cummins, Josh Hazelwood, Mitchell Stark. The ideas they've probably you know shared as a, a kind of quartet. Those can now be shared with the, the Lancashire bowlers who carry their own experience. And particularly for some of the younger players in this side, it, it, it was one of those signings where I saw it announced and I went, "That's a good one." You, you want to encourage these types of players to play in the county championship. And I feel I think you and Gemma were speaking about it yesterday that. Some people are against the thought of Australians coming over and getting practice in English conditions. I, I, I disagree. I think it's brilliant to attract the best to our first-class competition. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was uh, it was it was brilliant to watch him yesterday on a pitch that was offering absolutely nothing for him. No run, but yet still he was a, he was a threat. Just a. <laughs> credit to his skill that he had nothing really to work with from the surface but yeah actually I didn't listen to the Tom Press interview but Kevin was saying that you know he was talking about his, his flight and his dip that was the, that was the challenge that he faced yesterday it was, it was really interesting to hear that in fact he's warming up he's not, he bowled 30 overs yesterday so it's obviously in for another another stint in the not too distant future run away down towards deep backward point by Dawson for a single moves on to 80 335 for seven my favorite thing about Nathan Lyre and Lyon is that me and my two friends we had tickets to the men's ashes test at Old Trafford last summer unfortunately we had day five tickets we were a bit optimistic we also wore very optimistic clothing so sat there in the massive scaffolding stand yeah. absolutely freezing desperate to try and see some cricket because we were convinced it was going to be the greatest Ashes test ever. William balls a short ball and a swat away by Fuller off a top edge and he'll get four for it down towards the five leg boundary. That's not where he was aiming as he tries to swap the ball out towards mid wicket and the ball balloons off the bat and disappears down towards um, <laughs> final length for four he moves to 14. It's one thing about James Fuller is that the time he occupies at the crease it's going to be entertaining. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, so we were, at, we were at the test. Okay. Originally, though, we were thinking fancy dress before we saw the forecast. Yeah. So we were like, you know, get into the, the party stand mood, and we were hit by an idea. There's Williams back into uh, Fuller, Ford in defence, and there's no run. Well, there's three of us, so we thought, let's do a little bit of wordplay. We'll go as the Nathan Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> quite yeah. like that, it's quite creative. My friend was fully prepared to get a bold cap on, right. sit there, dressed as Nathan Lyon. My yeah. other friend got to go as a witch. Tell me why I got allocated a wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there for eight hours at Old Trafford, dressed as a wardrobe. How, how did you go dressed as a wardrobe? <laughs> how would you have done? There's Williams and Balls to, uh, to Fuller. That's whipped off the pads to mid on, but for no run. What, how do you begin to do, dress as a wardrobe? I've got a bit of a reputation when I was at university here in Southampton for my fancy dress outfits on socials. Okay. Making the most of cardboard boxes. Oh, uh, right, I, okay. I've previously been an Oxo Cube, Good effort. a Dalek, uh, the Titanic. Um, you were I the even, Titanic? I, I was the Titanic. <laughs> Much happier ending though. I was also a passport, so I feel like I could have done it. Okay. Having that, that kind of system. I'm not sure the person sat behind me would have appreciated. No a wardrobe sitting in front of them. And if you were made out of cardboard, you would have been a bit soggy by the end of the end of the day. So probably for the best. <laughs> Williams back in to full up. And again, that comes back into him as the previous ball did as well. And he defends and there's no run. End of the uh, over, 339 for
up to the much. top to obviously have a look at the yeah. splendid views um, and unfortunately witnessed someone probably fall down half the stand because it was so slippy. Oh, blind. Um, right. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if that ended up in a lawsuit or something, but <laughs> ho hopefully they're all right. I'm sure, hopefully, yes, hopefully. It kept, it's, it's a bit high, isn't it? It is a bit high. I wouldn't get me up the back of that stand. There's absolutely no chance. Well, I, 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 there was a similar stand a few years ago at Gloucestershire, I think, when they hosted one of the England games. And I, we were sat back row of this huge one. And I do remember putting my lunch down on the seat, standing up, and then obviously completely forgetting that the seats flip up behind you and launching a pot of hummus and some cucumber sticks over the back of the stand to the unsuspecting people below. <laughs> So it, it's, a, it's a safety hazard, certainly. Now, change of bowling here as Nathan Lyon. No witch and wardrobe in sight. But he's certainly there, and he's got a slip, leg slip, and a short leg. Dawson on 80 on strike. 339 for seven. Now also deep backward point going out as well. Long on, deep square deep mid-wicket. Not often you would see a field like this to Nathan Lyon, but they're clearly intent on giving Dawson the single here as he bowls to Dawson on the pads. He works the ball out towards deep mid-wicket with ease. They take the single. Score moves to 340. It'll be interesting to see which of the fielders now come inside the ring. That deep point coming in, but the three on the leg side remaining out. So maybe hmm. just a bit of knowledge of the way James Fuller likes to play here. Yep. It's a bit kind of into out, isn't it, this this field. You've got some catches out in the deep, just in case Fuller gets a little bit restless and tries to have a go. And then you've got your close catches in as well, with your leg slip and your short leg slip in place, short mid-wicket. Just as the sun comes out now, it's a bit of a cloudier day, but plenty of people have come in. I'm sure lots of them here to see this man with the ball in hand. As Lyon bowls, slur delivery, driven down the ground by Fuller, out towards that long on fielder. They jog through for a single, 341 for seven. I think Kevin was saying yesterday it was the highest um, crowd for the first day of the first match of the season here for 10 years or something like that. It was two, over 2,000 inside the ground, which was great. As Lyon skips into the crease full again wristily flicked this time by dawson down the ground another single taken 342 for seven i mean I, I feel there's been almost a collective agreement and kind of movement this summer because of what's happening in the world of cricket considering the red ball game as lion balls on the back foot defending this time as Fuller, that you know, people who, who value the game and they love it, I think they're making a, more of an active effort this year to really show that appreciation. So, if people, yes, there are fantastic streams now you can watch it on, but if you have the day off, getting down to your ground and supporting it, I think people are really recognizing the importance of that this season. As Lion Bowles shout for leg before the ball balloons it off into the covers, they scamper through for a quick single underarm throw at the non striker's end stumps. Hands on the head of a few of the Lancashire fielders as we just watch this replay. I guess the consideration of did it pitch in line? I think it probably just did, but there was a bit of height on there as well. Nathan Lyon had his hands on his knees and didn't move until I think the umpire gave him a bit of a nudge to say, you've got to bowl your next delivery, mate. <laughs> as he's in again now. To Dawson, flatter delivery, cautiously pushes it back down the ground and fielding off his own bowling. Nathan Lyon ends up on the floor this time. A bit of help from his teammates to get back to his feet. And that's the end of the over, 343 for seven. Have you, have you guys received confirmation now that last week's county championship game doesn't mm. count as part of Nathan Lyon's allocated games? Yes, yes. That's good news. It is, yeah. I think they, were, they would have been a little bit disappointed had two overs constituted a, a, a match for them but they did have to put the inquiry into Cricket Australia so no he does that that didn't count which is a, a bit of a bonus for them it would have been a, a little bit of a waste um, so he's got this match and then six more he's in which he's available for so it'll be six of the next seven after this one that he's, he's um, allowed to play him I was telling Kevin yesterday, I was reading some quotes from Michael Clark, uh, 
former Australian captain, who has he's been really quite critical of Cricket Australia and their decision to restrict his time here. He, um, he said he you know, didn't understand the, the decision at all. He, for him, it made little sense. And I know that Nathan Lyon said he was disappointed he can't be here all season. He barely comes into the attack from the, the hotel end of the ground. Balls to Fuller, defender, no run. I mean, you know, obviously there is concern for, for workloads, but Nathan Lyon's not a player who is going round playing in these, these franchise leagues. And I listened recently to a great podcast um, which featured David Visa, and I think it's Hitman for Hire, and he speaks about his life going from franchise league to franchise league, and it's relentless, and you're in different time zones and everything. But Nathan Lyon doesn't quite have that lifestyle. It's mainly for Cricket Australia. He's barely over the wicket, fuller, defends, no run. And, you know, he's in such good fitness. He's at the peak of his game. You know, if I was Cricket Australia, I'd be looking at this and going, take a full season because, you know, might come back round to the next Ashes cycle or even then. I, I, I would agree yeah. with Michael Clark. I think that daft. any exposure to, to different conditions is going to be so helpful. And, you know, I think people in England recognise the the help he's he's going to contribute to the club we mentioned earlier with the players in this team today but obviously lots of talk around how he can help Tom Hartley as well and Lancashire's other young spinners Bailey two to Fuller three four three for seven it's flicked away off his hip behind square on the leg side and uh, they flirt with the idea of two but decide against it uh, Jack Blatherwick's quick across the ground to deny the chance of a second so 344 for seven now I saw Lancashire, of course, signing Chris Green for mm. the T20 Blast. That seems like a, a pretty good signing. Well, it's because of yeah, because Lyon was going to play T20 cricket for them. He was going to play through the, the Blast campaign, and he's not obviously he's not going to play now. So they've had to try and find another option. And uh, yeah, Chris Chris Green signing, which is yeah, quite like that. He's done some BBC commentary. He has, yeah, yeah. On the balcony here at <laughs> Utility Bowl at one stage. Which is the place to be. Well, exactly. No better place to commentate on cricket than on a hotel balcony. <laughs> Especially when it's 30 seconds from your room. There's Bailey into uh, to Dawson. And uh, Dawson off the front foot and defends and there's no run. 3-4-4 four, four for 7. I would say yesterday, I do quite... Uh, I mean, it's all right when it's like this. When it's raining, it's not much fun, is it? But well, it's never much fun anywhere when it's raining. But it is, a, it is a cracking view from up here. I mean, you're a long way from the action, but you are outside, so you do feel like you're still part of it. It's nice to have the atmosphere around you. And to be honest, I, I think it's quite an accurate time for, to remind me to go get my eyesight checked. If I can't see the ball anymore, it's a good reminder. Bailey balls forward, goes Dawson again. Defends to, uh, to mid-off where Bohannon fields, and there's no run. But you do feel as if you're up in the clouds and you could observe every part of the stadium and kind of take in that there's people playing cricket over there on the concourse others are peering down onto the nursery ground to see the second 11 or the southern vipers training and you feel very encompassed in this ground which is obviously sunken into the ground a bit it does mean you're you're sometimes saved from the wind a bit we're probably not but i'm sure the people in the stands are <laughs> and bailey to uh to Dawson off the back foot this time, just trying to find a, a gap through the offside, but uh, rolls it straight into the, the hands of Luke Wells at extra cover, and that completes the the over. So Bailey, having come out of the attack from the pavilion end, returns from the Hilton Hotel end of the ground, just one run off the over, and uh, the score is 344 for seven. Fuller on 16, and Dawson on 82. Lion going to continue. How, how long a spell did he bowl yesterday? Because he got through quite a he few did. overs. I, he bowled most of the afternoon. There must have been, I mean, it, I think he totally got to about 30 overs, was it, yesterday? Thir 32 overs he bowled yesterday. So yeah, he bowled the bulk of the afternoon session. Predominantly, if not exclusively, from that, that far end. And then I think he came into the attack after tea for a little while from the Hilton Hotel under the ground. That's Fuller on the strike. Square legs come inside the ring now from his previous over. He's using his feet, driving down the ground, and Nathan Lyon grabs it with his left hand in his follow-through, staring down the stumps just to check if Liam Dawson had left his ground, and he <laughs> gives him a pat on the back. 
as they avoid a collision. Lyon. Bowls to Dawson. Again, comes down the pitch, works it into the onside, deep mid wicket. A few yards off the boundary. Field, single taken, 345 for seven. Another batting bonus point in sight here for, uh, for Hampshire. 107th over. I mean, at what stage here do you think Lancashire will begin to maybe panic if they haven't taken a wicket by that point? As Lyon was a flatter delivery, turns into the pads of Dawson again, works out towards deep mid wicket, gets a single, 346. I think they're speaking to Tom Bailey last night. They're of the opinion that and what we've seen so far is that it's a really good pitch to bat on. So um, I think that they will. Um, I think they will. They, they would. They would panic particularly. I think they, will, they would back themselves to to get through a new ball, which is the most dangerous part with the Cookerbra. It's Lyon into Fuller and almost tries to get that one away as quick as possible. Played it down into the onside. Square leg fields. It's almost like swatting away a particularly annoying fly. Wasn't comfortable. That is the one thing with Fuller is that he gets runs, he gets them quickly. But sometimes his technique isn't quite suited for the longer format. But this time he gets the ball away a lot more confidently. Again, finds square leg. It's a dot ball. 346. Well, I had some great times watching James Fuller though. A lot of the time where he's been batting with Keith Barker or Kyle Abbott, Mohamed Abbas down at the, the end of the kind of innings and he just, you see the field spread. It's a bit like when you were playing rounders as a kid and <laughs> the field spread for you, you knew it was, it was going to be a good time. They feared you. Lion bowls outside the off stump, defending for the back down the pitch and that's the end of the over 346 for seven after 107 overs and I think we're going to be having a double change as Scott Reid makes way and yet again we're going to be joined by the analyst Simon Hughes and Kevin James shortly to morning advice. Scott morning Simon I'm going to say morning and goodbye because oh. I'm going to go hand over to Kevin Is it something personal Maybe. Can't, can't make any promises. Well, great to hear Melissa back on, on the commentary after a brief interruption yesterday. And uh, the situation here, 346 of 7 Hampshire. So uh, adding a few to the overnight score, having lost one wicket, Ian Holland. But uh, James Fuller and Liam Dawson together doing well here. Dawson on 83, Fuller on 17. Yeah big, miss, partnership. yeah, big miss last night, wasn't it? Dawson on 51. I don't know if you saw that. That cut shot. Oh, uh, I think it was Bailey. Se second slip. Yeah, it? actually. Yeah. No, no, it was in the, in the covers. Will Williams. I, see, I don't think I did see that. Here's Bailey. Switched ends this morning. Length ball to Dawson, who's forward. Plays it out towards extra cover. And it was late on yesterday. In fact, it was off uh, Blatherwick. I missed that. He was on the back foot. Mm. Tried to hit crossback through the covers. Obviously, didn't quite middle it. And Will Williams, it went straight in. in sh it was shortish cover, wasn't in a, a normal position. But I think he got maybe he got slightly um, confused with the with the speed that the ball hit him because it probably didn't hit him as, as, as quickly as he would have expected. In the end, it was a bad miss at that time yeah. at night as Dawson works it away on the leg side for a single and moves on to 84, and it's 347 for seven. I suppose it's one of those things that uh, another aspect of playing with the kookaburra that you perhaps don't think of initially, but because it doesn't do as much out for the seamers, chances come less often. Therefore, you've got to take them. And it's something that obviously has hampered England many times in Australia, which is why the, the whole kookaburra idea has been brought in to try and get teams to be more used to using the kookaburra. And that means taking catches. Bailey into Fuller. Fuller's forward. Pushes that up and punches it up to mid-off. Are you in favour of the Kookaburra ball? No. Would you like to see it all the I way through? I hate it. I think yeah. it's absolute rubbish. I mean, do you know, I, I, I've actually been to the Duke's factory a few times. Um, it's in Walthamstow in East London. And it's a fascinating place. There is a man, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in after this ball, um, who his only job is to put wax on the ball. It's, it's quite interesting. Okay. 
What would his title be? Waxer. <laughs> Bailey. Foolish. And punched up to mid-off this time by Fuller, but can't pierce the field. So one of the things that distinguishes the Duke's ball from any other make, and notably the Kookaburra, is it's handmade, hand-stitched and hand-waxed. And what they do is a, a, a little man sits in the corner of the, of the factory and he, he rubs wax onto the ball. Uh, he heats it up with a naked flame first, mm -hmm. so the wax is nice and soft, and then rubs it into the ball. And the idea of that, after this ball... Bailey, to Fuller. Fuller's on the back foot and works that into the covers, into the gap, but there is a man sweeping. So it's just a single. Fuller moves on to 18, 348 for seven. The, eight, the idea of that wax is to stop the moisture getting into the ball. So these balls are specially adapted for English conditions where we know it's always going to be green and moist for most of the year. And a cricket ball with moisture in the leather, we all know from our days of playing football in the 70s when leather footballs got very heavy with water, didn't they? Yeah. Well, the same happens to a cricket ball as well. And the, the Duke, the top class Duke, has wax applied to the, to the cover of it to stop the, the moisture getting in. OK. Bailey with two slips to Dawson. Dawson pushing that up to mid on. And that's why, you know, th th those balls look so highly polished because they have got that extra layer of wax that's been rubbed carefully in by hand, mm. top grade balls. Uh, and there it is pr as a protective layer, but also it enables that fantastic shine that yeah. you and I have made, made use of occasionally. I always remember you, you, you made more use of the seam, though, didn't you? You oh, weren't really a swing no, bowler, I, was, I thought of myself as a swing bowler, maybe really? I was deluded, yeah. Maybe, oh, God, yeah. I mean, yeah, I tried to swing it away, tried to swing it back, definitely. I mean, maybe over time that ability diminished, but, yeah, I, I loved swinging the ball, and so did you, right? Well, well, yeah, I wasn't really a seamer, I was more swing. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know, I, I, my memory of you... That's why both you couldn't wear that on me, because you thought well, I was a seam right. bowler. Well, I, I made you look world-class. <laughs> Uh, and you weren't far short, to be fair. Oh, but, um, <laughs> well, no, but uh, uh, my, just my memory my of you mind, was maybe. always more that you hit the scene more. But may maybe over time that's become clouded. I don't mm. know. No, I was, I, well, if you asked Mike really, my first captain, he'd say I was a swing bowler. Right. But okay. anyway, you know, so long ago, I can't remember really. <laughs> I can't remember making the ball do anything. <laughs> anyway, we've got Nathan Lyon bowling from the far end, bowling round the wicket to James Fuller, who's on 18. He's been uh, purposeful already, even though he hasn't been out there long. And he just clips this one into the leg side. There's three men around the bat, a slip, a backward short leg and a forward short leg. And just two in the offside. So he's trying to induce the, the, the off drive against the spin, perhaps, with no extra cover in place there. In fact, he tries to do that off the back foot. Uh, doesn't manage to find the gap, but he looked there to steer it into that extra cover region off the back foot. Lion jumped up in anticipation of a <laughs> possible inside edge or drag on or something. Didn't you just love see. his enthusiasm yesterday, yeah, Nathan yeah, Lyon? Brilliant. 32 overs yesterday, Fantastic. he was yeah. top class. He was. Here he comes again, bowls, turned into the leg side by Fuller, no run. Yeah, brilliant. I think there are some spinners that can be over the top. Yeah. when they bowl, mm. almost like they think there's a wicket coming every ball. I didn't get that feeling with him, although, it, well, in a more, not um, not subdued, but, a, you know, a more introverted way. He's still excitable, every ball, isn't he? Here he comes again, bowls tossed up a little bit more, and Fuller read that well, actually, got onto the back foot, it was a little bit slower. He had time to work that into the leg side. Picks up a run uh, with the man out at deep mid-wicket, so... Good uh, rotation of the strike, which is a key thing, of course, against spin. Dawson now takes over, 84. And man goes back at deep cover, just behind the square. Lion again bowls, and Lawson's, Dawson's back, trying to find that gap up long on, but Lion's across, as Kevin James says, enthusiastically diving oh. across to stop that one, to prevent a single. It's great, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I, I can't keep my eyes off him in a way. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, could, I was just thinking of other Australians I played with, actually. Here's Lyon again, he bowls and tossed up and <laughs> turned into the leg side and just short of the man or wide of the man, at wide mid on. Uh, 350 comes up for Hampshire at the end of that Nathan Lyon over, Dawson on to 85. I played with Dean Jones, the, the, yes. the sadly late Dean Jones uh, at Durham. And the 
injection of energy and enthusiasm that he brought. You know, there are always going to be players like that that are homegrown as well, aren't there? Yeah. But he was amazing. He was just, he was someone actually that you wanted to play with because he made you feel a, a million dollars or 10 foot tall or whatever. Yeah. You didn't want to play against him because he was an absolutely savage chirper sledger. Yeah. You know, and you could see why he was unpopular because he just said horrible things if you were the opposition <laughs> and, you know, blew up, blew smoke up your bum if you were, <laughs> if you were his team. <laughs> I can, imagine, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine he was great to play alongside. I did. Have, I did actually play against him. Yeah. When he had a short spell at Derbyshire. Ah. You may remember. Yes. He was captain there. Wasn't yes, he? he was, and uh, I remember a game at Chesterfield mm. where he was captain. And actually, as Bailey comes in, started you over. It's a low full toss, which Dawson punches up to mid on. And that is uh, fielded by Nathan Lyon. And actually, he was he was all right actually because he came in the dressing room because there was a lot of rain in that mm. game, and um, he obviously knew one or two of our guys and what have you. And uh, I could tell the way he came into our dressing room and chatted with them and sort of included one or two of us. But you know, then I thought, yeah, this guy's a top good bloke, but he did have a huge reputation for being the other way, didn't he? Mighty fine player, that's for sure. Slower ball. Dawson waits and guides it with the face of the bat opened to Gully. That there is no run. I mean, he just had, he was someone that, you know, in the field, he would just be geeing people up all the time and throwing himself in the path of the ball and hurling it back to the keeper. And there was that sort of buzz around the bat when he was in the sort of slip cordon or gully yeah. or whatever, you know, that just lifted everybody. And also, you, you want to star, don't you? You want to show off to, to those sort of players as well. Agreed. Bailey runs away from us. Dawson. Off the back foot, pushes that into the covers. No I, run. I, I, I thought because there was a lot of negativity when Steve Smith played three games for Sussex last year, and you know I could sort of see that because people were saying, well, he was taking the spot of a young Sussex player. But I just think a player around for that short period just lifts everybody. You, know, you all want to impress him. He'll, you'll see him uh, close at hand. How he operates, how he practices, his slight obsessions with various things. I say slight obsessions. No, I, I, I talked to Ricky Ponting about um, about Steve Smith. Uh -huh. I'll tell you after this ball. Bailey. Cut by Dawson. There's a man out to, to deep backward point. Dawson moves on to 86 with that single. 3.51 for seven. Um, we were talking about Smith. And we're saying, um, someone said, he's a bit on the spectrum, Steve Smith, isn't he? And Ponting said, he is the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I know that... It's interesting because in our BBC office in Southampton, there are many people there that uh, don't really give too much about cricket, don't know anything about it, wouldn't give it a second thought. And yet when it was announced that Steve Smith was going to play down the road at Sussex, one or two people came up to me and said, couldn't get any tickets for that game, could you? We'd love to go and watch it. So it, it's amazing how yeah. one or two players right. can just create that interest. Absolutely. Bailey in again, he's got two men on the drive on the leg side. There's a drive, but it's gone straight down the ground. Good diving stop from Nathan Lyon. Oh, there's the enthusiasm. Even though he's got he's got through 35 overs yeah, in a day and a bit. That was like a 20-year-old playing his first game. Yeah, I mean, Ian Holland, the, the, the Hampshire player, said to me before the game, he said, I'm really looking forward to this game. I'm really looking forward to playing against Lathan Lyon. Yeah. Obviously, brought up in Australia, very familiar with Lyon. Yeah. Probably played against him in club cricket, maybe. But, you know, he just said, oh, I'm really excited to play against him. It just lifts everybody, doesn't it? The it presence of a, of a star player. No, I mentioned this early, uh, yours, that uh, I spoke to Tom Press last night. Has uh -huh. come slightly wider the crease here, Bailey. And Ooh. that's it. Says it caught through to the keeper. It has. He's taken a great catch. Uh, low down has Matthew Hurst. And that is the end of Liam Dawson on 86. It's the second wicket of the morning. And uh, Hampshire find themselves on 352 now uh, for eight. And that was a very good catch, as you say. And we saw on the replay there that... But the bowler, Bailey, went slightly wide. He did, he did something different with his run-up. He came in at a different angle and uh, just bowled it from slightly wider the crease. Uh, big round of applause for Liam Dawson. That's an excellent innings. He, uh, he came in a sort of team in, in a goodish position, but he's really capitalised on it and uh, taken Hampshire past 350 and probably deserved 100, actually, the way he played, but uh, wasn't to be. And... It's interesting, isn't it, how when a bowler uses that sort of approach, 
and Jimmy Anderson, Mark Wood are, are bowlers who do that. We can see uh, on the stream here the replay again, actually, and you can see there he is coming in from slightly acute angle, different from normal. It just puts the batsman off slightly. The batsman might think that that ball was attempted to angle in because it's come from wide, and that accounts for why Dawson looked to try and sort of force that off the back foot through the offside, thinking the ball was being angled in and it was giving him a bit of room. But actually, I think it probably left him slightly. Mm. off the pitch got a little edge brilliant catch though because the, the keeper was starting to go to the leg side because of the angle that that Bailey was bowling from and then had to completely you know quickly change direction and pick it up I think he got two hands to it didn't he but yeah. it was a tricky low catch which was very well taken it certainly was that was the same combination that got rid of Ali Orr uh, yesterday morning caught Matthew Hurst bowled Tom Bailey you were in the middle of a story there, I think. I was. can't even remember what was, it was. No, I can't. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. My memory's not like what it was, yours. I'm surprised I can remember your name for all this time. All that <laughs> tell, time. Us about, tell us about the man who couldn't remember your name. <laughs> well, we mentioned this off air yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. You told me this story because I didn't know it. And I still tell this story from time <laughs> to time, and I love it. We both joined Middlesex in 1980, didn't we? So that shows how old we were. God. And uh, Mike really loved you. He didn't like young players, did he? He loved old players. Do you remember Meth um, Dermot Monteith that was brought yeah. back? The very old well, Fred Tipmus Irish. Came. Fred, Fred Tipmus, Tipmus played when he was 54. And who was made 12th man? Me. Yeah. He turned up just at the last minute to say hello to the lads. And Briz, Briz said to him, Fred, we need another spinner. You're playing. Yeah. Got him a bare, pair of boots. And he played into his fourth decade or something. That's anyway, right, yeah. sorry. The man with four toes on one foot, wasn't he? Cause we be we better watch. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we better watch uh, Lion bowl this this uh, next over. We've got Carl Abbott at the crease now with Hampshire 352 for eight, but he's bowling at James Fuller at the moment, who's on 20. So you, you're not going to have time to tell us. That's next over. Really. You have to wait till the, till it's a seam of bowling. We still laughed it? yesterday, yeah, and we no, both know it. Brilliant story. Brilliant. Can't wait. Just give us a couple of minutes as <laughs> uh, Lion bowls, and it's worked into the leg side by Fuller, who picks up an easy single. You can, you can sort of you can you can start off now, Kev, actually, quickly, because there's a change round now with a batsman taking guard. Right, OK, so it's, uh, we both started in 1980, so we both had a year on the Middlesex staff. Uh, Mike Brilly was captain, and then pre-season in 1981, uh, we started whenever it was in April, early yeah, April, wasn't about it? About this time of year, wasn't it? Yeah. April, yeah. Uh, the, whatever, the 5th or something. Here's a, a delivery from Lyme, pushed into the leg side, defended by... Carl Abbott, who has no mean pretensions as a batsman, he can certainly wield the long handle, and there's a long on and a deep mid wicket in respect to that. And two men catching on the leg side, and one at slip. More from Kev's <laughs> memories in a minute as <laughs> Abbott tries to drive that one past Lyon, but Lyon is quick across the stumps to field. So no run, 353 for eight, Hampshire, with uh, Carl Abbott just new to the crease on naught and James Fuller on 21 last man out Dawson for 85 here comes Lyon again round the wicket bowls and slower one that time and he just sort of poked at it not Abbott but he managed to repel it safely kept it out of the hands of that hovering short leg fielder so one more ball from this Lyon over 36th over of the innings he has 2 for 105 so far he bowls and driven straight to mid-wicket by Abbott. That's the end of the over, 3.53 for eight. Go on. Right, second so 1981, year on the 1981. Pre-season training. Yeah, we all walked through the Grace Gates at various times, ready to start at 10 o'clock or whenever it was. And as I walked up the road behind the main pavilion at Lord's, you were standing there behind the pavilion talking to Mike Brearley. Uh, obviously getting getting in there early. <laughs> for this you can talk about that anyway. anyway yeah. So as I walked past both of you, I said hello, and you both said hello, and I sort of carried on walking to the back door and up the Biblion stairs. And you were anyway. in your, your whites or something? I, I can't mean, remember what I was in. Well, whatever I was in anyway. So I just walked past, didn't think anything of it. And then um, when you eventually finished your conversation with Mike Brilliant and came up to the dressing room, uh, you, uh, <laughs> uh, you said... Um, after Mike Brearley had said hello to you, he asked me who you were. <laughs> and you've been on the star I've for a year. Star. <laughs> Poor old Briz. I hope he's not listening. Sorry, Mike. If, if, sorry about that story. Yeah. If, uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have told Kev. Uh, here's Bailey. 
who we all know about. There's a slow ball, very well disguised, Ooh. and he's knocked the stumps out at the other end, has James Fuller. Middle stump straight out of the ground with that drive, and it's a very scattered field, mainly on the leg side, because Fuller is playing very positively here. He's on 21, 38 balls faced, 353 for eight. Yeah, so I, I, I quickly realised on the very first day of the, um, not even before the season had started, that I probably wouldn't feature too much that <laughs> year. So, uh, and yeah. and you, were you proved correct? Uh, I can't remember. I'd have to look. I, did, I think I played a couple of games, but that was all a couple of one-day games. Fuller gets a length ball, plays it back to uh, the bowler. I, yeah, I'd, I didn't play that much under Brilly. It was mainly when Mike Gatting became captain that I play a little bit more. You were, you were very unlucky, actually, because, I, I mean, Mike Brilly was... He, he, he was pretty good with people, but sometimes yeah. he just sort of he had a bit of a kind of memory fade, I think, a brain fade. Did he? He must have just forgotten who you were, but <laughs> seems seems a bit harsh, really. <laughs> At least he remembered people's names mostly, because Derek Pringle always tells stories about Keith Fletcher, the Essex captain, and he could never remember anybody's name. Really? No. <laughs> Even in you know people he played with for years. <laughs> uh, Bailey runs away from us. He's got no slips now. Slower ball, pulled away by Fuller, hard out to one of those four men on the leg side boundary in front of Square. They're not all in front of Square, but there's four of them in that area. And Fuller moves on to... It's just 22 there. So, oh, they didn't run. Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did, just a single. He's on 22. I thought he was on 22 before that. Uh, so the Hampshire total moves on to 354 for eight. I've got several uh, emails here, which I think we can weave into our conversations. Uh, yours? Uh -huh. And uh, Sun Cricket, I have to say it slowly because people say that I say the email address too fast. Sonant Cricket at gmail.com. This one's from Ralph Brooker, who's in France. As Bailey comes in, there's two slips now for Kyle Abbott. As you'd expect for the new batter, Abbott plays out into the covers. He says, Morning, Kevin and Simon. Another half century. Look around the first inning scores in the championship. Looks under par. The theory that Smith at Sussex was halting youth development is crazy. Taking that to its logical conclusion, no overseas players? It's not football where teams have no English players, let alone locals. Manchester United of the mid-90s were the only top team to get close. So he's saying that about uh, Smith halting youth development. Players, they would have loved having Absolutely. him around and just sort of what does he do now what, how does he work this out that's what it's all about here's Bailey uh, but he's pushing nice and straight up to mid on well, yeah I mean, I mean it's just a learning experience everybody being around a player like that I mean I speak I spoke to Smith online I, I got to know him actually quite well and had a few calls with him online you learn something every time you talk to him yeah. it, it, something about the game something interesting some observation you know it's fascinating you know he's an absolute cricket badger he can't stop himself I, I he goes to, I mean, he used to say I go to bed at night thinking about Stuart Broad bowling to me and now I can get the runs with three really? slips and a gully and two in the offside yeah he's, he can't he can't rest that's a nice shot by uh, Kyle Abbott pushes that out square on the offside where there's a fielder that's deep the reason because they want to keep Abbott on strike he does take a single he will keep the strike and he's off the mark, 355 for You've got, you've got some other emails, because I, <laughs> yep. I had one here from a Twitter, uh, a tweet yesterday from someone about the stream, actually, just saying, fantastic, watching from Kuala Lumpur. Sharp images, sound and picture quality, and loving the commentary as well. Good, well, that's really nice. If you're watching the live picture feed there, you'll see a scorecard of the uh, Hampshire innings. Top scorers in the innings so far, 86 from Neil Dawson, who uh, beat Tom Prest 85 yesterday by one. I'll read out one or two more emails oh, after Nathan yeah. Lyons over, yeah, because he gets it. through them quick. He does, he does. Shall we time it? Let's put a time yeah, on. on. Hang on, I'll just see if I can. Um, it's bowling um, bowls now to uh, Abbott, who thinks about a big hit there and actually gets it up to long on. And uh, he's got a single, because uh, the men have spread out for... The, the beefy Carl Abbott, so that gets Fuller back on strike. 3.56 for eight, and that's 16 seconds so far in the Nathan line over, uh, with his second ball about to bowl. I think you generally think an over takes two and a half minutes. Jadeja does, probably does it in under two minutes if there's not too many singles. Fuller tries to work that away on the leg side, hit on the pad, the ball ricochets up out to uh, 
uh, sort of short point, but no run ensues. 3.56 for eight, Hampshire. Second day of this four-day championship match against Lancashire. Nathan Lyon, round the wicket from the pavilion end, bowls slower, and uh, Fuller tries to turn that. Hit that, maybe hit that straight into short leg, actually. He got a bit of bat on it, uh, but didn't get a run. So that keeps the score at 356 for eight. A few clouds hovering over. It's a little bit cooler here today, uh, certainly up high here anyway. There's a quite a strong breeze blowing as Lion bowls and a big sweep attempted by Fuller. He's got his leg well outside the off stump. <laughs> the ball cannons off the pads and then sort of bobbles out on the offside. Just have a look at the replay here and see how well he got outside the line there. Well, yeah, actually it turned a bit that. And he, his final stride was outside the off yeah. stump, but his actual initial stride was, was straight down the wicket. He tries to flick this one to find uh, deep mid-wicket and does so. Fuller, uh, so he gets a single, takes him to 23, 3.57 for eight. Just a word or two exchange between Lyon and Fuller there. Probably just saying, yeah, don't want to be playing that sweep, mate. It's a bit too risky on this pitch. <laughs> just a little bit of advice. Shane Wall has we always used to like doing that. You need to oh. have a little word of the non-striker. Here comes Lyon again, bowl slower and Abbott back on the crease. And that's the end of the over. Two minutes and 10 seconds. Wow. Just think how many overs you'd get in a day if everybody bowled at that speed. <coughs> That's incredible, isn't it? That's fast. Go on, you've got email, don't Right, you? OK. Andy Wallace has emailed solentcricket at gmail.com. Andy's in Oxford. Thanks for your great commentary. Made it to the ground yesterday and got my pink headpiece. Great addition to the Here Live. That's the uh, new earpieces that Hampshire are uh, selling the ground. Question on partnership running after the run out yesterday. Do batters practice running between the wickets as a pair with coaches randomly throwing or is it just something that can only be learnt in a match? Good question. That is. And what's your answer? Well, uh, the answer is not really. I, mm. I don't think that really does happen, no. actually. I, I have done it on one occasion uh, when it rained at Horsham mm. with playing Sussex and I ran the captain out Mark Nicholas <laughs> oh good and uh, when we didn't start the next day he made me go out and practice some running between the wickets on the on a wet outfield but that was more of a joke more than you know serious practice but I'll be honest with you in the, all the years I played uh, I don't know about you yours but I don't remember anybody no. specifically practicing calling no I, I mean what you do see quite often is teams practicing with two batsmen in the nets one batsman facing the ball and the other guy, guy non-striker, and the coach says, right, after three balls, I want you to take a quick single. Yeah. And they do, or they run a three or something, which is a, a fitness thing, as well as, a, as it being a, 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 an exercise in running between the wickets, it's also a fitness thing as well. You have to make, run a three after every three balls you face in the nets, and it also rotates the strike. Uh -huh. But there's no fielders involved because it's in the nets, so it isn't really proper practicing running between the wickets. True. Uh, it's me, isn't it? Uh, Luke yes. Wells bowls. Start of a new over for him. The leg spinner. That's a cutaway out into the deep in the covers. Single to Fuller takes him to 24. Useful runs down the order here for Hampshire. 3.58 for eight. Just the two wickets this morning after 15 minutes of play. Ian Holland was LBW to Will Williams for 14. Uh, Holland uh, didn't add to his overnight total. And then Liam Dawson, uh, just about an hour's play this morning, was well caught. By Matthew Hurst, low down to his right, the keeper took it off Tom Bailey, and Dawson made 86. It's a good point though about you know practicing running between the wickets, and it's something that probably teams neglect. That's, those little details are really important, aren't they? I'm just wondering if it's something that might come in. Oh, there's a good drive there down the ground from Kyle Abbott. One bounce for four, just below us. Oh, he got a hold of that well. Just put plonk the foot down. And a swing of the bat through the line of the ball. Well, he doesn't bother with running between the wickets, does he? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's a good strike. That it is. Isn't it? And that's a proper now, shot. why are they bowling wells here, do you think? I mean, they've got other bowlers they could choose with two wickets to take. Blatherwick. Quite a surprise. I agree. Balderson. Yeah. Maybe they think that Abbott will make a mistake. Yeah. Tailenders with a spinner. Have yeah. a go. Yeah. Well, well, whether, if he plays a few more shots like that, I think mm. they'll might call the uh, decision to bowl Wells into question. But well, what a shot that was. I'm still enjoying that in my own mind. 3.62 for eight. The field goes back. 
mainly on the leg side for Abbott. Quicker ball. Abbott's pushing forward out on the offside. Yeah, I, just going back to that run out yeah. thing, I, yeah. I do think it may, be, it may become more of a thing for coaches to practice with their team. Mm. At the moment, it's not, is it? It's no. not. It's, it's the last... It's the last, fa last facet of the game to actually be given too much attention. Yeah, attention. I agree. That's the word I was looking for. Cut yeah. away there by Abbott. I mean, it, it, it is important, and it's interesting. If you look at football, I was reading something. I think it was about Jurgen Klopp, and that he's got a throw-in specialist. You know, right. it's one of his coaches, and uh, that sounds obvious, doesn't it? Really, but uh, it's something that y you, they can afford at Liverpool, but. Yeah. Maybe Hampshire can't afford a, a running between the wickets. <laughs> <laughs> Is there such a thing? Missed cut there from uh, Kyle But I think I, I said, sure, I might apply for that. Well, yeah. A yeah. running between Do the wickets. Know, I mean, if you look at the IPL teams, they have about 20 or five support staff, including throwdown specialists. They really? are actually, there's a job. Many so, jobs right. in the IPL are throwdown specialists. All right. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the sidearm specialist as well. Abbott's on the back foot, plays that back to Wells, and that is the end of the over. It's the end of our stint. Uh, Yoza, you'll be back very this good. afternoon, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, so there's a double change. The uh, next voice you will hear will be uh, Scott Reid from BBC Manchester and BBC uh, Lancashire. And then alongside him, coming back in, will be uh, Melissa Storey. So 362 for eight, Hampshire having resumed this morning on 305 for six, Scott. Cheers, Kevin. Yeah, we've got uh, 45 minutes until the uh, the lunch, uh, scheduled lunch interview uh, interval. But we could, we could go on a little bit longer, I suppose, if Hampshire are nine down. We can potentially just extend that a little bit. Um, we're going to see Nathan Lyon to continue from the pavilion end. Are you OK? What's wrong? I'll explain right, after, okay. after this. OK, he's lying into uh, to, to Fuller. Just kind of hurried him up a little bit. He's off the back foot and drives the ball through mid-off. And we'll come back for a, for a couple. The ball gets cut off. And he's done well, actually. He's timed that nicely as Fuller off the back foot, punching down the ground. Bailey was chasing after it. I think it was... Not sure who that is. It's a long way away. But either way, he's come back for three. Two, 365 for eight. Fuller moves on to 27 now. Well, first of all, it's really smart there because Nathan Lyon coming around the wicket means that he can't get to that area at straightish mid-off as he would usually field in his follow-through. So he knew he just had to get it past the fielder in the ring. He gets forward and defends this time. There's Abbott and there's no run. Um, to explain the mm. laughter at the start, I tried to put the, the headphones on and right. instead pulled it outwards to stretch it around my head and then catapulted it straight back ah. into my face which is how you know it's the start of the season <laughs> it's not ideal we get rusty over the winter <laughs> i get rusty all summer i get rusty as the summer goes on <laughs> i go the other way around three six five for eight he's um, gonna come over the wicket now lion to uh, abbott who plays forward and defends the ball squirts off the inner half of the bat and uh, it's Balderson that comes from backward square leg to field and there's no run. I'm sure you can get a vitamin for that <laughs> cricket season. <laughs> Anti-rusty vitamin. So it's a supplement to keep me going through the summer. Lion balls again. And uh, Abbott smothering this, leaning into it and defending. Hurst comes from behind the stumps. Scoops up the ball and hands it back to Nathan Lyon. There's three around the bat. There's a slip, a leg slip, a forward short leg. There's a short mid wicket. There's a mid off. There's a long on. Um, there's Keaton Jennings. There's a deep mid wicket. Okay, now, but look, it's just to cover this up and defend. The ball drops into the offside. No run. There's a backward square leg and a backward point. It's a 365 for eight. And one ball left at the over. I think if Lancashire can take these final two wickets before Hampshire make it to that 400 mark I would say based on their assessments of this pitch I think that would be a good effort in this first innings Lyon to Abbott he's back and across and very carefully and cautiously works the ball away to mid wicket for no runs so three runs off the over which came off the first ball of the over and it's three six five for eight mainly because these two are incredibly capable in the middle full of 27 and Kyle Abbott on six already I think they'll continue to play their normal game just knock around singles but if another wicket falls whoever is out there with Mohammed Abbas I think that will be the, the kind of time to 
get moving and we might see a little bit of excitement towards mm. the end. Just to read out an email we've got on solentcricket at gmail.com, just from Andrew Ball. A few emails we've been getting about accessing this radio coverage on the BBC app and website. There's been a few changes to the layout. So you have to click on a drop down, which says there's one option for live reporting, but we're under the watch and listen column. That's Luke Wells. Outside the off stop, edged to slip and taken. And it was a good catch high up in the end. Keaton Jennings and Luke Wells takes the important wicket of James Fuller. A bit of extra bounce from that mm. delivery, hitting one of those almost rough areas. And it was a really good take there it from was. Jennings. Up yeah. high, went quick. You see those ones sometimes fly past first slip and you almost look the, see the look of, look of shock and amazement on their face. But he did a really good job just to get behind that. And Hampshire now, nine down, 365. Fuller goes for 27 off 47 balls. You could see from Keaton's reaction, couldn't you, that it, he was a little bit startled himself. I, I, I watch back on the replay here, you can... You can see Keaton in, into position there at first slip, and you watch his reaction as that comes off the off the bat. <laughs> I think that's a terrific take. I know it seems to come right into his his body, right up to his chest, but he kind of stands there and kind of looks in a little bit of shock. Well, my initial slight confusion. It was a thick edge, and as we said, it went flying. But it was the reaction of Matthew Hurst, who kind of looked back, saw the catch get taken cleanly. I don't know whether he thought because of the amount of bounce and turn it got if it had just been off the surface because he looked back at the umpire just to check his finger had gone up but in the end it's a helpful wicket it's Luke Wells' second of this innings two for 29 his figures it's quite a bit of bounce there wasn't it for Wells you do sometimes get here at the utility bowl certain ends just being able to almost enact that bit of extra bounce and you'll tend to see when Hampshire have the ball in hand that Keith Barker in particular, James Fuller like to bowl at those because they hit the pitch that little bit but harder and bowl with a heavy ball. Whilst when the other end can be, you know, a bit more placid, then you, that's when you have Liam Dawson working away and the likes of Mohamed Abbas who can just hit that one area repeatedly. But you, you definitely do see variants in bounce. And there's still a little bit of, of green on the pitch, but there is obvious dark areas of course we know that it's not been the driest start to the season ever so there is going to be <laughs> moisture around there which means that the pitches might come out of these four days looking a bit more rough than they would later on in the summer but certainly that one did uh, did spin did bounce and Mohamed Abbas who is on strike the final batter for Hampshire has five deliveries to face from Wales they've got a slip and a short leg as well as it's in, flat delivery behind it, defending. Here's a bat into the covers, no run. Interesting to see uh, how Luke Wells continues to develop his um, bowling this this season. He he bowls uh, in the T20 blast. He'll bowl his four overs almost certainly in the blast. He's a big part of Lancashire's attack. As he bowls this time on the pads, and it's tickled round the corner down towards fine leg. Now how the bass? Gets off the mark, his first runs of the season, met with a very warm it applause. Was. He's, yeah. he's a hugely popular figure around here and he occupies almost his, his penthouse here in the hotel. He's got a penthouse? Wow, this is the he's most we can offer. Yeah, we've got to treat him like royalty. Does he really have a penthouse in the hotel? He, he does He does occupy here, obviously, for most of the season, Lovely so we've got, to, we've got to treat him well. The Abbas room, is it? Not it? Sure. I, I'd like to think he's got a hot tub. <laughs> as well as bowls full driven down the ground towards the long off and a single taken lovely idea score. 367 for nine i'm trying to think which other perks would be deserving of someone like Mohammed abbas actually i'm not i'm not right in thinking i'm not, i don't know if it was jay Moore mentioned the smith of the year there was it something like manchester city were staying here before a game a season or so ago as well as bowls just Ooh. short of short leg although might just have to have a look at the replay there, whether it did just carry. Either way, it was been a low catch for the fielder. Again, Wells, tall bowler, getting a bit of extra bounce. Got his line right this time, made it awkward for a bass. And it would have been a difficult one for George Bell there. As the fielder cover comes into a catching position. 
really trying to squeeze a bat here. I think I'll be having more around the bat. As well as his bowling, defending is a bass. And it's the end of the over. 367 mm. for nine. 116 overs gone. Yeah, and I'm sure someone told me the story that when City stay here, Pep Guardiola normally has a certain room in the hotel or something, but that was the Abbas room. Abbas yes, was staying in that correct. room. So, Pep, you've got to find somewhere else to stay. It, it's dedicated to him. I think I, I'd like to think they should name it after him, but no, that you, you do get quite a few of the football teams staying here before. I think I came up here, I think, when the Lionesses were staying around the hotel and walking around, and that was pretty cool. I had a chat with two of the Watford players in the lift on the way up. Yes, they're here, aren't they? I saw them this, this morning at breakfast. Yeah. I was also a Pompey fan in the lift, so. <laughs> He was wishing them good luck. He was, you can imagine. <laughs> All the best today, boys. <laughs> Here's Nathan Lyon into uh, to Kyle Abbott. He's coming down the pitch and hammering it back over Lyon's head. It's in the air and taken. Keaton Jennings takes a very, very fine catch. Lyon picks up his third wicket. Abbott's had enough of watching a bass block it at the other end and goes for a big shot, hits it back over Lyon's head. And that's a very good catch by Jennings coming round from the long on boundary running and taking a low catch in front of the pavilion and then instantly sprinting off to put his pads on to open the batting for Lancashire Keaton Jennings that's the end of the Hampshire innings uh, about, uh, Abbott goes for seven and it's uh, Hampshire all out for 367 and Lyon finishes first innings with three wickets and as you said there, credit to Keaton Jennings because we were just describing his wonderful catch in first slip. Then to go out towards the boundary, take a similar, or not really similar, but entirely different catch, it just shows his versatility in the field and, you know, that willingness to put yourself in the key positions at times where this, but actually by taking those last few wickets quite cheaply, I think Lancashire on, on the whole wouldn't be too disappointed with that if they assess this to be a good batting pitch when you look at the reliability of their top order in particular going onto the surface and the style of cricket they play particularly the dependency of the top order I really think that if I was Lancashire I'd be looking at this and going if that new if that new kookaburra ball is just a bit null and void particularly with the sun coming out now we can really maximize it yeah I, th I think they've been pretty pleased with that they've taken the last four wickets for 60 runs Tom Bailey mentioned if they can try and he said that they would, he would they would be really pleased to have knocked Hampshire out for, th for about th about 350. So he's, he's in that region, isn't it? That they were kind of hoping would be the ideal outcome. I agree. I, th I think Lancashire should be pretty pleased with with their with their work this morning with the with the ball. But it runs on the board still, and um, uh, there's a reasonable amount of expectation on Lancashire's top three. There's. Um, with the exception of Tom Bruce, who's played quite a lot of first-class cricket, there's then quite a, a lot of relatively younger players, Bollison, Bell, Hurst in the middle order. So there's a little bit of pressure on the on the top three of Jennings, Wells and Bannon to, to get Lancashire out to a, to a good start. But yeah, I think they've done pretty much all they can do today. It's so just to run you through the Hampshire scorecard quickly before we have a slight break. Ali Orr, new opener for Hampshire, departed early on yesterday, 10 of 42, but actually just before that, Fletcher Middleton was run out for just six. There were a recovery between Nick Gubbins, who scored 50, and James Vince with 56. Tom Prest impressed with 85. Liam Dawson recently dismissed this morning on 86, and then some more of the tail, not necessarily the tail, the lower middle order, Ben Brown with just five, Ian Holland with 14, James Fuller with 27, Kyle Abbott with seven, and Mohamed Abbas, one not out. And then for the bowlers, Tom Bailey, 27 overs, two wickets, 60 runs, Will Williams, 19 overs, two wickets, 49 runs, George Balderson, just the 14 overs, no wickets for him and conceding 60 runs. Nathan Lyon, a valiant effort with well over 30 overs bowled. I think 38 went one there in the end. Went for over 100 but picked up three wickets. Blaverwick, 10 overs for 47. Then Luke Wells with two wickets there at the end. Eight overs for 31. His figures. We'll have a short break and we'll be back with you in around 10 minutes.
don't want to take a, steal your thunder because you probably want to get some out. But I just want to tee something up. In fact, I tell you what, I'll tee it up after this over. Okay. See, I remember this happening before, Kev. As Mohammed Abbas runs in to bowl straight on the target immediately. And Wells drives to mid on. No run. You did this last time. You, you teased a stat for probably around 10 minutes. Yeah. And then you read it out, and I think we'd mentioned it 20 minutes ago. Ah, right. So I, I'm, I'm wary. It's a bit of a letdown, was it? My expectations are always really high, though. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why they have to be particularly good stats that I come out with. I Obviously, do have, on that occasion, it wasn't. I do have a few stats for this afternoon. Do you? I've been comparing both of these teams' performances from 2022 to 2023 in terms of batting, bowling, fielding as a bass. Around the wicket, gets Wells playing at that one. Through to Brown behind the stumps. Bit of liveliness from the crowd here in this push for the home team before the lunch break. They'll love to pick up a wicket or two here. Have to be some good bowling, because this is a strong opening partnership. It certainly is, yeah. Two left-handers as well. So is your stat worth getting out first, or one of your stats worth getting out first before mine, or can yours wait? I think my stats need a bit of time. <laughs> I've written a whole dissertation. Abbas, back of a length, coming down the pitch as well, and just tucks it off the hip to square leg. No run. Lancashire yet to get their first runs on the board. Mohamed Abbas, we were speaking about his slightly exaggerated penthouse suite. Yeah. When he lives in luxury here, doesn't he? I like to imagine a, a four-poster bed with hourly massage and food deliveries. Only the best freshly sourced food as well. As he bowls now, leaving that one alone as well, slightly wider, and he watches it go past into the gloves of Brown. Didn't you love that story about his room? La it was last year, wasn't it? Last me, summer. Me and Scott Reed were speaking about this. Isn't it crazy that mm. he gets priority? Mm. I'm sure there'd be a few people who would take priority. I'm sure if King Charles came to visit. What, and asked him to move out? Yeah. I don't know. I think the, the, the club would put up a bit of resistance. We well, you know that person that did ask him to move out last year. You know the story, don't Pep. you? Yeah, Pep. Yeah, Pep. There's a bass. Full and beating the edge again. Wells this time just on the front foot, leaning into that defence. Was it too much he could do? It's not so much movement in the air, but it's coming through nicely. A good zip. I'm sure, a few of the Hampshire bowlers after the disappointment of that game against Durham being rained off, that they're raring and ready to go. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? Is it nice to be known just by your first name? I mean, when you say Pep, everybody knows immediately who you're talking about. It's like I wonder Beyonce. If that will, well, yeah, Melissa. I wonder if people will come to... As soon as somebody says Melissa, they'll think of you. As a fast ball, defending back down the pitch. Fields and his follow through. And it's the end of the first over. No runs, no wickets. Made and over. Right, this stat, because this is probably timely, this one, because we expect the next bowler to bowl will be Carl Abbott. So here we go. Uh, this is not one of my own stats. This is one that has been passed to me. I think the correct word is stolen. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go as far as that, but I guess it is, really. Uh, one or two people know of this, but I shall now share it with everybody. Now, uh, there has been some stats passing around over the last week or so where somebody has calculated uh, each main county ground, who has the most wickets and the most runs? So we are now talking about the Utilita Bowl in its existence since, what, 2001. Who has taken the most wickets and most runs on this ground? Now, I mention it now because Kyle Abbott has the second most. And he has... Well, the one that's got the most is Dimi Mascarenas on this ground, 190. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Kyle Abbott has 186. Ooh. And here he is, bowling to Jennings. Jennings pushes up to mid on and there's no run. So by simple calculations, if Kyle Abbott gets four wickets in this match, he will equal Dimi Mascarenas' record. 
as having the most wickets on this ground. That is a good stat. Do you like that? I'm so glad I kept my expectations high because they've gone up even more next time you say you've got the stat. I mean, did, did this stat, when you were reading it, do this for every single county, every single ground? I do have that email. Oh. Would you like me to pass it on at some point? Absolutely. Here's Abbott. Bowles and Jennings, pleasant drive up the ground. That should go all the way. And it does. Nice stride from Keaton Jennings, overpitched from Kyle Abbott. And Lancashire get their second innings under their first innings underway. Yeah, that was a glorious drive from mm. Jennings. Just waited on it, didn't have to really put much into it. That's how you know it's a good batting service. Yeah. Just a push, races towards the boundary. Correction. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations well, back down. One eight six is the right figure, but it's actually Dimi Mascarenhas says one eight six, and Kyle Abbott has one eighty two. So still four wickets in this game. Still four wickets behind. Abbott's round the wicket. Oh, he's walking into that, Keaton Jennings. He's on the march. Just nudges that away on the leg side for a single. Lancashire five without loss. So Dimmy's 186 wickets came at 23 apiece. Kyle Abbott's 182 on this ground have come at 19 apiece. I think you'd be, be happy with that. Yeah. So there we go, yeah. And do I do, do you have know, those do you stats. Know what your, your kind of uh, worked away on the leg side, whipped away by Wells for four runs behind Square on the leg side. And Lancashire move on to nine with that loss. Scott was speaking about how Lancashire's middle order's a bit more inexperienced. So even though they have a strong top order, there is more pressure on them. I really like what Wells and Jennings are doing here because you mentioned they've walked down the pitch. Mm. Both, both openers have done that now. It's almost that recognition that we know how this ball is playing. We know there's going to be less sideways movement. It's pretty much blue skies at the moment now. So it's a really good opportunity to put Hampshire under pressure before lunch and just put them off their lines and lengths. Yeah. Seems to be always oh, playing a missing outside the off stump, but that's a better delivery, better line from Abbott. Sometimes you can't help that. A good ball's a good ball, but I think just playing in the minds of the, the, the Hampshire bowlers to say that, you know, we, we know that you're not going to be getting that same kind of movement. So if I'm using my feet, working it into the gaps, then Hampshire's field might spread a bit sooner. They might be forced to even bring a few bowling changes before lunch. I'm sure they'll just want Abbas and Abbott to, to bowl. And I doubt with the 15 minutes remaining, there will be many changes unless Dawson takes one before the lunch break. But it's putting doubt in their minds. Three slips for Abbott. That's pulled away by uh, Wells. But Abbas is down there at fine leg, Fields, and that will be a single to end that over. So we've had two overs, and Lancashire already 10 without loss. And both batters out there in the middle have five apiece. I've got an email through here on solentcricket at gmail.com from Barry. I think this was for you, Kev, when you were suggesting that people get to a certain level of fame when they can only be referred to by their first name. Yes. But Barry has said, hi, Kevin, there is a song by the Almond Band called Sweet Melissa. I'm not aware of. Mm. Not fa I'm not sure I'd fancy being s serenaded with a, a song with my name in it. Sweet Melissa. Is there a is there a song called Sweet Kevin? <laughs> this certainly doesn't refer to me. No. I'm sure we can. Sweet Melissa. The thing is, I mean, if it, if if that song was composed more than twenty odd years ago, then <laughs> obviously not you. A bass bowling, defending, as well as again using his feet. Coming down the pitch. Ten for none, the score. I've got a better knowledge of music than that. Have you? My parents raised me on The Who, Electric Light Orchestra. Did you grow up with listening to that? Yeah. Did you? I went to see the Electric Light Orchestra in Did concert. Did you? Yeah. Oh, Good fun. At Wembley. Yeah. How, how long ago was that? Oh, <laughs> quite a while ago. You don't have to say an exact figure, it's okay. Well, if I'm honest, it was so long ago, I can't remember. 80s. You're talking 80s. Uh, well, no, what am I talking? <laughs> yeah, it might be 80s, actually. There's a bass past the umpire. Back of a length. Using his feet again, Wells. I think, in fact, he's almost in a position out of his crease permanently now. But he guides the ball into the covers for no run. Oh, wow. Where? That comes from your parents. Yeah. The wow. Beatles. Love the Beatles. Yeah. But oh, everyone, I think everyone loves the Beatles. Yeah. I've got really into Carol King recently. It's okay. a, bit of, a bit of soul music. Yeah. You've got to pass the hours by when you're sat in the office. <laughs> yeah. 
as in comes Abbas. Bowls to Wells on the front foot, playing around the front pad, and the ball juts out towards mid wicket. Feel that just pulls out a cloth from back of his trousers to dry it or shine it. I'm assuming shining it because with sunshine beaming down on the ground now, you don't expect there to be any any dampness. But it doesn't look it, does it? Looks, it looks wonderful, and I mean, the, the efforts of all the ground staff around the country to get pitches playable so early on in the season against all the awful weather conditions we've had is a pretty valiant effort. Zabath is in, beats the edge. It's a great contest here between Abbas and Wells. Just looks down the pitch and comes down to give it a tap, exchanges some words with Keaton Jennings. There is a bit of a breeze here. You don't expect it will be influencing things out there in the middle too much, particularly as they're sunken more into the ground. We're having a bit of a gust. Yeah, we here. can feel it. I'm just looking at the flags either side of the uh, Rob Brown's Griff Pavilion. They're not moving at all, are they? The wind's down this end. It's probably because we're closer to the space station than the cricket <laughs> at the moment. There's a bass in defending <laughs> as well. Solidly behind that one. Drives to extra cover. No run. Ten for none, the score. So how can there be gusts down here and yet at the far end nothing? It's weird, isn't it? I've always thought there's been a different kind of atmospheric conditions here at the Aegeus Bowl because I was playing a, ground, a, a game on the nursery ground before where it was snowing where we were sat, but in the distance you could see sunshine. Okay. It, it, it's, it's a bit like the Eden Project. I think that ground's got that's a different climate. <laughs> this one's the gusty one. If you go to the car park, you'll f find a flood. <laughs> Leaving this one as well. Through to Brown. End of the over. Ten for none. Off the first three here. About ten minutes to go till lunch. And another maiden for Mohammed Abbas. But the Eden Project's enclosed. This is fully open. Oh, yeah. That's why I think it's a, it's a, a miracle. You know what the Eden Project has as well? Giant zip wire. That's what we need here. Does it really? Speak about all the entertainment and the shorter format of the game and DJs and dancers and everything. Just need a zip wire going across the ground. For T20s? Yeah. Obviously, there's some issues if you go over the ground as a player hits a six. I'm sure there'll be some paperwork involved with that, but <laughs> add a different perspective. I'm sure people would pay extra to become Spider Cam for just 10, 10 seconds. Here's Abbott from the pavilion end, and he's bowling to Keaton Jennings. He's pushing it out off the front foot into the covers. I think that would be. I think that would complement T20s and the hundred very well. To have a zip wire suspended from a couple of the pylons. Lots of talk about the 100 in the news recently. Private investment being yes. welcomed in. Mm. Might bring a few changes to the structure. Although I've had a really time inter interesting time over the winter listening to kind of players speaking about the schedule, in particular the T20 Blast, um, in a few months' time. Abbott round the wicket again. Jennings just plays, or just gets turned around a fraction as he pushes up to extra cover. And obviously these decisions are being made on a, on a greater scale by people you know, locked away in rooms, but when you're speaking to the players who are actually out there delivering it, and when you look at the T20 schedule this year where players are playing an evening game in one city, having to get back to, to their home club, and then something pointed out by Tamal Mills, I think it was, that even when you're arriving at your club, once you get off the coach, players are then having to drive home, potentially, you know, at one, two in the morning, and then play a T20 the next afternoon. You know, there's serious concerns from the players. James pushes that up to mid-on, yeah. So I just, I mean, it's such an interesting time. I, I don't know if there's ever been, you know, this much discourse around the game when you've got this one almost focus on the white ball game and how to fit it all in and how to introduce private investment but not let it dominate and not lose, you know, the, the identity of all these clubs. And on the other hand, you've got people desperately fighting to, you know, save the red ball game and make sure it remains prominent in our, in our structure. I think... It, there's just so much news happening at the moment. There's Abbott. Jennings pushes that up the ground, hits the stumps, and that's a good stop at uh, mid-off. To quickly change course. Was that Ian Holland? Is that out there? I think it is. Um, no, you're right. Uh, uh, it's interesting. Somebody said to me last night about sort of all that, and you know things might have to change because there was so much more white ball stuff now in the season. 
to cram in and yet we're still trying to play an awful lot of four day games at the same time something's, something's got to give isn't it these players are doing them a lot how about in the sunshine oh he's walking into that one he's <laughs> Jennings and leaves that one alone as he does so I think Ben Brown might be in with a chance of doing an MS Doney behind the stumps here he's got to he's got to isn't just he just keeping an eye on the speed Jennings gets back to the crease I mean one thing is you know will it ever get to a stage where obviously plenty of players are more suited to red ball cricket some more suited to white some have already made that decision that they only want to focus on white ball game or the red ball game will it become a, a point of time where we have four day cricket taking place at the same time as a t20 competition and you know county fans will have to choose which game they they want to go watch more it's true jennings forward that's gone out into the covers end of the over that's a maiden for kyle abbott score remains on 10 without loss Hemp should be in bowl at for 367 uh, a little earlier. That is true, isn't it? Do you go to a Hampshire T20 game or do you go to a Hampshire four-day game? Because if enough players are, are, you know, establishing that distinction between what format they're going to play, mm. can there be scheduling clashes in an, in a, you know, organised fashion? It would obviously be tough on some people because it would force their hand to make a decision. And, mm. you know, lots of people don't want to. They think that playing in the Red Bull game helps their white ball skills and vice versa. But... You, you know, you just don't know what's what's going to happen in, in the next few years. And it's interesting to see that kind of uncertainty as a bass is into Wells, leaves that wider delivery alone. It was full, went through to Brown, quite high on the bounce. But obviously, in the women's game at the moment, we're really shortly going to be finding out the, the kind of allocated tier one counties as a result of Project Darwin. And, you know, if you look at the men's game and think it feels so tumultuous, you know, the women's have gone from having a county structure to that and the Women's Super League, then into eight regions with the Charlotte Edwards Cup and the Rachel Hill Flint Trophy. And now it's going to change all over again. And a lot of the time the women's game, you know, can look to the men's and get an indication of what works, what doesn't, as leaving this one again. And withdrawing his bat from the shot is Wells in a Star Wars-like manner. But, it, you know, it, it's it's so interesting to almost look a few years in the future and go, yes, we have these fixtures scheduled in at an international level, but there's so much doubt around what a, a summer's going to look like for, for domestic and, and county players. It's, it's exciting, own, though. It is. Well, I, it's lovely. I, I, you know, I love all these new innovations, and obviously some work and some don't, but as I, my understanding, you probably know this as well, the Tier 1 women's counties are going to be announced next week, aren't they? It's, it's very soon, I think. Yeah. I think I think the counties will find out at some point next week. The bass bowls full, kept out by Wells. Forced to play that one after a few leaves. Drives to mid on for no run. How long how long after that it is announced publicly, I don't know, but I've I've got a feeling it's somewhere towards the end of next week. And it is going to be interesting because you know, these tier one counties are going to be professional. Tier two and tier three is, uh, are going to be amateur with the hope of eventually making those tiers professional, particularly tier two, because you're going to have to make tier two professional if you have any hopes of doing regulation and promotion. As a bass bowling and just teases Wells into the drive there. Looked to play an expansive shot. He rehearses it now without making the desired contact and Abbas yet to concede a run he's got two balls left in this third over bit of late movement away mm. after it passed Wales so because you did play around these parts but you're now at Gloucestershire you, are you what are you expecting Gloucestershire women to be tier one tier two what do you think I'm I mean it, it's an interesting one in the west country as Abbas comes into bowl on the hip he worked out towards deep square for a single score moves to 11 for none Bass concedes his first run and it's always been that point particularly with the 100 at the moment with Welsh Fire representing all of the, the West Country I don't think anyone's ever going to be too happy you've had um, both Cricket Wales Gloucestershire and Somerset have all put in bids but I think you know there's so many factors they look at they look at financial factors which I know for certain counties has been a point of concern we have Worcestershire and Derbyshire didn't bid for a tier one women's team because they said look we are not in a position to be able to support that and we're going to put our hands up and say that which I thought was pretty admirable to do in in some senses but I mean I'm not sure it's not just the financial factors you know the counties had to go in put in their bid to a, a very esteemed panel of people and try and convince them why they would be appropriate to be tier one as this one's left alone it was wide again Jennings using his feet 
That goes through to the keeper for no run. 11 for none after five overs. But there's going to be some really interesting results from it because, you know, when you look at these regions which have previously been represented, let's say, by the South East Stars, is it going to be Kent or Surrey who become a Tier 1 side? Now, you know, if you're looking at previous results or maybe financial resources, you, you would maybe have two teams in close proximity, but the ECB have stated they want you know, geographically spread out sources so that the whole of England and Wales are represented fully. You know, there's going to be a big clash between, so therefore, Surrey and Kent, Sussex and Hampshire, Durham and Yorkshire. You're going to have the West Country tussle. There seems a few more which are probably a bit more set on. Lancashire, I presume, are going to come out of this as a strong contender for Tier 1. Abbott, with what probably would be the last over before lunch, squares Wells up there a little bit as the ball goes off a thickish outside edge, square on the offside. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what's going to happen. And, you know, particularly as... Some female players, they have become professional, they've settled down, they've brought houses around their previous regional mm. centres and actually might find themselves having brought a house in, you know, by Loughborough and then you're going to have to move yeah. over to Nottingham, you might have to move closer to Birmingham. And, you know, my, my main concern, which I don't actually think is something that's been addressed enough. Abbott in. It's pushed just behind square on the offside. Played late by Wells, he'll pick up a single. He moves on to seven, 12 without loss, Lancashire. It's actually what happens to the existing county women's team. You know, I play county cricket at the moment. I don't play at a level higher than that. If Gloucestershire was to win the tier one bid, our current Gloucestershire women's team, I'm pretty sure from the information we've got, wouldn't, would cease to exist. So what do those players do? They're not professionals. They're working nine to fives. So they've all got, always got limitations on travel, money resources. Will they have to move to their neighbouring county? Mm. That means more travel. That means rebuying all of your kit. You know, there's these under, you know, hidden expenses, which I don't think are being addressed enough for what happens to the current county squad of the tier one counties. Now up to Jennings. Jennings pushes that up to wide mid-off. And obviously there's the opportunity. They might turn around and say, oh, well, you can come trial for this county then to get into Tier 1. But if two players are going for one spot, one of them's been a professional for two years, trains four times a week. One of them trains once a Sunday and works full time. I think it's going to be clear which one's probably going to come out on top. So I don't know. I think, I think it's going to be a really interesting transformation of the women's game. But as it stands, which is completely acceptable because it is in the, the starting you know, stages and the ECB have no obligation to reveal everything to, to people, but I just hope those are addressed in the future. Walking into the shot again, Keaton Jennings, length ball, pushed up to uh, mid on. It's an interesting subject and uh, we think all will be revealed next week, uh, probably towards the end. I would say Lancashire have probably got it sewn up in their area. So I think they would be pretty much a tier one. Which I think is really, if it did happen, I think it would be really fully deserved because yeah. their commitment to Thunder has been outstanding. You see both the women's and men's sides going out on pre-season tours together. There's equality and you know, opportunity of marketing. Yeah. There's some great stuff produced by the county. So. How about again? Left alone outside of the uh, off stump. Hampshire, of course, we're in a straight tussle, really, with Sussex. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, I just We got one ball before lunch. Uh, earlier, we mentioned about the gusts of wind down here, didn't we? And there was nothing up at the uh, far end. Uh, Neil Halsworth uh, uh, from Explorer Coffees, other coffee companies available. Um, I think we, we, we had some nice coffee last year, didn't we, which we spread around the commentary team. Mel's already given me the thumbs up, saying it was lovely. Uh, so uh, we've already congratulated Neil and thanked him on that. But he's just sent me a video. Uh, he's sitting at the pavilion end. I don't think this is going to come out on air. <laughs> There's obviously something going on out there as regards atmospheric conditions. I'm going to play it out at the end of this ball. Oh, is there an edge? Was there an edge? If we won't know because Ben Brown wasn't able to hold on to it. That ball flew a little bit off a length. Surprised Ben Brown as it uh, didn't quite go in the middle of the gloves. It just bounced out. But that's the end of the over and the end of the session with Lancashire 12 without loss. Just before we quickly sum up, just let me play this out and see if it comes up. We'll know if there's any wind at the pavilion end. I hope there's Can no profanities in the background of this video. No. I can't hear a lot, so maybe there's not too much going on over there. That's probably why he sent it. Uh, so thank you, Neil. Just uh, looking at that replay yes. for that final ball before the lunch session, it did move a lot off the pitch, which would suggest an inside edge. And from the body language of the Hampshire fielders, when the catch went down, Brown had to throw himself into the air to try and even get gloves on that. And it just came bouncing out in the end. But I think we'll have to try and zoom in and slow down on that one just to see whether there was a bit of bat involved or whether it was just movement off the surface. Jennings kind of raised his hands up in the air to suggest that 
maybe he didn't get a new bat on that. But either way, Lancashire have got through this half an hour before lunch without losing a wicket. Just the 12 runs off the, on the board, but I think overall both sides will be happy and I think we've got a good afternoon session. We certainly have. So Lancashire 12 without loss at uh, lunch break on day two, replying to the Hampshire all-out total of 367. Hampshire resuming this morning on 305 for six. Liam Dawson out for 86, one of those four wickets this morning. Uh, just moved on from his overnight total of uh, 61. Uh, Will Williams, uh, Tom Bailey, Luke Wells and Nathan Lyon, the wicket takers uh, this morning with uh, Nathan Lyon finishing with three wickets for 110 of just over 38 overs. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Scott Reid as well. Will and, uh, and the analyst uh, will all be back with you this afternoon from a 20 to 2.
and welcome back to the uh, Utilita Bowl where we are about to get underway the afternoon session on day two of this county championship division one season between Hampshire and uh, Lancashire as we head into the second session Lancashire are 12 without loss replying to Hampshire's all-out total earlier this morning for 367 Ian Dawson won a four wickets to fall this morning. He went for 86, having moved his overnight total on for 61. There was a wicket each for Will Williams, Tom Bailey, Luke Wells and Nathan Lyon, the Australian off-spanner Lyon, finishing with three wickets. Uh, Keaton Jennings will resume on five not out. Luke Wells, seven not out. Your commentary team this afternoon is uh, myself, Kevin James, and from BBC Manchester and Lancashire, Scott Reid. And a little later, you'll hear from... Uh, TMS commentator uh, Melissa Story and also the analyst Simon Hughes. That's how we look. And uh, we've had a nice little bit of lunch. Mm. And uh, we're back ready as Mohamed Abbas from round the wicket from our commentary end bowls and forward is Wells. Plays it out on the onside to Kyle Abbott and we are underway. So Hampshire added four wick uh, 62. About 16 overs into it, so it was a good effort from Lancashire yeah. this morning, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. I think yeah. four wickets for 60 runs, and all out for six uh, for 360. I think Lancashire have been pretty happy with the morning's work with the ball. I think so. Here's a bass round the wicket, and Wells is off shot. the back foot and cracks that through the covers. That should go all the way, it does. Nice shot, as Scott Reed says, nicely timed. Was there half a chance before? I was at the back of the, the, the gantry here doing an update. Was, was there half a chance just before lunch? Did Jennings hit it? Did he edge it behind, do you think, or we're not? Oh, when Ben Brown didn't yeah, actually. Uh, didn't well, we weren't it. sure, actually. I mean, obviously, we're quite a big distance away from the action. Uh, it's quite the ball a deviation, certainly, wasn't it? yeah. Deviated the ball, sort of flew through a bit, mm. didn't it? I think it caught Ben Brown by surprise, the pace yeah. that he seemed to gather. Um, yeah, I, I must admit, I didn't ask the question at lunchtime. I thought we were any near the players. It's outside the off stump and left alone. We've got some, what are they, land goals, seagulls? Noisy, aren't they? Very noisy. Mm. Mm. They're a noisy lot here. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah. They're, on the, they're on the prowl for some leftover lunch, aren't they, I think? I think they are. So, uh, yeah, we weren't 100% sure. I don't know if Melissa asked the question. Do we think that might have been an edge that Ben Brown put down at the end? Yes, yeah, Melissa seems sounds to think it was probably more so than not, yeah. Okay. We'll get that confirmed at some point, but I think Mel thinks it was. Yeah. Three slips of weight as uh, Abbas comes in, and that is pushed mid on by a, with a nice straight bat. We saw the full face of the bat there, because <laughs> we're just to the left of the wicket as we look. We saw the, we can't quite see the maker's name, unless your eyes are a lot better than mine, Scott. No, but they are not. But we certainly saw the full face there. He held the line to Luke Wells. So 16 without loss, Lancashire, 351 behind. Hampshire's first innings total. So cricket at gmail.com. I said that quickly, I'll say it slowly. As uh, Abbas bowls, Wells on the back foot, steers that to short mid wicket. Solent cricket at gmail.com on the emails and at Solent Sport on the tweets if you want to be in touch at any point today. We are all good, we are on the BBC Sport website and app. We are on the live picture feed via the Hampshire Cricket website, which I guess is also on the Lancashire Cricket website. It is, yep. There. And we're also live around the ground for the first time here. All working. As the best comes in again, it's turned away wide of short mid-wicket Ian Holland. And they might pick up two here. They do. They turn for two. There's Throw comes in from Ali Orr, and that's the end of first over after lunch. It's 18 without loss. I guess you've got a, a strong and experienced um, top three with Luke Wells and Keaton Jennings and Josh Bahanam will bat at three. Last week, George Balderson batted at four. I, I don't know whether that he'll, he'll bat in that position again this week or whether they might push Tom Bruce up to four and then You've got Balderson, Bell and Hurst as kind of the middle order. So and all three, 
to a lesser extent, Bonson, I guess, but are relatively inexperienced. So there's a little bit of pressure on uh, on Lancashire's top three. Yeah. Try and get through this uh, new Cookerbra ball and try and build a, a base to uh, to go on from. Let's see Kyle Abbott from the pavilion end. And Jennings leaves that one. Just uh, slides through into the gloves of Ben Brown. They've got a leg slip in place for for Keaton for uh, Keaton Jennings. And three slip fielders and. Uh, and a leg slip as well, fine leg, which is a bass. Is um, mid wicket, a mid on, mid off, and backward point. The sun is uh, is shining. Nice, bright start to the afternoon session. Abbott muscling his way back in, and balls around the wicket to, to Jennings. Just turns him round. Jennings defends up towards mid off, and there is um, no run. So 18 without loss. Jennings five and Wells on 13. Those noisy goals appear to have disappeared. Mm. Maybe they've found something to uh, to munch on during the course of the afternoon. And swooping around in front of the hotel, looking for a, some stray chips, perhaps. Some leftover lunch. Abbott to Jennings. It's a fuller ball, which he tries to whip away through the onside. Stifled the peel from the bowler and from the slips. They all went up. And there's Abbott from around the wicket to left hand up. Sliding down the leg side, perhaps. He's certainly shaping to work it to mid wicket. There's the uh, Lancashire captain. With his long sleeves on. Luke Wells at the non striker's end in short sleeves. Two tall left hand opening batters. Abbott in. Jennings on the walk. Just tucking his bat inside the line. Through to the keeper, no run. Left it quite late to do that, Jennings, which got the keeper in the slips quite interested. Mm. He likes a walk, doesn't he? He Keaton? does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He was injured quite a bit last year for you guys, wasn't he? He got injured, uh, yeah, when he was 180 not out in a match at Somerset, <laughs> and, which wasn't ideal. He's in the form of his life. He got a triple century the season before that. He's, he's, and he got this hamstring injury, which kept him out for... I don't know, maybe two or three months. How about to, to Jennings? Leans gently into it and the ball deflects away into the onside, no run. 11 matches he played for you guys. Yeah. Okay, right. But so that's he missed like, three, he didn't missed he? three. I think he, he may have timed it quite well. I think he missed quite a... I think he was right at the back end of that first block of championship matches. So he missed quite a bit of the blast and then was able to come back and play Red Bull cricket later yeah. in, the, in, the, in the season. Because he didn't play against us at Southport, I remember. Because I remember him walking around. Was he injured for that game? Yeah, okay, right. Play that one. Must be, yeah, part of his comeback. He's had a couple of niggling injuries the last couple of years, actually. Again, he comes on the walk and the ball comes into him from Abbott, tries to work it away to the leg side, just drops away into the offside, no run, end of the over. Maiden for Kyle Abbott, 18 without loss. He has a calf injury the last couple of years and that hamstring injury last summer, so I think he's hoping for a injury free year he's probably due one actually good player I know we were keen on him a few years back and when he signed for you Dale Benkinstein mentioned it he said yeah. he tried to sign him when he was head coach here yeah yeah obviously you guys had more money <laughs> <laughs> you just prefer Manchester mate well there's that as well I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah he did say he, I spoke to I spoke to, to Dale in pre-season and I said it must be nice you obviously you know Keaton from your time at Durham he was obviously captain to Keaton wasn't he and he went yeah and I tried to sign him when I was head coach at Hampshire that's right yeah funny when you said that I now remember it I didn't remember it uh, before on that well the bass has looked um, well he's looked a bit threatening hasn't he he's got one or two past the bat he's angling it in and then just getting the ball to straighten off the pitch here he comes to Luke Wells that's straight Wells works it into the leg side that uh, didn't move off the seam at all Wells moves on to 14 19 that loss brings Jennings back on the strike. Um, just going on about Keaton Jennings, really. He did play a test match here for uh, England, a fourth test against India back in 20... Ooh, when was it? Mm. Anyway, he did play a test against <laughs> India. I'll have to look that up. 20. I didn't write down the year. 
Let's have a look. I'll have a look. Uh, yeah, have a look. Play 17 tests in total. King Jennings plays it up to uh, mid on. Uh, I know England won, won the game. He got Norton 36 in that fourth test. I remember it. I think I was here one of the days. Actually, I think I got lucky. I got invited into one of the sponsored suites. Did you? Yeah. Very nice. So I was, I'm not sure I was here the, when you batted on the eight particular day. But 2018. 2018, yeah. It's a bass. Jennings on the back foot. Steers that out into the covers. Really by Prest. Yep. How many caps in the... He's got 17. 17 tests, tests. yeah. Average 25 over those 17. He, he, I remember speaking to him maybe last season or the season before. I can't remember. They are all into one now, but he, he, he was really kind of open and quite honest about his, his England career. Yeah. He said, that I just wasn't good enough. Just He, he, he wasn't good enough at that time. There's a bass. Oh, he's playing a miss in there, having walked down the track again. Yeah, I, there was there was a time when he threatened. He got a couple. Of, he got two yeah. centuries, didn't he? He got two, both in the subcontinent. I think in Sri Lanka and India. He got his two centuries for England. Came away from home. He's very strong and very good against the against the spinners. Batted well in Sri Lanka. Batted well in India for his for two two centuries. But by the I think by the end of his international Test career, as he said to me the other year, he just he just just wasn't quite there for him. Just wasn't wasn't working for it. Drives, widest delivery. Doesn't time that one at all as it goes out to Tom Prest. Yeah, he got 112 against India at the Wankhede Stadium. That's Mumbai, isn't it? 2016. That might have been his debut. Didn't well, that's, yeah, it was his debut. That was, uh, and then 146 not out in the second innings against Sri Lanka in goal, mm -hmm. November 2018. Yep. Yeah, that was his debut, yeah. Not a bad way. Second innings, 112. Got naught in the first innings. <laughs> Good comeback. <laughs> Staring at a pair on his test debut. Oh, he's walking his way down the pitch there as he gets an inside edge onto his pad. There was a stifled appeal because I think as the players went up, they probably realised how far down the track he actually was. Uh, end of the over. How long will it be before Ben Brown maybe stands up? Yeah. 19 without loss, Lancashire. It's in that quite a, quite a bit, actually, in the last season to... Um, when Keaton Jennings is on strike, the keeper comes and stands up. It happened quite a lot at the start of last season. He got out, actually, with the keeper standing up in the first two matches in both innings against Surrey and Essex last season. Either LB or Bold with the keeper standing up and just kind of cramping him for room. So he does kind of use his feet quite a bit and comes down the pitch. Keaton Jennings early in his, in his innings, certainly when the ball's new and it's doing a bit. Second full season as captain. He's a fabulous player, isn't he? He's, he's, uh, been, he's been an absolutely outstanding signing for, for Lancashire. Wells waits. Here's Abbott. Driven away through the offside by Wells. Along the ground, it's bouncing and bobbling its way towards the edge of the square. And uh, Wells, Wells will come back for two. So he moves on to, to 16. Lancashire 21 with that boss. Abbott into his uh, fifth over. So Abbott and Abbas with the the new ball. Yes, Hampshire's much fated pairing over the last few years. Well, where is Barker? Is he injured? He's he? injured. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, he, he looks a bit thinner, Barker, this year. I have to say. Abbott into to, to Wells, who defends with a straight bat on the bounce back to Abbott off his own bowling, no run. He's been quite a bulky character, hasn't mm. he, over the last few years? Very strong, I mean, does a lot of work and what have you. But um, I saw him pre-season on the media day, actually. I just happened to walk past him, and straight away I noticed. I thought, gosh, you've you know, you've just bulked down. Is that the word? I don't know. Whatever you, just, you know, you're not quite as bulky. Slim down, I suppose, is the right word. But it seems to have come with some sort of side effect. Really, he's got. I think it's something like with a knee or thigh okay. somewhere around there. Abbott to Wells, that's run down through Gully, and it's worth at least a couple for him, he might even get four, he, he does, he did not go out that hard at all, just guided the ball down, playing kind of with his, his wrist tucked in 
to his body and with that angled back guiding it between third slip and backward point and four runs safe shot really wasn't it there's no no pushing at it is that the challenge for hampshire do you think uh, kevin again this season to try and keep all three of them fit for the for the season it's key because you've got john turner who of course is rapidly and has rapidly made a name for himself he's actually injured at the moment as well right so he's not able to come in and if Hampshire wanted that option. Brad Wheel was in the 12, was left out. He's had his injury problems, didn't play any championship cricket last year. Only came back by the 50 over competition. So there's, yeah, there's one or two sort of frontline seamers that are struggling a bit injury-wise at the moment. Abbott to Wells. It's a nice shot, just dabbed away through the leg side. There's a short mid-wicket in place. Just bounces to the right of the man there. And Wells gets through for a single, moves on to 21, 26 without loss now, Lancashire. Like but the bulk of the wickets have been taken, well, certainly up until last year, by Abbas, Abbott and Barker. Barker slipped yeah. away a little bit last year. He was also injured a little bit, but wasn't quite happening for him. Fortunately, Liam Dawson came through and picked up 49 wickets, but they very much rely on Abbott and Abbas. Mm. And, of course, with Barker complementing that, they've picked up a lot of wickets over the years. And Jennings on the on the move just drops it into the offside as Abbott comes in again. Actually, good running that he's he's taken a couple of steps down the pitch, just drops it into the offside. Wells is alert to what his captain's thinking at the other end, and they do get through for a single 27 with that loss. Let me give you some examples. 2021, Abbott, Barker, and Abbas, 128 wickets between them. 2022, 160 wickets between them. All, all got 50 plus that was the season wasn't it that was a season where yeah probably yeah that was the one we played you guys yeah it, at the end Abbott to, to Wells it's short and wide of our stump and left end of the over 27 without loss last year a little bit down 117 that was because Barker was well down on 20 um, Abbott 44 Abbas 53 but sort of Dawson made up for Keith Barker last year so yeah and the feeling is really that uh, as a, as a three-pronged attack when mm. Barker's fit it's uh, you know you people feel that really to be effective trio maybe this year might be the last year as a trio so Hampshire's last real chance of having them make a huge influence as regards getting towards a potential championship title not help the fact that as you mentioned John Turner's not fit at the minute you know that's you, right. you need you need good kind of reinforcements there, don't you, to try and manage yeah. those three. I agree. And it's something that's been talked about here for a while, you know, having somebody else that can pick up 50 wickets for you a season. Because I don't know if you were on when we touched on it last uh, yesterday. And, you know, from a Lancashire point of view, you've got Tom Bailey picking up 50 wickets a season for the last few seasons, but you haven't really got much else backing that up. You know, Will Williams last year... 39 wickets, which is second most. You know, you need a little bit more, don't you? And then somebody else chipping in with that money to make a serious challenge, don't you? Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got a bowling change because it's Ian Holland with his medium paces round the wicket. Immediately turned on the leg side by Keaton Jennings for runs. There will be two. Jennings moves on to eight. 29 without loss. Uh, the year before, you got Bailey picking up 52. You got Will Williams 36. It's, it's not really enough, is it, if you want to be a title challenging team? Yep. It, it needs at least two bowlers with 50, and if you can get your third in that bracket, you, you've got a serious chance. Here's Holland again. Again, it's uh, turned away, this time in front of the square, and that's well fielded, but it still brings a single. That is a challenge that Lancashire are trying to w deal with, really. Um, but certainly playing at home. Not so much if you're at outgrounds. If the game's at Southport or Blackpool, you, you're probably going to get a result yeah. one way or the other there. But certainly in Manchester, trying to ball teams out twice. E every championship match there last season was drawn. No one won at no. Old Trafford, either home, you know, either the away side or the home side. So you, you've got to try and find a way of winning games, yeah. home games in particular. Holland, Ooh, slight leading edge there from Wells as it goes out on the offside. And you're right, because, you know, the wickets here and we're already seeing it this year is going to be a little harder for the bowlers you know in the, in the last two or three years generally here if you keep the ball on a good spot and keep it pitched up you're going to be in the wickets generally 
and I think the bowlers are going to find it harder this year. Um, obviously more so now with the Kookaburra balls for four rounds. Here's Holland. It's pushed up to middle. So 50 wickets actually this year would probably generally probably be a bit harder than it was last year, I would say. So anybody that does that again will... Well, it'll, do, it'll be a slightly better effort than the year before, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I think the Hampshire bowlers might find that tougher this year. But, uh, yeah, as well as scoring runs, you've got to, you've got to have your wicket takers. And you? And you need more than one. You need probably more than two. There's Holland. Keeper standing up. Forward. There's Wells. Nice accurate delivery there from Hampshire's Aussie American all-rounder. <laughs> Didn't play for America, I noticed, in the winter this year. That's played in the past. I know when I spoke to him last year, he was hoping to play in some sort of finals or something soon. Okay. I have to ask him about that, actually. Comes in, runs away from us and bowls, and that's hit over the top. That's a lovely shot. It's the right length. And that, even though it plugs in the outfield, it may just touch the rope. It does. A perfectly decent shot there from Wells. It was slightly over pitched there from Ian Holland. It was in the slot. And that ends that over. Holland's first. And Lancashire move on to 30 without loss, although they haven't shown Holland as a completed over. The scoreboard's shown 30 anyway. And Lancashire trail by 333. It's 34 without loss. It's gone up now. Yeah, pretty solid start this by uh, Wells and by Jennings. They do complement each other really well. I mean, they're obviously very similar in stature and build. They're tall guys and both left-hand batters, but they tend to to find ways of scoring in different ways. So even though physically they're very similar, as a bowler, you're having to try and bowl differently to them because they mm. they, they score in different ways. Good they players. score at different paces too. You know, they're good players. Well, his strike rate at the moment is almost double Keaton Jennings. In fact, it is double. Yeah, 25 to Wells from 38 deliveries, 9 to Jennings from 28. There's Kyle Abbott from the pavilion end into uh, to Jennings. He's punched up towards mid on. And there is uh, no run. Luke Wells last year, sort of run wise. I'm not asking you to quote a figure, but I, I mean, generally... I think it was in the 600s. Um, he may be a little bit down from what from what he would he would have... Uh, my notebook's at the back there. So I, I'll look it up for you. I think he... Yeah, p perhaps a little bit down on what he would have would have hoped for, but I kind of give a bit of leeway to opening the batting, haven't you, I suppose? Especially in the time and seasons that you are opening the batting. Forward, solid front foot defensive shot by Keaton Jennings. And uh, rolls slowly to mid on. And there's no run, 34 without loss. Well, we mentioned Jennings' stats, didn't we? So we know that. Um, Luke Wells played 13 matches. Uh, sorry, 13 matches, yeah. 6 7 6 at 33. I still think as an opener, when you get into the 30s, it's sort of all right, isn't it, really? Abbott to uh, to Jennings cracked away can't beat the infield that extra cover no run I'm pretty sure that th those numbers would have been down on the previous year for example I think last year may have just been a slightly, slightly quieter year for for Wells let's have a look got plenty of good starts last year got to kind of 30s and 40s relatively quickly but then perhaps on a few occasions unable to, to, to go on I spoke about this towards the end of last season actually it's left by Jennings it's a full but wide delivery from Abbott through to Ben Brown no run yeah 14 matches mm -hmm. two years ago 991 at 52 yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. probably more his, his level yeah so a bit down yeah last year it felt like last season was a bit down on the previous one and it, and it obviously was Yes, I think that's probably where he would ex expect to be. Cool, you'd be happy with that, averaging 50 every year as a batter, especially an opening batter. 34 without loss. 
Abbott to, to Jennings. Just uh, nudged away off his hip out to the leg side, but for, for no run. Got an email here from Emma Hall, so cricket at gmail.com. Hi, commentary team. A Lancashire fan now down in Devon. Lovely sunny day today. This morning I thought, wouldn't it be great to sit in the sunshine all day? Doing not very much, listening to the Hampshire Lancashire game. However, thought I should be productive, so I got to work in the garden. Oh, steady on. Yeah. However. Oh. Yeah, there is a however. <laughs> should we just wait for this ball and build it up? <laughs> however. Well, this is the final ball of the over, the 12th of Lancashire's first innings. Three slips, fine leg, and the rest all inside the circle. Abbott in to Jennings, in turn to mid-wicket, and there's no run. The maiden over for Kyle Abbott, Lancashire 34 with that loss. However, writes Emma, this morning's thinking must have cursed me as I sprained my ankle in the garden and now being forced to the sofa, foot up on a pile of cushions accompanied by a bag of frozen peas, but at least now I get to listen uninterrupted to the cricket. Uh, P.S. Thanks for all your great work, BBC Cricket and also Lancashire TV. Got to mention in my PhD acknowledgements... <laughs> for keeping me sane during long writing hours. So there we go. And we're with a feet up. Sprained ankle. Yeah, not good. Gardening related injury. Yeah, bag of peas. Bag of peas. So always a bag of peas, isn't it? There's never anything else that you put on this, on something that broccoli, Frozen broccoli, nobody puts that I, on. No one puts they? that on, no. Mm. Frozen cauliflower. Doesn't happen. Yeah. Frozen berries or something, no. doesn't happen. Is it because peas mould better around Could be. It <laughs> could be that, yeah. <laughs> It's a better frozen product yes. to, to, to cover the ankle. Yeah. <laughs> Copy that. Here's Holland, start of a new over. He's round the wicket still. That's flicked away by Wells, who just had to wait momentarily before it beat the inner ring field. He picks up a single. There is a man out deep, at deep mid-wicket. I suppose you couldn't really have frozen carrots. There's too, kind of, there's too many edges on the carrot, isn't there? I mean, yeah. If you tried to, to mould that to your ankle, that could be quite painful. Doesn't work. I just no. wondered if you if you were the inventor of frozen peas that you realised that at the time there would be two uses. <laughs> <laughs> to bring down swelling yes. and nutritious food. If you realised that there was a, an added health benefit. <laughs> 35 without loss then. Jennings faces at the far end as we look. Just turns that away quietly on the leg side. And there's no run. Hazy cloud above us. Bit of sunshine from time to time. It was it, 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 actually just before lunch. It got uh, quite pleasant. There's the view if you're watching on the live picture feed. That's above the hotel here. That uh, big box in the middle. At the top is where we are. <laughs> As the camera pans around, and there it is, look, it's homing in, but not before we see this ball, this next delivery to Jennings, who turns that away to mid-wicket and there's no run. So we're up there, in the gods, mm. lap of the gods, but a great view looking down on the action, not quite in line, close enough. You see the shadows on the pitch as well, so the sun is doing its best to burn through this hazy cloud. This second day of this Division 1 County Championship match between Hampshire and Lancashire, last year's third place team against last year's fifth place team. As Holland comes in, that's full defensive from Jennings. This is a good field to Jennings. I like this. Yes. Keeper standing up. He, look, he got options. Catch it on the leg side. There's three close in on the leg side. And you still got your slip in place. The ball's still pretty new. It's running to its 13th over like this he can't walk into his shots he would do this against a pace, somebody of a Holland's pace wouldn't he he absolutely would yeah. Yeah. yeah so he's been prevented from doing that he might still he might trust himself but he should always run that risk of walking past it as that's a, a nice solid forward defensive up to mid off we saw this quite a bit yesterday when Lancashire were in the even when you think oh, it's a new ball, still relatively new, it's only really maybe in, into its 20th over, something like that. We saw so many catches in front of the bat. Mm. Slips became more and more irrelevant as the day went on yesterday because that's just, it's, it's not where you're going to perhaps get your wickets. You're not going to get too many caught behinds when the ball gets older. You need to find other ways of that's getting right. your wickets. Yeah. I think the second new ball brought one, didn't it? Because it carries. There again is the solid forward defensive of Keaton Jennings and that 
is the end of the over, and that's the end of the stint for me and Scott Reed. There's going to be a double change. Lancashire 35 without loss, Trail Hampshire by 332 on the first innings. Uh, coming up now is the uh, analyst, Simon Hughes. He's still with us. We can't get rid of him. He's still hanging around. And alongside him will be Melissa Story. Simon, welcome back. How rude. What do you mean you can't get rid of me? I love it here. I think it's fantastic. It, I think it was always so difficult when you played for Middlesex because there was no sense of belonging at Lords. Lords is an amazing ground. Obviously, I think Melissa just dropped entire, her entire collection of headwear and glasses and all sorts. She's looking at a picture today, actually. Uh, but you know, the trouble, that's one of the big things with Middlesex is just not knowing or not feeling like it's your home ground, Lords. But this. The, the bowl here, fantastic. Just feels, it feels Hampshire through and through. It, it's certainly custom built that way and it's nice that they've been able to incorporate the, the disability sides and the Vipers into that almost community. It's such a supportive group. As in comes Abbott, bowling from the pavilion end, driven down the ground gloriously by Wells. Makes a good enough contact to go over the boundary rope and away for four Sorry, runs. 39 for none. Nice shot, nice shot. We're looking at the replay on the stream here, and um, it was just over pitched by Abbott a touch, but neatly put away by Luke Wells. Not that much footwork, but uh, that's the modern way, isn't it, really? Get the head going towards the line of the ball, and the, obviously the path of the bat, but the foot doesn't really do a huge amount. It's interesting to think how those techniques have evolved from minimal movement at the crease to lots of trigger movements. That seems to be back to the minimalism now. It's leaving that one alone as Wells watches it through to the gloves of Brown. I mean, I seem to remember going through a period when I was growing up and being coached of you know people telling you to do that trigger backwards and move your bat around almost like Joss Butler does. And actually, a few years later, a coach did point out to me and was like, you're never still at the crease. So you're going to struggle to hit it because you're constantly moving. And now... Well, I say I'm, I'm trying to focus on minimal movement. I'm trying to focus on hitting the ball, Simon. But <laughs> That's the key. Well, I mean, Steve Smith is not, not exactly an example of minimal movement, is he? And he, he does pretty well. It's whatever feels comfortable, I think. As in comes Abbott. Again, bowls full to Wells. Flicks off the pads out towards the boundary at deep mid-wicket. Fielder gets round. It's the shorter side. That side of the utility bowl. But Lancashire still push back for two. 41 for none in the 14th over. Looks very flat at the moment, doesn't it? Well, we were saying off air, how soon would Hampshire be inclined to introduce Liam Dawson? Because we've seen Spin play a pretty prominent role across the first two rounds of this county championship. So I think just with these Kookaburra balls, having that point of difference, having those two different paces operating at either end. But for now, Abbott comes in, back of a length outside the off stump on his tiptoes, playing it down into the covers for no run. Two left-handers, of course, at the crease. I, I noticed Abbott started round the wicket, uh, but he's now gone back to over. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, certain left-handers look very vulnerable. Alex Lease, Durham, I mean, he actually had a nightmare with bowlers bowling round the wicket to him. Um, basically, that cost him his test career, really. But, uh, but a lot of batsmen have worked it out, left-handers, and clearly these two are being targeted over the wicket now. As Abbott to Wells, leaves that one alone, through to Brown. Another dot ball. Abbott, who's gone for 25 runs so far in his seventh over. Just on that topic, I mean, you look at the Australian opening pair, for instance, Warner and Kawaja. Bowlers tend to bowl round the wicket to Warner because Stuart Broad has exposed that weakness, but over the wicket to Kawaja because he's a fiddler outside off stump. And, you know, even for two batsmen in the same team, both batting the same way around, left-handed, bowlers bowling different ways, one over the wicket, one around the wicket. It's that identifying, identifying the strengths and weaknesses yeah. of the individuals is guiding this one past the point fielder who dived towards the ball, outstretched left hand. In the end, covers come round to clean up, brings the ball in a metre or so within the boundary rope and another... Two runs taken, over finishes 44 for none. A good start from Lancashire, who said at the end of yesterday's play that it looked like a good batting surface. Mm. Yeah, well, it's nice colour, isn't it? I mean, it's that sort of uh, um, you know, burgundy, white burgundy sort of colour. Uh, you always think, or maybe a Chablis, you know? If we're, we're in sort of David Gower country here, aren't we? He likes to talk about that as a, 
he likes to use wine as a, a sort of comparison to the wicket colour. The only, and, one, yeah. the only wine I'm familiar with is the one available on the bottom shelf of the supermarket. Okay. So 4 99 Tesco Special. I've actually upgraded myself to £6 recently. Oh, very good. Like you know got, that you've got a job now, Melissa. Come on. You know, you know that um, of the six pounds you're paying for the wine, only about one pound would have gone into the actual wine production. Well, particularly. And the other two pounds is marketing, transport, uh, VAT, etc. Well, you increased taxation on alcohol as well. I'm an expert on that now, Simon. <laughs> you are actually, of course. Of course, you are. This is a first, by the way. M Melissa and I on commentary together. It's a great pleasure to be to be on with you. Um, Good, good new experience, and it's um, Ian Holland to bowl his second over from our end, the Hilton Hotel end, bowling to Luke Wells, just defends up to mid on. There's a couple of men on the catch on the leg side, and three in a ring on the off, and a couple of men back on the leg side. Luke Wells on 35, being dominant, being aggressive, come down the wicket to the opening bowlers a little bit. Yeah, I really like the way the Lancashire batters have been proactive in that sense that they recognise they could get an early advantage on Hampshire if they unsettled their bowlers. And they've done that by getting to this many runs without losing a wicket. Holland down the wicket, uh, down the leg side rather, and that's four byes. Quite a long way down the leg side. He holds out his hand in apology. Ian Holland, the bowler, bowling from around the wicket. Um, he really gave the, the keeper, Brown, not much chance there because he's unsighted by the batsman standing up to the crease and it was really quite wide down the leg side as well. So straight through to the boundary, no touch from anyone, batsman or wicketkeeper. Pretty sure only maybe Sarah Taylor could have got that one in the <laughs> end there. Unfortunate for Brown having come up to the stumps. Again, a tactic we've already seen employed a lot across the county championship, particularly on those pitches which have been a bit slower, you know, edge mm. baston. The keeper went up to the stumps, I think, within the first 20 overs of the innings for the first round. So it's Holland with a, a reasonably long run for his pace, bowling round the wicket to Wells on the leg stump, turned into the leg side, fielded sharply at short mid-wicket. The score, 48 for none, in reply to, what did Hampshire get, 3-6-7 was it? Yeah, 3-6-7. 3-6-7 in the end. What do you make of this field? Because we've got a fine leg, kind of deep-ish mid-wicket. In terms of how Hampshire are, are going to find a wicket and break this opening partnership, like what is the tactic here? Because to me it's not too for, clear. Yeah, hoping for a miscue through mid-wicket. That's a pull from Wells out to deep square leg and a slip by the fielder, but he stops it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if he's hurt himself there. Uh, he's got up in the end. Is that Carl Abbott down there, a deep square leg? I think it's James Fuller. It's James Fuller, right. Thank you for that. Your eyes are better than mine. So anyway, it went through for two. It is actually a bit damp around now. I remember somebody yesterday slipping as they fielded it. It's a 50 up for Lancashire as well. And it's taken them the best part of 15 overs. A good run rate so far, the opening pair, unseparated. And this one is defended from Holland by Luke Wells up to mid on. I mean, the, I suppose the tactic is bowl straight. He's obviously looking to bowl. He's got no one back on the offside here. So he's looking to bowl middle middle and off, maybe middle and leg even, and hope the batsman overbalances and chips a catch into one of these mid wicket fielders uh, or gets, you know, overbalances and misses one and gets LBW. That's probably the tactic. Bowl at the stumps. Bowl maybe just slightly back of a length, try and hit the pitch hard. Holland bowls again, that's slightly back of a length, turned into that one of those two leg side fielders in the catching position on the leg side and there is no run. So Holland mainly there bowling to his field apart from that four byes. 50 for no wicket is the Lancashire score. So, I, I mean, what, I, I, in fact, I chatted to Ian Holland before play, yeah, on the uh, day before the, the start of the game and he said that with the Kookaburra ball, he doesn't swing much, doesn't do anything. So after a few overs of hopefully with the new ball being a bit harder, they try and bowl a bit back of a length and, and try and to really hit the pitch as hard as you can because you can't rely on the, the seam movement that you would have got with a dew. It is that change of tactics as well and an interesting comparison, I guess, to the women's game that obviously with the men playing a longer format, a lot of bowling tactics do revolve around you know that corridor of uncertainty, bringing the slips into play whilst the women play shorter formats and you don't tend to see that many slips in so 
you know, there is the, the um, fact as well that there's more away swing bowlers potentially in the men's game, a lot more bowlers swing the ball in. But it's such a big, almost striving point that, you know, you've always got to keep the stumps in the game. Mm. And I think it, it comes more into the men's when the ball isn't giving you as much, when the conditions aren't giving you as much, then the tactic adjusts from outside off stump to that, that kind of straighter approach. But I think it's interesting to, I guess, look at the, the, the comparisons and it's got to this point where both teams are pretty much recognised, you know, we need to keep the stumps in play because the ball's not doing too much and it's Mohamed Abbas with the ball in hand now from the pavilion end. It's Ooh, four shot. with a glorious on drive past the stumps, down the ground and away for four runs. And Jennings there looking in sublime form. Yeah, he's looking to try and uh, stand out of his crease when he faces the, the medium pace of Abbas. He's quite down the wicket there, making that one. I mean, it probably was a half volley, but he made it into a half volley by his position. Uh, I remember actually um, Jennings when he was playing for England against, I think it was against Pakistan, he stood so far out of his crease the umpires had to warn him because he was standing in the danger area. As Abbas comes around the wicket, this time angled into the hip of Jennings who flicks out towards deep mid wicket or just pick up a leisurely single and the score moves to 55 for none. I'm pretty sure something similar happened to that effect recently in one of the men's tests that the umpire did have to have a word and say that yeah, I mean, he was in, in against, um, I, I think it was against Pakistan, and it was uh, at Headingley uh, in the second test of the series, and he was so far, he was like, he must have been a metre at least out of his crease, trying to negate the movement. And the square leg umpire came and had a word with him, and he had to kind of retreat. <laughs> it seemed a bit unfair. As a bass at the top of his mark, comes in past the umpire now, bowls to... Well, so he just drops his hands on that one. The ball trickles to back point for no run. I always wonder what's the strangest kind of directions or instructions the umpires have had to, to have. Or just, you know, umpires have such interesting experiences out there <laughs> in the middle, but they're often, you know, the, the kind of forgotten puzzle piece in there. Of course, they're all wearing um, GoPros now, aren't they? Yeah, I would love to see almost like a footage at the end mm. of the season when we you know at the end of like a kind of rom-com you get all the the outtakes, the outtakes and the, the yeah. bloopers at the end of the film let's mm. get a blooper reel in the county championship full pushing Ooh, through shot. the onside and finds the gap between mid wicket and mid on it's racing away to the shorter boundary and goes away for four so wells now finding the second boundary of this over he moves to 41 and lancashire Fantastic start for them. 59 for none. That's an indicative uh, sign of a, of a flat pitch. That wasn't a, a bad ball at all. Good length delivery on about off stump. Just eased through the leg side. Hit on the up by Luke Wells. Lovely bit of timing. Placement wide of mid on. Really good shot. It wasn't a big gap there. You, you can see that actually the man at mid on just gone a bit deeper there now. Uh, perhaps to cover that shot. The, in fact, mid on and mid off are really quite deep for a, a seam bowler, more in the sort of positions you'd expect for a spinner. There's a bass under a bit of pressure here. Bowls outside the off stump, driven to wide of mid off. Shy at the non-strikers end stumps as they sneak through for a quick single. And these two looking in fine form, mention the pressure on the top of the order with Lancashire's more inexperienced middle order they can create a foundation just at the top. There's Jennings, you see, where he's standing. He's just standing a little bit out of his crease and trying to get closer to the ball, negate LBW. I'll tell you a story about that in a minute, actually. As a bass comes in, back of a length and pushing back down the pitch. No run. And it's the end of the 16th over. Lancashire 60 for none. Go on, then. So... Yeah, just, just you see here how he, it just enables Jennings to get a bit closer to the ball. In fact, he didn't make a big stride there, and it forces the bowler, because Jennings is a little bit out of his crease, it forces the bowler to go back of a length, and that was the point I was going to make, actually. Uh, it was interesting to find out in the World Test Championship last year, uh, Australia against India, Marnus Labuschain figured out that if he batted further than a couple of metres out of his crease, or a metre out of his crease, it would force the bowlers to go shorter. And he knew, he worked out, that a, a Pat Cummins-type bowler, Jasprit Bumrah, Mohamed Shami, had to bowl 7.9 metres from the stumps. I'll just watch this ball from Ian Holland. It's defended by, by Luke Wells. There's no run. He worked out that 
a Pat Cummins, a, a fast medium bowler, would have to bowl at 7.9 metres to hit the top of off stump. 7.9 metres from the stump to hit the top of off stump. Now, if he batted a little bit out of his crease, that would force the bowler to bowl a fraction shorter than a normal length, and that would be making the ball go over the stumps. So, Labuschagne, that was why he stood out of his crease to force the bowlers to bowl shorter, ruling LBW potentially out of the equation as Holland bowls again, and it's defended again by, by Wells out onto the offside. So it was trying to make the bowler bowl somewhere that he didn't want to. Of course, in Labuschagne's case, it meant he was down the wicket further. And so Bumra and, and Shami just bowl short, and suddenly he was rushed because he was phasing 85 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, and a, a metre closer to it. So in a way, it was counterproductive to Labuschagne, but it's, this is how batsmen work. This is the sort of philosophies they think of, Holland bowls and Luke Wells defends. And as a bowler, you know, you often see in net situations up and down the country, whatever <coughs> level, people come down the wicket to you and you've always got to make that quick decision. Do I try and, you know, bowl a Yorker or do I, as you say, bring back the length and just bowl it a bit shorter to them? Do I try and take pace off it? In your point of view, what is the most effective tool to counter someone coming down the wicket? Is it going to that shorter length or actually is it worth just throwing in that much for the ball now and again and trying to take them off guard? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I mean, uh, as the Holland bowls, lovely drive and it's a no ball as well. Four runs is the uh, result. Certainly a four off the bat anyway, plus the no ball. Wells goes to 46, I think, with that shot. That was a really powerful drive. Again, it wasn't really a half volley. It was on a good length and he just hit through it. Lovely flow of the bat there, straight past the, the line of middle, mid on, uh, sorry, the, the leg stump. We have seen some of the most glorious yeah, on drives yeah. in this innings from Lancashire so far. I think totally. there's been three or four which have just been amazing to watch. I'm sure they'll be on the highlights reel a little later. Mm, 66 for none now, Lancashire, looking strong. Um, I, I think as a bowler, you see a batsman mucking around in his position. I mean, it, is, it does throw you off. You know, you do think... Uh, God, he, he's, he's upsetting my rhythm here. He looks wrong. The batsman looks too close. Holland bowls again and defended by, by Wells. And, and then that, that can make you change your length. It can make you more aggressive. You think, right, what an outrage. This bloke's standing a metre closer to me. You know, that, that's, that's kind of in, that's an in, insult. I'm going to bounce him. And that may be what the batsman wants, is for you to knock it in short, because he's looking, he's trying to force you. There was a chap actually that played for Sussex and Worcestershire called David Smith back in the day, as uh, Holland bowls again, and it's turned into the leg side by Wells. He'll pick up at least a single there, down to deep square leg. David Smith, and James, you'll remember him actually, a big strapping, slightly sort of fearsome looking guy, left-hander, and he would stride up the pitch to you and sort of bunt it. Matthew Hayden, another one. You know, quite intimidating to bowl at. I mean, it's, it's interesting from, I guess, a, a point of view of a player of m in my position. I don't think I've ever bounced a ball higher than someone's knees. So I guess that <laughs> rules out the shorter option to go into. So I've almost tried to... Have you not watched my videos about <laughs> speed up, speeding up your bowling? I, I, I've I done a couple. I will tonight. Yeah, you should. Tonight. You should. There's a few yeah. little techniques you can use. Here's Holland again. Bowls, <laughs> driven by Jennings this time, but it's straight to the man at... A short extra cover so there's no run 67 for none I mean it, it's uh, I've been working with my son Billy on increasing his pace a bit and using a couple of bowling coaches to, to help that a few drills you can do speak to me later Melissa <laughs> every time I, I seem to come into this commentary box I, I learn something last time or last summer I was here and I picked up a bit of an injury and Emily Windsor was doing that game with us and she sent me out a whole physio plan. <laughs> I went back with all the stretches, the exercises I had to do. It was wonderful and now I'm getting bowling tips. It makes it all so worthwhile. Not that it wasn't before. You need a medicine ball if you, if you can because you can do these throws against the wall with a medicine ball, two-handed. Oh yeah, That's I've, one. I've, I've always got a medicine yeah, ball you've on me somewhere. One of those it's, it's always in my handbag. Also, actually. hopping, you can hop along like this, hopping along on one on your back leg, to Fun. strengthen your back leg, sort of transfer to your front leg. Funny you say that already, because I actually hop everywhere already. Do you? Yeah. You're hopping now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're commentating on one leg. You're David Shepherd. As in comes the bats. Around the wicket, bowls full, just playing under the eye line as well. So he's on 47 now of 61 balls. Lancashire 67 for none. They're scoring at a nice rate here as well. 3.9 the run rate. 
I just love looking at uh, watching Muhammad Abbas uh, bowling and his methods. It just varies his his grip on the ball slightly. Um, every ball, just trying to get something out of the pitch, and he's just always on that relentless line of length, isn't he? As he's in again now to Wells, he's this time on the back foot, squared up slightly as he defends the ball into the covers. Of course, you can get in touch with us at Solent, oh, well, at Solent Sport on Twitter or solentcricket at gmail.com. Solentcricket at gmail.com. I don't know if people will have the same issues with me saying it as when Kevin says it. But either way, we've ha we found out there's been some, some issues. And of course, there's plenty more action going on in the county championship around the country. We can run you through some of those scores as we go through the rest of this Mohamed Abbas over between Essex and Kent. Essex batting first, finished 500 and s apologies, 530 for seven declared as this one's full, clipped to mid-wicket for no run. In reply, Kent, 60 for one. In a game between Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire, Nottinghamshire 399 all out in their first innings. And in reply, Worcestershire, a bit of turmoil, 20 for two. That game between Surrey and Somerset. Somerset 285 all out in Surrey. 192 for one. So tough going for Somerset there at the Oval. A quite highly entertaining game between Warwickshire and Durham. Now, I can confirm that Durham are finally batting. As a bass. Comes into Wells. He clips it into the onside. They run the first one hard. They're going to comfortably come back for second in the end as the fielder cleans up slightly off balance Wales moves to 49 Lancashire 69 for none we, we were just looking at uh, Abbas's run there you know just to to see uh, how, how he approaches bowling um, actually uh, I thought there was a replay coming up there but but there wasn't um, just just looking at the, he's still trying to operate round the wicket and I, find, I love the sort of nice easy rhythm of his bowling his run up his it's not. It's all about the run-up is really important for a bowler to get that momentum, the tempo right, not be too quick or too slow. Sometimes there's, you're leaving too much to chance at the, at the crease if you're too slow. If you're too fast, you can arrive too early and be off balance. As a bass into Wells, he pulls it away down to fine leg, and that single will bring him a half century. 50 of 65 balls striking it. 76. It's been this is, this a is just dominant performance so far yeah, from that, Jennings. It has, isn't it? Apologies from Wells. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it has. It's been very good actually. And um, Abbas, there, you saw, you saw just a little hint of his nice fluid run up. But there's no margin for error on this pitch. And slightly short of a length, it was easily pulled away by Wells. Slightly over pitch, he's driven the ball imperiously. So it's been an impressive innings. As in comes Abbas to Jennings this time, advancing down the pitch, slashing the ball away. There was a shout of catch from one of the fielders. I don't think it was ever in contention. And that finishes the over. Lancashire 70 for none after 18. Just to quickly run you through the rest of those scores. Warwickshire in the end declaring 698 for three. Then in Division 2, Glamorgan 237 all out against Derbyshire, who are 146 for five in their first innings. Yorkshire with 326 all out against Gloucestershire and in reply Gloucestershire 126 for three. That game between Leicestershire and Sussex. Leicestershire 338 all out and Sussex 146 for one. And then finally Northants and Middlesex. Northants still batting in their first innings. They're 499 for five with Emilio Gay scoring 261 in that game against Middlesex. Impressive. Just, yeah, just looking action. quickly, just looking quickly at Mohammed Isran. You can about Mohammed Abbas Isran. You see, we slowed it down there a little bit at the end. Lots of activity right at the, the, the delivery point. This is if you're watching the, the live Hampshire, Hampshire stream, and it was that lovely rhythm he builds up when he's bowling. We'll just have a one more look at it here. You can see how consistent and even that rhythm is. Actually, he transfers the ball from one hand to the other just before he bowls, and then it's the explosion at the crease as well there with a brace front leg. So a change of bowling now uh, at our end. It's uh, Liam Dawson, who I thought might uh, get a go. Uh, Ian Holland couldn't find much with his medium paces, so the spin has been introduced by James Vince, and he's going to start over the wicket to the left-handed Wells. Well, both batsmen are left-handed. Here comes Dawson. 
Hampshire's star of last year and he's immediately edged actually down all along the ground towards the third man boundary. Two fielders in pursuit will pull it in and the batsman have gone through for three. So not probably where he intended that, Wells, but he's riding any luck that he's, he's getting at the moment as well as playing some really fine commanding shots. He was on to 53. Dawson now is going to bowl to Jennings. The score 73 for none, Lancashire. They bowled out Hampshire for 367 this morning. They just had a few overs of batting before lunch. Dawson setting his field. Just bringing the man in at mid on a touch, slightly closer. Um, he's got a man back on the cover boundary. And a man back at deep square leg. Two men close to the fence and the rest around the bat. Cut by Jennings, that's a good shot. Uh, it was a little bit short by Dawson. He's found the gap. Jennings on the offside in front of square. That was a well-timed shot. A little bit rusty delivery from Dawson. First, his first ball in championship cricket this year, maybe, or second ball rather, he's, uh, in some championship cricket this year. Just a fraction short. I just wonder with the, the confidence these two Lancashire openers are batting, whether you know, they didn't want to speak too soon, but Hampshire are looking back and just wishing a few more of their batters had, had gone on past that three-figure mark. Lots of people got starts, but it's a good batting surface. Here comes Dawson again, and another one that's a bit short. This time Jennings hits it in the same spot, but not with quite the same power. And it's retrieved by the, the deep cover fielder. That is Holland, actually, back on the, the cover boundary. Picks it up, and they go through for a couple of runs. So Jennings on to 20 now from 46 balls, 79 for none, Lancashire. The sun retreats behind a cloud. A, a plane has just taken off from Southampton Airport and so has that delivery. That's taken off, whacked over the top by Keaton Jennings. A lovely shot, lofting Liam Dawson for a one bounce four to long on. He's taking the aerial route and a confident shot there. Well, this is great from Lancashire if they can immediately put Liam Dawson under pressure, which they have. Mm. This over's been expensive already. It's gone for 13. Yeah. And he's been so you know, much considered as Hampshire's strike bowler for at least the last season. Dawson again bowls, tossed up a bit more. That was a bit more about that delivery. There's a slight bit of annoyance about it, I think. There's a bit more on that one. And Jennings let it go through to the keeper. And it's not to say, you know, Liam Dawson is experienced. One bad first over won't deter him at all from no. grinding out at one end. Sure. Dawson bowls again and this time padded away by Jennings. So the last two deliveries more what he was looking for. Just a slightly rusty over from Liam Dawson to start his own bowling spell. So 83 for none now in reply to Hampshire's 367. Um, and the field change round now. Uh, batsmen have a quick drink. I'm not surprised actually. 83 for none. They've been out there for an hour and a half. It's the first drinks break I think I've seen in this game so far. Uh, it has been not warm but sunny at least and a uh, nice sort of pleasant environment to be playing. And the pitch. The pitch is flat James isn't it? I mean it's looking good isn't it at the moment. Looking rather ominous for, for Hampshire. I just think as a batter you get past 50 is a pitch that you should be looking to kick on. Two aces in the Hampshire innings, two half centuries. Wells, 53 not out. Is he going to? Is he going to give it away? Mm. Is he going to be bowled out? I don't know. They look strong. These two openers, they don't do. they? They look well set. He played a miss once or twice with the new ball, but apart from that, not a lot to. If you were, if you were numbers three, four, or five, mm. you wouldn't be up there thinking I'm coming in any time soon. Would you? No, number five probably hasn't even got his pads on yet. Nah. Feet up. Here's a bass round the wicket from the pavilion end and bowls, and that's worked into the leg side by Wells for a single. Scoring a good rate here, 80 per 100. It's uh, 84 without loss now. And Wells, 54. 24 to Jennings, who will face the next uh, delivery. Taking guard, Jennings there. I wonder if he's changed his guard at all. He's looking very solid and, and, and like he's he likes batting out of his crease. I wonder whether Brown shouldn't stand up to the stumps actually to stop him doing okay. that. Well he was standing up to Ian Holland wasn't he? Yeah. Obviously feels a bass maybe he's a little quicker.
go. That's forward is Jennings out into the offside. I would say there's probably not a lot of pace difference. No, we've, no. We've both I mean, seen exactly. I mean, if you look at, I mean, look at Jennings. He's looking to just get down the pitch a touch, isn't he? As the bowler bowls, and Abbas is trying to find that edge, trying to find a little bit of movement. But Jennings, so far, yeah. using his reach, using his positioning. Uh, to, to negate any kind of possible movement that, that Avas has found. And, yeah, I mean, Jack Russell would have been straight up to the stump. Yeah, team, I agree. He? I think a few keepers would have been... I'm sure Ben <coughs> Brown is thinking about it. Mm. Look how so close the slip fielder is as well. Agreed. Jennings pushes that up to extra cover once more. A little shorter this time from the pass. So it's unusual, isn't it? Vince is actually closer at first slip. Than, uh, than the wicketkeeper, where he's in his position. When the batsman goes back to his uh, position, you'll see that's Vince's feet just in the back shot there, and he's actually closer than the keeper. Normally, you find first slip is deeper than the keeper, don't you? Now, is that wrong? What's going on there? It's, it's an in indication the bounce is low, isn't it? Yeah. And that the slips are not expecting it to carry very that's much. Right. It's a slowish pitch, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Tom yeah. Press said as much to me yesterday. Here's Abbas again, walking into it is Jennings, as he has done many times. Yeah. All the seamers so far, mainly, mainly Abbas actually. He looks like he's got a lot of time, doesn't he, does, Jennings? Doesn't he? Sort and of strides into the ball and it's almost like um, sort of old-fashioned elegance, isn't it? Sort of Victorian, sort of statuesque sort of style. He reminds me a bit of Truscothic. Yeah, that's a good comparison, like yeah. yeah. And Not uh, quite as aggressive, maybe. No. But the, 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 the strong, almost forward defensive, whether they're mm. walking into the shot or just playing it conventionally. I always think, I don't know about you, Jos, but I always felt some batters seem to have a much wider oh. defence <laughs> than others. <laughs> others. Most, <laughs> most batsmen, in my case. Yeah. Plays that into the ground, Jennings, just momentarily watches where the ball is to make sure it doesn't kick back there, onto There's the some that also seem to have so much time, and you yeah. think, I've really put, I've tried my best to bowl that as quick as possible, and the blokes <laughs> just... So we almost had a cup of tea and a fag before he's actually had to block <laughs> I it. I know. It looks like it's, everything's in slow motion, isn't it? But the balls come out of your hand. Mind in mind was all like that, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, slower. And you think, yeah, they're, they're in position. <laughs> Makes it look so easy. Always, I've told this story a few times, but I remember batting once with Gower. Mm. And there was a Durham seamer who you would have played with, Melvin Betts. Yeah, he was quite quick. He was quick, he was. Well, he, was, he seemed bloody quick when I was batting has turned away on the leg side they will just amble through for a single 84 without loss and I remember um, at the old ground at Southampton and he was bowling at me and he was going through me it was like whoa God, God, it's going oh, blimey you know as it was going past me like a bullet and Gower at the other end would just stroke into it all yeah. the time they were I'm thinking why is he slowed down when he's bowling at Gower <laughs> yeah it just looked that way no, I, I, I remember bowling at Gower yeah. And, and sort of trying my best to get him out and bowling as fast as I could and he would just sort of nonchalantly flick it down to fine leg with it all the time in the world and, and jog, jog down for a single and just say, I remember him saying to me once it's what I call a help pull a help pull, I needed the help <laughs> but it was just a sort of little nonchalant little sort of Oh, I don't need to hit this one for four because there'll be another four boy in it. <laughs> Shall I just um, do yeah, this over and then it's a hand over to Scott? Oh, reverse sweep attempted there and there's a strangled appeal as uh, Jennings tried uh, something more unconventional. He does like the reverse sweep. It's uh, something he plays a lot and we've seen him do it against uh, international opposition, but it didn't come off there. Um, luckily, he got his foot outside the line, so... There was no chance of an LBW. Now he goes back this time, trying to play with the bowler's length there. So the first ball trying to play the reverse sweep or the front foot there going back and forcing it up to long on for a single. Good player of spin, Keaton Jennings, someone who was considered for the England tour of India, but in the end, England stuck with their bad mm. ball opening pair. And they did pretty well, didn't they? Does he score quick enough though for yeah, them? Well, probably, yeah, well, be, I think he's, he's, his scoring rate is reasonably quick. That was a good delivery from Dawson that uh, Luke Wells was a bit late on, actually. It seemed like it just snaked, snaked a bit low. And he just kept it out and bunted it into the offside for a single. So Jennings back on strike. Lancashire 87 now for no wicket in the uh, 20. Fifth, seventh over, is it? I can't read. My eyes are gone. Right, and worked into the leg side this time by by Jennings, straight to the mid-wicket fielder. So Dawson 
not finding the going easy so far. I remember seeing him bowl here at Middlesex. He got 10 in the match, didn't he? At least seven in one innings, and it was turning square. But not this pitch. So over the wicket he comes to Keaton Jennings and nicely worked into the leg side, but adeptly fielded by the short leg and picks it up on the bounce, flicks it back to Dawson, the bowler, tries ferociously to polish the ball on his on his trousers, trying to get a little bit of shine. It's not easy with a kookaburra. They refuse to shine those balls <laughs> after 20 overs or so. Just have that sort of dull kind of look. And here comes Liam Dawson again, bowls and driven crisply by Jennings, but straight to short mid wicket, fielded a diving stop, I think by James Vince. And that's the end of the over, 87 for none. Over to you, Kevin and Melissa. Thank you very much. Yours, the analyst, who's with us over these four days. I think he's got to disappear soon. He's, he's, he's going to a dinner. Are you speaking at this dinner? I am with Rob Key. With Rob Key, oh, yes. managing director of England cricket. Yeah. Wow. We go. Are you asking the questions or doing the chat? Bit, bit of both. both. Simon, it's a bit of both. Mostly him. Mostly, Mostly him. him. Yeah, that's. Well, that'd be an interesting. I'll report back tomorrow. Please do. Yeah, we'd love to know Maybe what. It's a podcast, you know. <laughs> we'd love to know what you say, Simon, more than Rob Key. Oh really? Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> oh, sure, it's good. Was it in Kent somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beersted Cricket Club. Beersted Cricket. Two hundred and seventy-fifth. There we go, I'm sure you can hear. 275 anniversary. There you go. What cricket celebrity are you speaking to tonight, Kev? Uh, I'm going to be um, in beefies. Uh, anyway, there's a length ball from a bass. Oh, it's caught at short mid wicket. And there's the first wicket. It's Luke Wells. And that has come from nowhere. I think that's Tom Press that's taken that catch low down. And where did that wicket come from? It was clipped away on the leg side. But it wasn't very far off... Uh, the ground and pressed has taken one inches off the turf. He, I mean, they've been playing that shot really nicely, the two Lancashire openers, but on that occasion there, Wells, who goes for 55 off 69, just pushing out in front of his body. You could see from the position his head was in whilst the, the ball was caught. It was off balance, it was down to the side, and it meant that because he was playing around that front pad, the bat finished at an angle. It was always just going slightly up in the air and you can see him rehearsing the shot he wanted to play where he just rolls his wrists a bit more, is able to keep the ball down. But Hampshire will be grateful for that just slight, almost just like lapse in, in technique and judgment. They've been out there a long time, these openers. But Hampshire recognised that on a pitch like this, and with a kookaburra ball, you've got to take every single opportunity that's presented your way. There's already been one potential drop by Ben Brown behind the stumps of Jennings. And as we just watch the replay again, yeah, he was off balance, playing out in front of the body. And it means Hampshire get their first wicket. Lancashire, 87 for one. Seven boundaries in that 55 from uh, Luke Wells. I'm sure he'll be another man that's uh, kicking himself for uh, getting out. The fifth player, fifth batter in both these sides that's passed a half century. And we still only have a top score of 86. Is that the pitch? Is that some bad technique? Is that lack of concentration? Is it a mixture, Melissa Story? Well, I'm not going to suggest anyone has a bad technique when I'm currently have a broken finger because of my own poor technique. So I'm going to refrain from that. I mean, you know, we, we look at these two sides and there's two fantastic bowling lineups. So if anyone's going to be up to the challenge of using the kookaburra, then it, it will be the, these two sides. And, you know, they, they recognise that they just have to grind it out and keep going. And I think in that moment, it literally just was. Wales have been playing so nicely. And actually, I wonder if he'd played the ball straighter down the ground and tried to pull off one of those wonderful on drives both him and Jennings have been playing in this opening partnership. It, it might have just been a bit of a safer shot, but because I think he was forcing the angle, that's why everything just went off balance and it was slightly aerial. But in the end, it brings Josh Bahannon to the crease. Here he is facing his first delivery from Abbas, who comes over the wicket. Bahannon's playing a missing first delivery. Super nut there from Mohamed Abbas, who just seemed to have had a bit more of a spring in his step after, the after that wicket and the previous delivery. Just playing a missing there. Brown taking it to his left. I mean, you and Scott were speaking earlier about the Lancashire bowling lineup and that depth almost with those 
not the, the main three or four bowlers, but what they have in the reserves. And I've been looking into the, the bowling statistics for Hampshire and Lancashire across the last two seasons. Oh. Here's a bass to Bahannon in behind that, which is up to mid-off. So if we start with the home team, start with Hampshire. In 2022, they had the best bowling strike rate in Div 1, which was 49, and the second best economy rate, which was 2.9. So they took wickets quickly and they forced the opposition to score relatively slowly. They had four bowlers in 2022, which was Barker, Abbott, Abbas and Dawson, bowled 73% of all overs and took 73% of all wickets. So, you know, they were very much concentrated in those those four bowlers. And that's in. Got a man on the drive on the leg side for Bahannon, who's on the back foot, gets tucked up there a little bit, can't find the angle, goes out on the offside. And so in 2022, that was the highest reliance on four bowlers in Div 1 out of all of the teams. Okay. Now in 2023, it was another great bowling year for Hampshire. They had the joint best strike rate, 46 again, good statistics and joint best economy rate. And you know, people who have followed Hampshire will know that their success in the county championship has, you know, can be attributed, attributable to those, that bowling lineup because they have shown weaknesses in the batting department. But in terms of reliance on those four bowlers. Abbas over the wicket again to Bahannon. And he gets a good length ball, can do no more than just push that out quietly on the offside. They relied on those four even more, with 82% of all overs in 2023 bowled by their top four bowlers and 77% of all wickets taken by the top four. The only thing which slightly changed between 2022 and 2023 is that Dawson took more wickets and Fuller actually had a better season than Keith Barker in terms of wickets. They almost swapped roles. But either way, Hampshire are a team who very much rely on that, those core four bowlers to not only bowl them lots of overs, but also to take the majority of wickets. Abbas. Again, it's a good length ball to Bahannon. Good over there. It's a wicket maiden for Abbas. He has nine over three maidens, one for 23, Lancashire 87 for one. Now, when we look at Lancashire, back in 2022, they had the second most wickets and the best economy rate. And the, the, the good thing about Lancashire in, in 2022 is that their top four bowlers, which at the time were Bailey, Parkinson, Williams and Hassan Ali, they only bowled 58% of all overs. So compared to, to Hampshire, you know, lots of other bowlers were contributing really effectively. And that's, you know, such a contrast between Hampshire relying on four to Lancashire actually going, we do have our main four, they're taking lots of wickets, but actually tons of other people are contributing as well. As Dawson, past the umpire, bowling to Jennings, who uses his feet, flicks the ball off his pads out towards deep square, takes a single, score moves to 88 for one. And something which illustrates that is that in all 12 bowlers who were used by Lancashire, or 12 bowled more than 50 overs in the season, and nine of them took more than 10 wickets. So contributions from across the whole board for the Lancashire bowlers in 2022. Now something changed in 2023, as Dawson just changing to come over the wicket here to the right-handed Hannon, who's yet to get off the mark. It's a short leg and slip. As Dawson creeps into the crease, flights that one up on the back foot, defending into the covers for no run. But in 2023, some things remained pretty standard for the Lancashire bowlers. They had a joint best economy rate again, 3.1. And again, their top four wicket takers didn't over dominate. They bowled 63% of all overs and took 65% of wickets. As Dawson bowling again on the back foot as Bahannon, looking strong and sturdy behind it though, as the ball's returned to the bowler. The issue is in last season compared to 22 is that other bowlers didn't deliver as much. Whilst in that previous year, as I said, 12 bowlers had bowled more than 50 overs, nine of them had taken more than 10 wickets. That didn't translate to last season. Dawson bowls coming down the wicket and lofting the ball over the head of the bowler. A few bounces to the boundary rope for four and behind gets off the mark in a splendid manner. Lancashire score 92 for one. Confident shot there. Really good from Bahannon. I'm sure we'll want to capitalise on this good batting surface. So I'll just wait for, for Dawson. The thing is with Dawson, when you're trying to explain a few stats, he gets through his overs snappily. Yeah, yeah, like lion. There's two balls remaining in this over. Dawson 
in, defending his Bahannon. Back to him for no run. In 2023, 12 bowlers still bowled more than 50 overs for Lancashire, but only six took more than 10 wickets. Essentially meaning that, that the collective effort was that Lancashire had the second worst bowling strike rate in Div 1 last season. Wow. Which was 63, uh, apologies, 61. Dawson bowling again using his feet, but this kind of time can only guide the ball back to Dawson for no run. Over finishes 92 for one Lancashire. Uh, so simplistically put, the difference for, for Hampshire between 2022 and 2023, there wasn't too much change apart from they've always had an over-reliance on their core four bowlers. And just in that last season, Fuller played a bigger role than Barker. But for Lancashire, whilst in 2022 it was a real collective effort, Last year, because those sideline bowlers and those newer bowlers coming into the squad weren't picking up as many wickets, it meant that it took Lancashire far too long to take wickets. And hence, despite their superb batting performances, which really were some of the best in Div 1, they just could not force victories. And that explains you know, why most of their home games, particularly at Old Trafford, resulted in, in draws. And unfortunately, of course, considering the point system for last season, draws were worth significantly less. Yeah. So it's interesting to see, you know, how those bowlers did in the first innings. Actually, the ones you expected did contribute with those wickets. But it's it's useful from a Lancashire perspective to see the likes of Luke Wells picking up two wickets, and they'll just be hoping that, you know, Blaverwick as well can can chip in. And that's the importance of Nathan Lyon. Abasta Jennings pushes that to one of two men short on the leg side. Sydney, well, on the drive on the next side. Yeah, it's interesting. And also, I, I suppose when you look into it a little deeper as well, is uh, the, the tracks at Old Trafford were fairly flat last year. As unlike here, they weren't that flat. Were yeah. They? And, you know, it does explain, I think Lancashire said that when someone like Nathan Lyon becomes available, of course, you're going to be interested. But it does explain more with the circumstances of their last season, why they would look at signing, you know, a bowler, a bowler who can operate on so many different surfaces and who will help them hopefully force those victories, particularly in the third and fourth innings. There's a bass round the wicket. Jennings gets another good length ball, plays it back to the bowler. Yeah, there's uh, interesting stats in terms as well of when you look as a collective and how much reliance there is between these two teams. We, we, you know, we, we highlighted, I think earlier today, certainly yesterday, the difference between like last year Tom Bailey picking up 50, and then Will Williams the next with 39. I mean, that's a, that's quite a big difference. Whereas Hampshire last year had a pass on 53, Abbott 44, and in between Dawson 49. This, the, and I think the, the previous year to that, 2022, it was Barker, Bass, and Abbott all past the 50 mark. Yeah, 160 wickets between them. That's right. It's interesting how the, the there's a bunch, isn't there? He's walking into that. Jennings gets wrapped on the pad. So there's for, for Hampshire there is. There's always two performing, isn't there? At least two, and in two years ago, there's three. Whereas Lancashire, even after what you're saying about the contributions from the bowlers, but actually the lesser bowlers aren't really contributing big wickets, are they? And if, you know, all of that is compared to Surrey, who, of course, have won the county championship two years in a row, they have a similar kind of position to Lancashire in the sense that their four top wicket takers don't over-dominate. But actually, when you look at, in total, the nine other bowlers they used in general. Here's a bass round the wicket to Jennings. Jennings, nice straight back. So he pushes that up towards middle. Surrey actually had nine bowlers who bowled more than 50 overs in Div 1. But eight of them took at least 10 wickets. Yeah. Eight of the nine were taking over 10 wickets. And, you know, there's obviously reasons for that as well and looking at the reserves of Surrey are perhaps greater than the reserves of other county teams although saying that Hampshire and Lancashire are two pretty big county sides as well but you know it does show that if you want to take on teams like Surrey who are consistently performing you almost need to strike a balance between what Hampshire and Lancashire are doing and there's strengths to each of the approaches and weaknesses to each of the approaches. Yeah that's interesting there's a lot of stats in there Mel as Gets wrapped on the pad there. Jennings just walks across his stumps a little bit. That's why there's a half shelf for an LBW. And Jennings punches his bat as if to say, why on earth didn't the ball hit that? Because there were some easy runs there down towards fine leg, but he's missed out on all fronts there. I always worry when I see players do that. I know, obviously, he's not going to punch his bat as hard as he can. But do you remember, I think it's Keshav Maharaj for South Africa, 
injured himself in a celebration after taking a wicket during a test match. He threw himself up into the air almost Sam Curran style and punched the air and went back down, landed funny on his ankle. <laughs> and I just think I find that so embarrassing. <laughs> I didn't see that. Here comes uh, Abbas to Jennings. Jennings off the back foot, steers that up towards extra cover. And that's the end of the over. Maiden over from Abbas, four overs. Sorry, four maidens in the ten overs. One for 23. That's the end of Melissa for now. Thank you for all those stats. A lot of hard work gone in there. And it'll be Scott Reed from BBC Manchester and Lancashire. So come alongside me. So Lancashire are 275 behind on the first innings at 92 for one. Earlier Hampshire bowled out for 367. Nathan Lyon picking up the last wicket. Kyle Abbott trying to go over the top. Lyon picking up three wickets. Bowled just over 38 overs. Marathon stint from him. Lancashire getting their money's worth out of him. <laughs> I wonder if he's on the same money now. His stint's been cut <laughs> short. So he's, he's over. He's, he's, Pound per over has gone up, <laughs> so they're now trying to buy, get to buy more make, overs. That's, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's cost you more now, isn't it? <laughs> Here's Dawson. Then he's got a short leg and a slip in. As uh, down the wicket Whoa. goes behind, and again he goes aerial, and again it's the uh, same result. Or has it gone all the way? It has. It's gone further. It's six. Well, he's shown his intent mm. to Liam Dawson with a shot over the top in the first over, which brought up his first runs, and there's another one, and that's six. 98 for one. Yeah. Positive play from Barnum. I don't know how much you heard of Mel's stats there about I the, didn't the hear respect it, no. of Barnum no. attack. It might be. It's quite interesting actually where the you know the collectors when you go down the the order of the bowlers as conventional full defence at this time for Barnum. He probably feels he's done his work for this over. He's pushed the mid on back anyway. Um, yeah, well, I'll let, I'll let Mel go through those stats a little bit more with you, maybe at the break, because it's quite interesting. Breaks okay. it down for Hampshire and well, mainly for Lancashire, which is well, bo uh, bowling stats. Yeah, just a percentage of wickets from you know a group of bowlers and what have you. How it's changed from the last couple of seasons. It's pushed out on the uh, offside. I'm just trying to think from a Lancashire point of view. Last year there was, if I remember rightly, less bowlers taking the percentage of wickets. Or was it the other way around the season before? Can't remember. See, Mel. Mel will tell you. That way. At 98 for one, I'm sure most people listening and watching got it a bit more. My memory lasts about 30 seconds, <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> I've moved on to something else. Let's turn away on the next side. <laughs> In fact, was Simon Hughes here earlier? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't you mentioned it. Uh, we barely got 50 wickets last year and 50 the year before, and I think the nearest and to that, the was, that was, yeah. was Williams, wasn't it? In the kind of late 30s. Yeah. Matt Something Parkinson like that. two years ago, 36. That's the thing. You've, you've got one bowler taking 50. Oh, bahana has oh, gone bigger. And this time he's opened the face and he's gone over the top of mid off quite deliberately. He knows mid on's back. Mid off wasn't. And he just hit into out. Just a little curve on that downswing. Beautiful shot. Was, wasn't it? 100 up for Lancashire. Mm, lovely shot. Mm, there it is. If you watch on the live picture feed, you'll just see there. Just opens the face of the bat up as he hits through the ball. It's a nice sh shape on it. You'd be pleased with that. At Gusta, wouldn't you, really? Teeing off. Well, if you had uh, got the dog leg yeah. left to right. Beautiful, that, wasn't it? Perfect. Mm, just hitting it around that dog leg. 100 up, behind him 14. Off just 15 deliveries. Off the back foot. And there's the gap he's got. He's got mid off and mid on back, and now he's opened it up so that that's a single down to Abbott at mid off. And uh, he's done a job earlier on, Bohannon, hasn't he? Mm. Luke Wells would be kicking himself, wouldn't he? Yeah. He looked in absolutely fabulous touch. He was, uh, he was ticking all over really nicely, and I think he'll be absolutely furious with himself. Got a very nice 55. He's not the only batter. I mean, that's, a, that's the fifth batter in the match to get to 50. We've got four, didn't we, in the Hampshire first innings? Yep. Two 80s, two 50s, now 50. Mm. Just chipped it straight to uh, to mid wicket. That's something to do with the pitch and the ball getting a little softer where it, it just doesn't be. quite come on. Yeah. So if you just push it a little mm. too much, or as Mel said, if you're just not slightly in the right position, you're just leaning over a fraction and then you end up pushing at it in a. In a, in a in a position that you don't really want to be in, then uh, the ball just leaves the surface. Whereas, mm. pitch with a bit more pace, it would go along the deck. The ball's you, just holding a bit, it'll go up in the air. And you're seeing quite a few catches in front of the bat, aren't you? P p p for that reason, I would yeah. Yeah. yeah, the uh, 
Disappointed his runs left out there, I reckon, for Wells. Yeah, you're right, 69 balls, seven fours in that 55, and he looked, yeah, he looked good, didn't he? It looks like an absolutely belting back in batting pitch, doesn't it? It looks hard work for the seamers. He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. Especially yeah. after the first 10 overs of yep. the new ball. 12 overs, maybe. Kyle Abbott from the pavilion end. Josh Bahannon on strike, two slips behind him. That's turned out towards mid wicket by Bohannon. And uh, there is no run, so more bass. Spell five overs, two maidens, one for 15. And he's replaced by uh, Abbott. 103 for one. Bohannon 15, Jennings on 27. Two slips in place, so James Vince and Liam Dawson at first and second slip. Three on the offside at point, cover and mid-off. There's a short mid-wicket, there's a mid-on, square leg and a fine leg. Abbott over the wicket to Bahan and flashed away nicely through the leg side. He's done well to pick out the gap between the two fielders. Another slip as well, it's not the first time we've seen uh, players slip out in the outfield. Fletcher Middleton this time. Bahannon hustles back for a couple. He moves on to 17, 105 for one. Yeah, one or two of the Hampshire players there got excited. I think they felt Bahannon there had just leant over the line a little bit. And that's where we saw Luke Wells' mm. demise. There are two batters on the leg side looking for any misdemeanour from you know where the ball just leaves the turf a little bit and travels a few yards and you pick up a low catch. Well, they've strengthened that region now. Two short mid-wickets as... Uh, Bahannon tries to force this ball away into the offside. Jags back in towards him. And there's no run. If they did have one short mid wicket and one kind of short square leg, they've now got two short mid wickets, two catching mid wickets. And the fielder at square leg in front of the square leg umpire also just creeping in. So they've got three fielders close in on that leg side now. Plus your mid on and your fine leg. So trying to perhaps get Bannon to lean forward and work the ball away towards mid-wicket. Drives away through the covers instead this time, Bannon. And it turns and comes back for two and quickly realises that uh, he's reaching the rope for four. Bannon moves on to a very bright and breezy 21 from 20, so 109 for one. Looks in good touch, doesn't he? Yeah, the, 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 the two fielders on the leg side are not obviously not set for that, but... Abbott's natural ball is just to sort of come in to the right-hander and we saw that two balls ago, didn't we, really, where if Bahana's then pushing it away on the leg side, it's if your head gets outside the line of the ball and you're pushing at it, it does tend to make the ball go in the air a bit. That's why those two guys are close in. Abbott to Bohanna, who calmly defends, rolls up to mid-on and there's no run. Everything comes from the your head really if your head's in line with the ball you tend to be over the ball easier to keep down if you're just leaning over towards the offside and the ball's just coming at you a little bit so the ball is on your left as you're hitting through and that's when it tend you, you lose you lose control total control of the shot and that's why you end up just going in the air a bit and that's what happened with Luke Wells as Mel explained 109 for one and waits final ball of the over because Abbott's muscling his way back in Calmly played back to the bowler by Josh Bohannon. That completes the 26th over of the Lancashire first innings. 109 for one, 21 to Bohannon and uh, 27 to Keaton Jennings. All this in reply to the total of uh, 367 made by Hampshire this morning. Yep, that is 62 for their last four wickets. Nathan Lyon with three hard-earned wickets. <laughs> Every wicket, I think, is hard-earned, isn't it? It, in this, it is, in actually. This game. Yeah, no, it's, it is. As, as a bowler, you know, in this game, and I think we're going to find that here at the Utilita this season, that uh, every wicket is a little bit more valuable than perhaps it has been in the previous two or three years. The wickets have been you know, a little bit more helpful to the bowlers on the whole. I think we might see some... We'll see more cricket here going well into it, but deep into the fourth day than we've seen for a while. Dawson's over the wicket to Jennings, the left-hander. Reverse sweep, which goes straight on the 45, and it's <laughs> James Fuller there. He uh, did well, actually, and then wasn't quite sure with the ball. So I tell you, it's Kyle Abbott, who did well there, and then 
had to look around him to make sure he knew where the ball was. It was right on by his feet. Dawson into his fifth over here. None for 31. Bahannon's got stuck into him a little bit. Jennings on the back foot. Plays a little bit more circumspect as Keaton Jennings on the hole. But, uh, that dead straight bat. Means that, uh, it takes, takes a good ball to get past that. Saw one or two go past the outside edge with the new ball, Abbas and Abbott, but this ball's getting a bit softer now, a little bit more difficult, and uh, turned away to short mid-wicket. Keaton Jennings. Pleasant afternoon here now at the Utilita. Those gusts of wind that we experienced before lunch seem to have died down, and just a nice gentle temperature. Pleasant temperature. Hmm. No wind. Dawson. Some sort of shining off parts of the turf, really, which is nice. Feels a little bit more like summer. It's gone past short leg for a single. Jennings quietly moves on to 28. He's got the look, Keaton Jennings, of a man that wants to try and bat for quite a long period of time. He's not been rushed at all, has he? Wells was quite positive in his stroke play. Bahannon's got to 21 from 22. He's been quite kind of aggressive almost, Bahannon, but Jennings just playing his own game in his own way, at his own pace, really. Yeah. Yes, he looks like a man who's decided that he's going to get 100. <laughs> As I'm sure he does do most innings, that's pushed out on the offside. But I think there are certain situations in certain games, and he's, he's, he's already seen this pitch. I mean, Hampshire batted, and he's obviously had a good look at it now, and yeah, batters have feelings. And you think, well, as long as I do everything as I should, as long as I play the way I should and don't make a mistake, I should be all right. It's uh, Bahannon off the back foot, steers it up to deep mid off. Ollie Orr down there below us and of the uh, over. I'm sure Jennings has, he's only on 28, but I'm sure he's thinking three figures. He must be. There's no reason why he shouldn't. It's going to take a very, very good ball. Maybe a bit of good fortune from a Hampshire point of view. Or a, a big mistake mm. from Jennings, I think, to stop him. Um, Grand National this afternoon. Mm. Just, I, only, I only mention that because I've just seen a, a, a sort of a message on the WhatsApp group I'm in. Mm -hmm. It's asking uh, if anybody knows the winner of the Grand National this afternoon, can they post it on this group? I've had a little bit. Have you? Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. extensive research on your part, I'm sure. It took me 30 seconds. <laughs> that long? Well, I, I, I like that. The, I, uh, probably. Oh, go on. Yes. Abbott to Bahannon for de defence, no wrong. Oh, listen, I'm doing it for a laugh. Mm -hmm. Uh, I probably look at a name that I jumps out at me because it might have some connection, but it, nothing did. So on the BBC Sport website, there was a very quick guide to the horses. Mm -hmm. So I read them through last night um, for about three minutes and decided on a particular horse. Right. So you, have you gone entirely off the name? Or? No, just because of the, 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 the three-line description of what it's done in okay. the past. Oh, so you did actually do oh, Only because I looked right. at it. But yeah, so I've gone for one. Shall I say who it is? Abbott to Bahannon forward and defends again. There's no run. I've gone for a horse called hmm. Delta Work. So right. why don't you two pick a horse out? Have a quick look. Mel, you can have a quick look where you're on. And just <laughs> just sort of say, right, I, I, if I was going to put £100 on this, I haven't. I've just bought a couple of pounds. Or something. Right. But if you were going to put some money up, Mel, pick a horse and we'll have a bit of fun later on and see. What, and then maybe when you go off commentary, Scott, pick a horse and we'll, we'll compare, shall we? It's happening soon, isn't it? Yeah, it's four o'clock, it's an hour four. early this oh, year. Oh, right, okay. So it is in the next hour or so, I think. Right. So uh, not to put any pressure on either of you. <laughs> Abbott to Bahannon, just try to see. Well, he's encouraged by a little bit of width there and he goes for a shot but doesn't quite time it as he would have liked. There's no rump. If you're listening to us and you'll be watching the, the National at the same time, uh, do let us know if you win. And more of Right, you're going for... That was quick. Panda Boy. Right. What's, what's the price on that, Mel? I don't know, I like its name. Panda Boy, right. Mel's Extensive got Extensive research boy. done by Melissa here. Right, Panda Boy. He's got five stars. He's got five stars, oh, I'll do. Oh, that's enough. It's like an ordinary takeaway, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Abbott to, to Barnum. Defends a ball that just comes back in towards him, and there's no run. That was quick work. Well, it was quick work. No messing about there. Yeah. Well, there's one called Mr. Incredible. Oh yes. Yeah. I might just have to. I'm gonna have to go off the off the names because I don't know what I'm doing here. So I would, wait, wait until I do the commentary the next over, and I'll give you a little bit more time to okay. have a look. 
It's always a bit of fun going national, isn't it? Just even if you don't put any money on it, just <laughs> pick one out and just see what it does. One, one, one for one. And as Bahannon waits for Abbott, who's who's in, it's defended to the leg side again. There's no run. Remains 111 for one. Bahannon 22. It's actually quite intriguing little spell this because they've got this plan in place here for Bahannon with these two short mid wickets in place and the ball perhaps just coming back in a little bit towards mm. Josh Bahannon just trying to get him to work it out and bring those two slip fielders into the game one slip in place it's a quite a crowded looking field anything that might just be a little fraction loose we've already seen Bahannon nail that away through the covers for four final ball of the uh, of the over Abbott to uh, Bahannon He's the way into the offside and stopped that extra cover. No run, so a maiden over for Kyle Abbott. His fourth, nine overs, four maidens for 34. Lancashire are 111 for one. Well, he's looking good out there, Bohannon. He's uh, looking to score at any opportunity. He looks quite positive out there. Lancashire's top scorer last year with 12.57. He was also with the England Lions during the winter. Got 125 as top scorer against England, eh? January and February that tour was out there. It's like uh, it's picking up where he left off. It's got something to look at uh, some horses while I speak. God, it's like watching Lester Pickett and, uh, <laughs> and who's the other one? The other jockey working out which horse to go for together. He's watching Mel and uh, Scott. Down the wicket comes Keaton Jennings and drives along the ground to Ali Orr at deep mid on. Start of a new over there from Tony McCoy, that's the one. <laughs> it's like watching you two. Like watching There's a lot them. of horses to pick from, isn't there? One twelve for one. Deficit of two fifty-five currently. Earlier Hampshire bowled out for three sixty-seven. Kyle Abbott, the last man out for seven, trying to hit Nathan Lyon over the top. Lyon picking up three wickets. Around the wicket, Dawson to Bahannon. Gets a good stride in there as he comes forward. Scott's still going through the runners and riders. I've forgotten. I, I picked out one now. I've forgotten which one it was. Mr. Incredible, you said. It was Coco. Was Coco it? Beach. Coco, was it it? It's near the top. <laughs> Here comes Dawson. Forward is... In fact, uh, if you're listening and you've got a very good tip, that might be the best way to help Scott out. <laughs> Mel's already picked her horse. So, uh, silentcricket at gmail.com if you want to help Scott out. Should we, should we get one of the two of the I listeners and watchers to help you out? Yeah. What have I, you got? I am Maximus. I am Maximus? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, Bahannon works that up to deep mid on. And that'll be. Better put some money on this just in case. <laughs> I am Maximus for um, Scott. And I've got Delta work. So there we okay. go. We'll have a bit of fun and right. we'll find out who does what later on. The highest place horse buys the drinks. No, the lowest place horse. <laughs> <laughs> I should wonder, why should the highest place horse do that? <laughs> anyway. 113 for one. Be nice to know if there's a winner amongst our listeners and watchers later. And we'll come to that after the race. Here's uh, Dawson over the wicket too. Keaton Jennings who turns that away behind square for a single. He's not going anywhere, Mr. Jennings. Mm. 29, 30 he moves on to now. 72 deliveries. Hardly put a foot wrong. Once one or two play the misses with the new ball, but since then, nothing from the fielders or the bowlers to get excited about when bowling at Mr. Jennings. There's Josh Bahannon on strike. Has a little bend of his knees, doesn't he, early on, just before the bowler starts his run-up and Driven back to Dawson, who feels right in front of Keaton Jennings. I don't know if they hit Keaton Jennings on the boot, did it? I think he did. Just, just shook his foot out there as he walked up to chat with Bahannon at the end of that over. One fourteen for one. That little bend of the knees that you mentioned from Josh Bahannon. Mm. Uh, 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 next time I speak to him, I'll ask him about it. Cause that feels like it's a bit more pronounced this season than it was previous years. He's, he's always had a little bit of a bit of a flex of the knees, but that it does get quite a way down, doesn't it? Does, doesn't he? Just, I don't recall that being as as pronounced this season as it compared to previous okay. years something he's added to his game in the winter 
Yeah, sometimes one of these two little mannerisms can actually get exaggerated over a period of time, can't they? Because you get so aware of doing it as a player, whether you're bat, bowl or field or you do something, that actually it becomes, mm. yeah, it, it makes it more pronounced sometimes. Well, this Abbott to Bahannon little duel that was bubbling up is just on the uh, on ice for a moment because it's Keaton Jennings on strike. The second slip in place. Abbott will ball around the wicket to the left-hander Jennings who reaches for it. And drives up towards mid-off and there is uh, no run. It's uh, Liam Dawson at first slip and next to him is James Vince and then backward point cover and mid-off. Mid-on, there's a short mid-wicket and then a deep mid-wicket and a deep backward square leg. But from the, the pavilion end in the sunshine Sets off again to Jennings, who's unbeaten on 30. 114 for one, Lancashire. But balls. And he's just played inside the line of that, I think. Or has he had a, just a little bit of a flirt? We'll look back on the replay here. Hmm. He held the line, didn't he, yeah. with his bat? I, I think you're right. I think there was a... There was more than a hint of just keeping the bat inside the line. Is he one of those? Does he do that a lot? Some yeah. players do yeah. that a lot, they don't they? Mm. Look like they're playing, but they're mm. actually not. I remember watching Shivnarayan Chanderpaul batting for Lancashire at the Oval a few years ago. As, uh, Abbott comes in to Jennings, clob it away into the offside, but straight to extra cover, no run. And he obviously had that ridiculous open stance, didn't he? And square on. Square on. And, and he's the way he played, or at least th you'd think he was playing, time and time again, but actually just playing inside the line of the ball. And from where we were commentating from, and we didn't have a replay screen, you couldn't quite see it. And you think, is he playing and missing at that? Or is he, is he so I went across at the end of the play to speak to the analyst. And he's, he's like, almost all the time he's playing inside the line. He's not playing at the shot. But from, from the way he played it, and the slips are up, and the keeper's <laughs> up. And, uh, but back into Jennings, is on the march again, but uh, defends this time, no run. But I think it was even more exaggerated because of his open stance, and then the, he was obviously, he was, he was all movement, wasn't he, at the crease? Yeah. But just constantly knowing exactly where the line of the ball is and, and how he's not looking to play a shot. And fooling us all, at least fooling me anyway, which is not difficult. Well, so I often think that if you're watching square on, as a spectator, it does look as though he's obviously playing at every ball. I mean, you might get a better view if you were sitting literally directly mm. behind the bowler's arm. But even so, yeah, sometimes with some players it's difficult to tell, isn't it? Uh, but to Jennings, he, he puts one in short this time. It uh, loops over the head of Keaton Jennings. He just bends his knees a little bit. He's a tall guy, Jennings, but just bends his knees and allows that one to sail over the top of him and through into the gloves of Ben Brown. And there is no run. Yeah, I think I think it's it's even more important with this Kookaburra ball to be bowling a few short ones. We saw that at times, didn't we, from the Lancashire bowlers? Just where they almost had a three or four over burst between them, didn't they? Where they would bowl a few short ones, and then we went back to normal cricket. But uh, with this ball, I would I would definitely do that if I was as quick as that. But I'd definitely do what he's doing. You, need, you have to. Abbott to Jennings. It's a follow ball this time, trying to wrap it onto the pads of Jennings. Shape still. Flashing away through the leg side. End of the over. It's a good. It's a good open, It's a good spell. This. He, yeah. He's replaced a bass from that pavilion end, and he's bowled. I think it's that's, that's the second over or third over of, of this spell. And he's he's looked as threatening as we've seen so far. I think since we got back underway after lunch, Abbott. Yeah, I agree. There's been lots of chat. There's been lots of talk about the the, the team as a whole um, having worked very hard on their fitness might have hinted at this already but um, I think there's also been a bit of chat about how fit Kyle Abbott looks this year and I have to say I did speak to him uh, after one of the pre-season days here I think it was against Worcester I can't remember he took four wickets and um, I have to say when I when I walked up to him I thought you know you look you look fitter this year I have to say and he says he has he's worked a lot harder on his fitness this winter and um, yeah, I, I, he's running in nicely, isn't he? Uh, you're right, it's been a good spell. Bahannon uses his feet, works that to mid-wicket, start of a new over from uh, Liam Dawson. 
and uh, yeah, he's running in as well. He looks in good rhythm, and he's, he says he is. He says he's put a lot more. He's, he's been able to put a lot more work in pre-season and during the winter than he's been able to in the past. So good to see. 36 years old now as well. So you know, maybe you know, maybe he has to. There's a lot of bubbles that get to that age. It's hit into the ground. I got excited there initially as it went to short extra cover. Looks like I was the only one. Fletcher Middleton in there. Just loop to him. So uh, yeah, that, you're right. He's he, he looks good actually, Abbott, with not a lot of help out mm. of this deck. And Dawson's getting about as much help out of this deck as Nathan Lyon did, <laughs> which is zilch. <laughs> and that's pushed up towards uh, mid on. But he's got a role to play, an important role to play here, because when we, we touched on before that the the, the the seamers in this side, certainly the two frontline seamers in Abbott and the Bass, are both north of 30 now. So you've got to try and manage this a little bit. You, early season but not a great not massively responsive pitch and there's a long summer ahead you don't want to be flogging these seamers today so if Dawson can just keep one end nicely yes. tied down it allows the captain to rotate at the other end a little bit which is what Lyon did brilliantly absolutely brilliantly over the wicket Jennings turns it away behind square on the leg side you heard the shout in the background of no so a bass bowl I think a four over spell and then out of the attack, Abbott's now ball three overs, two maidens for six. He might get one more, and then maybe he's replaced. And you can just try and rotate a little bit more from the other end if Dawson can keep it nice and tight from this end. Yes. Still got the slip in and the short leg to Jennings. Gets a full delivery and just works that uh, down the ground. Alior at deep mid on. 116 for one. Got an email here from Howard Chambers. SolentCricket at gmail.com. Calispera, guys. What does that mean, Calispera? Don't it's know. Greek for good afternoon. Ah, right. Did you know that, or he just told you that on the email? You've Googled it. <laughs> right. I actually did. I looked it up before I mentioned it. <laughs> just in case. That's pushed it out on the other side, just because it had a different meaning. Just in case it had a different meaning. Uh, I've been around doing this job for too long. <laughs> uh, one sixteen for one at the end of that Dawson over. He's completed seven overs, none for thirteen at uh, thirty-eight. Uh, Calispera, guys, says Howard. Uh, great to have you back commentating again. I believe these collaborations between counties sharing commentaries is by far the best way to deliver balance from both sides' perspectives. Couldn't agree more. Unfortunately, some counties feel they only need commentary from their own side, giving it a very jaundiced perspective. And even embarrassment of commentators not recognising other teams' players. Hoping the very best for you and your counties, or in their counties, says Howard. Uh, well, there's some truth in that. I have heard from various times, one or two streams, that have commentators that really only speak highly of their own team. And yeah, but otherwise, it's up to them, isn't it? But here at uh, Hampshire, here at the Southern Vipers, which we include them as well, it is very much a balanced commentary. Back me up, Scotty. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it needed, I didn't know you needed to back it up. Well, no, well, no I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. No, thank you. Unless I'm working with you. <laughs> and then I think we should look to try and change it. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have asked for an endorsement, really. Should I? I should have just kept quiet. <laughs> but thank you, Howard. No, that's, 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 that's very true, actually. Bowling change. So Abbott's three over spell is ended and fuller. Replaces him, balls to uh, to Jennings. Leg by will be called here as he tries just to work the ball away through the leg side. It deflects off his pad. The Jennings remains on 31, 117 for one. Uh, going back to Mel's um, when she was last on talking about the, the team's percentage of wickets over a certain group of players, and you mentioned James Fuller, always makes a valuable contribution now, doesn't he? Last year, 24 wickets at 25 apiece backing up Barker, Dawson, Abbott and Abbas. That's what you want. He doesn't bowl a lot of overs, comes on at times when James Vince is looking for something a little different, a bit of extra pace. But that's a great contribution, backing up everybody else. Here he comes to Bahannon this time. Bahannon turns the ball to the leg side. Stopped at uh, short mid wicket by Liam Dawson and there's no run. Well, and he's got a bit of a a bit of a free burst here, hasn't he? If, if, if the plan is just to go in little short spells and 
he can put everything he's got into this spell knowing it's not going to be a 7-8 over spell he's going to be potentially used for a short period and see if he can try and um, try and find a breakthrough his runs per over is always higher than the rest comes over the wicket to Bahanam it's uh, pushed up to mid on no run but it just gives you something a bit extra. Now it's, it's a slow pitch, so you know you're not expecting him to blast people out. But he is a little, you know, he's probably a yard, certainly three quarters of a yard quicker than the rest. Mm -hmm. And you know, a, a lot of the time he comes on over the last two or three years, certainly the last two years, you know, it's worked. It'll, it'll pick up a wicket and then you know, it changes the momentum of the innings straight away. That's it. I mean, absolutely perfect bowler to have, isn't it? Yeah. Up your sleeve, that impact bowler. Yeah. He's in from the pavilion end to Bahannon. The front foot and he defends and there's no run. I know Mel was uh, going through some of the stats you were saying about Lancashire's um, bowlers and the wicket takers over the last two or three years, seasons and we were discussing the challenges that sides have in Lancashire. Certainly they've had that challenge trying to bowl sides out twice. Sometimes having that just little bit, bit of point of difference is, is important, isn't it? Whether it's a really good spinner, whether it's someone who who can bowl really quickly, whether you've got a good left arm seamer, just something that's a little bit different. Great. And if uh, Fuller is that type of option for Hampshire, then yeah. it's valuable contributions into Bahannon's off his toes. It's nicely played, just steers the ball away through the offside, out towards point. And he'll come back for two more, Josh Bahannon. Takes him on to 26. And uh, yeah, Lancashire total to 119 for one. He's not the tallest Bahannon. Nicely on his toes, keeping that down. A bit of extra bounce from Fuller. He must be in a great position now. He must feel so comfortable in his game. I think he does. I spoke to him again in pre-season. Number three is very much his spot now in this Lancashire side. Able to, to work this away to... Uh, to square leg and there is no run it's the end of the over 119 for one Scott Reid will stay I'm and staying. he'll be joined okay. by Melissa Story cheers Kev what have we got left today 41 overs remaining in the day so we are uh, nine overs away from the, the T interval and partnership is worth 32 between Bohannon and uh, Jennings so Dawson's going to continue Good afternoon, Melissa. Good afternoon. How are you feeling after your your quiche for lunch? Mm. Went for quiche today. I enjoyed, yesterday's choice was Jackie Potato, and I'm very, very grateful for, to Hampshire for providing outstanding lunches here at the Utility Bowl. But yesterday's Jackie Potato almost put me to sleep. It was the size of the moon. <laughs> it was enormous. It's too big for me. Quiche today. Stores and bowls and coming down the pitch, pushing the ball down to long on is Jennings, single take at 120 for one. I mean, I know what you mean. I'm, you know, I'm keen for a baked potato when I come down here normally, but mm. they must genetically modify <laughs> them must. somehow. I've never seen one as big. I think they're grown in labs <laughs> just to make you sleepy. It was an enormous Jackie potato, but a delicious tuna fill in. It was, it was lovely. Dawson over the wicket. Defended by Bahannon into the covers for no run. But I did want to have a snooze yesterday afternoon, I did. Well, I was just sat on the side then in the sun and I was beginning to feel a little bit sleepy. So it would be a nice time just to close my eyes for just a second. <laughs> As Dawson waits at the top of his mark. One slip in for Hampshire, close catcher. At extra and at cover. He's using his feet, defending down the pitch and it's another dot ball 120 for one but it's fine because you had the quiche today mm. and you, you might have decided on the ploughman's tomorrow I think I've <laughs> forward planning this I always plan all my meals I've got my second lunch in my bag ready to go after the stint or afternoon snack for that clip down the pitch and Bahannon will pick up a single score moves to 121 for one might need to look at the ploughman's a little bit closer because I'm not sure what, what, what's involved in it. I could not tell you. No. I don't think I've actually ever had a ploughman's. I just know that a lot of the times when we're doing the, the county commentaries here, a lot of our visitor commentators tend to have an affinity for it. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Oh, if it's, if it's highly recommended, then... It comes with reviews. 
five, five star review. Dawson Bowles defended back to him in his follow through. I do think, I mean, I know there's kind of social media accounts dedicated to rating fan food <laughs> at cricket grounds, but I really feel like there's a gap in the market for us to rate our, our favourite facilities and meals around the country. As Dawson. Past the stumps now. Flatter delivery. Fired in at the pads and worked around to 45. No run. And that completes the over 121 for one. It does sound delicious, you know. And if it's nice weather like this, it's mm. kind of picnic vibes. It's a mature cheddar wedge. Oh, a wedge? Yes. <laughs> no, no cost of living crisis here at Hampshire. I'm instantly in involved in a wedge of cheese. I quite like the idea of that. Honey roasted ham, boiled egg, a pork pie. This is absolutely outrageous. Pickle. It just says pickle. Uh, crusty brown bread and mixed leaf salad. I would want to inquire whether that is a dollop of pickle mm. or a single... Pickled pickle. onion type thing. Yes, yes. Or, or a gherkin. Oh, I'm not a big fan of gherkins. You're not? No. You're absolutely loath what <laughs> I ordered last night then. There's a fuller from the pavilion end to Bohannon. In and balls just down the uh, onto the, the hip of Bahan and just trying to glance it down towards fine leg, which picked up by the keeper. No run. I visited a, um, a particular fast food chain last night with my friends because it was quite late at night. We needed some food. The issue is I, I'm I can't have gluten, so I can't have bread, but I really wanted a burger. It turns out at this particular fast food restaurant you can order the burger without any of the bread and add lots of extra gherkins. She has like a gherkin burger. Was the gherkin the bread option, really? <laughs> it follows into Bahannon again down the leg side and Brown tumbles away to his left to take it and there's no run. Essentially, yes. I managed to form an absolute monstrosity <laughs> of a mouthful of, of slimy processed goodness. <laughs> and it was horrifying. And I feel like my friends I was with thought less of me after that. That must have been quite a tricky thing to eat. Like your fingers yeah. must have been they pretty actually, sticky. They afterwards. actually popped a knife and fork in the bag for yeah, me. Because I think when the order came through, they were probably thinking, who is crazy enough to order that? And it was a bit embarrassing going to pick it up, actually. I felt a bit, I felt a bit ashamed. Followed to, to Bahannon, that does turn him round in the ball. Fizzes away towards point, and there's no run. 121 for one. See, it wasn't my finest moment, but... Did you enjoy it, though? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You've got to live life on the edge. You've got <laughs> Maybe that's, I need to adopt this policy more. <laughs> Maybe you, you will if you, you have your ploughman's tomorrow. <laughs> it doesn't sound a edgy enough, really, does it? I don't know about you, but a wedge of cheese sounds almost intimidating. Fuller turns and sets off again. Bannon waits and defends back to Fuller. Bounces twice before reaching the bowler and he picks it up low to his left. And There is no run, 121 for one. I do wonder what Hampshire's tactic will be if this almost, not experiment, but this spell from Fuller doesn't find them a breakthrough because it has looked flat out there. Liam Dawson's bowled just at eight overs. He's already gone for 40. Bahannon has showed from the outset that he's intending to come down the pitch and play that attacking role. There's Fuller to Bahannon. Just nips back in the ball. Deflects away to point. Picked up by Ian Holland and there's no run. And he does make things happen, Fuller, because he is that extra yard of pace quicker. And it's really noticeable when you're you're here on the ground, and I'm sure if you're following along on the, the stream as well, that you know he can just rush the batters a bit more. The only risk, I guess, on a surface like this, where it's so good for batting on and it's perfect conditions now with the sun shining, that sometimes batters want that extra bit of pace on the ball for now he's finding good lengths where he's just making things awkward and targeting the hip of the Lancashire batters but if he over pitches then it'll probably be a bit easier for them to to hit follow to Bahannon can have him to defend the ball that comes back in towards him and there's no run it's good stuff that follows ball really well here because I thought Abbott was excellent in these three over spells so we've had five overs sent down from the pavilion end, which have been really testing and I, I, I like that description. He's bowling a really awkward length to Bahannon, which is especially because Bahannon's height, he's not the tallest. 
and he's just settled in nicely followed from that far end there's not a lot of options here for Lancashire to work with to keep the scoreboard ticking over another maiden over that 121 for one and that's the thing you know there's lots of talk and we we have been talking about how do you keep things fresh and change things up tactics wise when the ball isn't doing much and conditions aren't in your favor but also part of it is just consistency and actually as you say finding an awkward length which means that the batters can never quite settle. It's the most Hampshire can do in this situation because eventually something will happen which, which brings a wicket, whether it's a lapse in judgment, whether it's just a tiny bit of assistance from the ball or the conditions. But for now, Dawson and Fuller just grinding away as this one on the pads and flicked away square of the wicket on the onside by Jennings. They jogged through for a single score moves to 122 for one. And it feels like, you know, I looked up before when Kevin said that Jennings looks set on for a century. I'm not disputing that at all, but at the time he was, I think, on 25. And I was thinking, it's going to be a long old innings if he does, because he's certainly occupying the crease and hasn't showed any signs of strife so far. It's Dawson over the wicket to Bohannon, who crouches in his setup and slashes the ball away perfectly by Sex. The two fielders at a short cover and short extra. Fielder at long off, runs round, slides to keep the ball inside the boundary rope and returns to the bowler's end. They come back for two runs, 124 for one. Perfect placement from Bohannon there. Yeah, it's outstanding shot, wasn't it? He's, he's, he's got so little uh, room to work that ball through and to hit it with enough pace to pierce the infield and able to come back for two. That's a good shot. I must say, I know you spoke about it briefly yesterday with the change of sponsor, meaning the change of colour for the Bales in the county championship. Makes our lives a lot easier. It's Dawson Bowles, a straight delivery, punched back to him for no run, because previously they were the exact same shade as the pitch mm -hmm. and the surrounding grass. And it was really hard to work out if someone's been bowled or not. But now, bright red Lancashire Bales. <laughs> we take our own Bales with us, you see. Dawson flights this one up and just waits for it. Does Bahannon defends back to him for no run? Two balls left in this over. These are the heavy bales. The ones with glue and <laughs> <laughs> blue tack around them. <laughs> well, speaking of, there's been so many dismissals or, or you want to say freak kind of events, but it's become so common now as Dawson bowls defending again as Bahannon into the covers for no run of franchise cricket where obviously those zing bales and the light up bales and I think in the, the Indian Premier League they now have light up stumps where the bale doesn't move at all because they're so heavy and they're full of batteries that <laughs> bowlers who are being smashed all over the park finally bowl an absolute peach of a delivery and get nothing for it so it's quite nice to see just the normal wooden bales being implemented. Dawson outside the off stump giving himself room by stepping into the onside allows Bahannon to cut it out towards deep point We'll get a single, moves the score to 125 for one. A big bash this, this winter. I don't know if it was every game, but it was certainly in some of the games. They had um, stumps that, f that flashed in a certain sequence of colours that mm -hmm. reflected what happened. So if it was uh, four runs, it'd flash a certain number of times. If it was a no ball, it'd flash a certain number of times. I mean, how, how, who can follow that? I'd, it'd be fun if it was Morse code. <laughs> I think that would be more interesting if secret messages were being channeled out to other life sources through the stumps through the in stumps. the Big Bash yeah. League. I mean, it is one of those things where obviously it, it, the, the, the graphics of it look good and it looks flashy, but you do wonder, particularly when there's delays when the stumps break, you go, we'd, we'd quite like to get a move on now, yeah. actually. Exactly. Yeah. What's the point? It's uh, Fuller to uh, continue bowls to Bohannon. It's turned away to mid-wicket. There's no run. Remains on 30. 125 for one. I had a great time with the Big Bash in the winter because I was set to cover two games across a weekend and oh, I think across a day. The first one was rained off and the second game got cancelled after six overs because of a dangerous pitch. <laughs> so I travelled into London Good for the effort. weekend and saw six overs of cricket. <laughs> Job done. Off I go. I've never seen a game called off for a dangerous pitch as well. But I think it was Quinton de Kock had just joined up with one of the teams. Right. Here's Fuller to Bohannon. Okay. Trying to whip it away to the leg side. The ball deflects back down towards Fuller. No run. 
And I think it was one shot through from Will Sutherland and you could just see the look on Quinton Ducott's face that he was not happy at all. Okay. Some were coming right. through by his ankle and some of them, luckily, they were outside the off stump, but the, the length they were being bowled was not reflective of where they were ending up to Quinton Ducott. And it was, it was just, it was remarkable. I'm sure it would have happened a lot more before when pitches were uncovered, but to see that happen in a modern game is quite, quite a unique experience. Fuller, two behind and right in behind this delivery, plays the ball safely away to Liam Dawson. That extra cover and there's no run. 125 for one. It happened in an England test match in the West Indies. That had been about the maybe mid 1990s, mid to late 1990s maybe. I think it's Mike Latherton might have been captain of England. And they they were England were, were batting and West Indies had Kirtley Ambrose, Courtney Walsh bowling. And yeah, and the, yeah, that was that was called off after a couple of overs. Here's Fuller to Bahanam. There's the breakthrough that Hampshire was striving for. Maybe a little bottom edge from Bahanam. Dragging the ball back onto his stumps. And I think the pressure that Hampshire have built here from the pavilion end, first from Abbott, now backed up by Fuller, has found a breakthrough. You've sensed that something was going to give and it's, it's ended up with a wicket falling. Bahannon's gone for 30, 125 for two. And you look at the shot he was trying to play as the, that bottom edge, well, the ball caught that bottom edge and it was really hard hands. It's indicative of the, the innings he's played so far because he's taken the attack to the bowlers, he's used his feet a lot and, and played aggressive strokes, but you know, maybe it is just that extra pace of Fuller and as you say, the pressure that he was looking to force something which just wasn't quite there. It was quite a dramatic dismissal in the end, the leg stump flying out of the ground in Hampshire with two wickets now. We'll be just hopefully seeing this from their point of view as a chance to, to maybe sneak in a few more. Of course, coming up to the tea break shortly, but potentially in the evening session as well when it gets a little bit cooler, they'll know now that if they just keep persisting with their lengths, then wickets will eventually fall. You just have to be patient. Yeah, and I think that display of patience has been outstanding by, uh, by Hampshire. George Bolderson is the new batter coming out to join Keaton Jennings. They just managed to create a sense of pressure, maybe just a little bit of frustration. Set up, I think, by well Abbas and then by Abbott. I thought Abbott's spell was excellent. And then Fuller's come in and continued that. He's bowled this really awkward length, as we mentioned before, especially to Bohannon. And the outcome has been a wicket just on, like I said, just on the stroke of T. We're not far away from T now. And they've got themselves a new batter out there in George Bolderson, who again gets a chance to bat at four for Lancashire, as he did last week in the game against Surrey. Where did he tend to feature last year? He got two centuries last year. I think he, batted at, I think he got, got them both at seven. Um, so that was kind of where he was last season, either kind of six or seven. I, I'm, I'll have to double check on the record, but I think both his centuries came at seven last year. He has previously opened the batting for Lancashire, but he's he's been a little bit kind of up and down the order, a little bit used in different ways. This is uh, Bolson defending. As Fuller comes around the wicket to the young left-hander, and there is no run. The key thing here for Hampshire as well is that not to change anything to try and force another wicket. It's tempting, particularly in the, the manner of the dismissal, with the, as I mentioned, the stumps flying out of the ground for Fuller to, you don't want him to get, or try a bit too hard to force another wicket at this stage, pitch the ball up a bit more, because with that extra pace on this surface, it, it is easier to drive. But if he can keep pursuing that awkward, good length. Fuller to complete the over, forward goes Balderson and defends. Wicket maiden for James Fuller, who's bowled three overs, two maidens, one for two, and uh, has done exactly what his captain James Vince would have been hoping for. Managed to create some pressure here, Hampshire, and it's produced the wicket of Josh Bahannon out for 30. We were speaking this morning about the remarkable game taking place at Edgebaston between Warwickshire and Durham. 
and that first inning score of Warwickshire in the end declaring on 698. You must have had a look at the scorecard and seen that the scores went Yates 191, Davies at 256, Rhodes finished 178 not out, even Dan Mosley finished 55 not out. But there was one other batter involved in that lineup. As Dawson bowls outside the off stump, left alone by Jennings, through to Brown. And it was poor Ed Barnard. Mm. Scored one. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do in that situation. Three of your teammates had scored at least 100, and you get out on your fourth ball. Dawson bowling coming down the pitch as Jennings and drives down towards Long On. We'll pick up a single, 126 for two. It's a stinker, isn't it? It, and it, was, it was a great delivery from Callum Parkinson as well. Pretty much pitched on leg stump, took the top of off. I just don't, you can't really say much, can you, to your teammates as well? You can't say it's doing lots out there. One of them's just scored 250. <laughs> but of course, you can get coverage of every single game of the county championship on the BBC Sport website and app if you want to. Listen along to any of the action there. Dawson bowls again, left alone. This time by Baldston, who's yet to get off the mark. Just face the three deliveries. There's been some big scores as well. Emilio Gay for North Ants scored 200. It's quite interesting though, because a lot of people are saying that this is uncommon for this time of the season, as Dawson's bowling, and again, Watches that one through to the keeper, does Balderson. But actually, when you look at it statistically, the best pitches in the county championship, a lot of them which are good for batting, are at the start of the season because it's only the county championship being played exclusively for the first few weeks of the year. I know the women's season starting shortly. At this time, on the front foot, defending, all trickles to backward point for no run. But because there's not much other action going on, ground staff can pretty much dedicate all of their time to these surfaces in the early, early parts of the season. And you do often get some good batting tracks and opportunities for batters to get big scores. But certainly the Kookaburra ball is aiding that a bit more this year. Flatter from Dawson, uncomfortably played by Balderson, who looked like he was stepping into the onside, maybe just considering playing that through the offside and jammed his back down just in time. End of the over, 126 for two. I do feel for ground staff later on in the season when there's multiple competitions running at once. And I think it was two years ago, potentially at Edgebaston when the Commonwealth Games took place and they hosted something like 56 international and list day first class games. It was remarkable. Yeah, that ground in particular gets absolutely battered, doesn't it? All the games that are taking place there. I'm sure other counties would offer to take finals day off them. <laughs> That's getting too much. It was here, wasn't it, for a little bit? It was. I went to the 2010 or 2012 one. I can't actually remember because I was quite young. And I seem to remember the only thing I got was free fizzy drinks all day. So that is obviously the main thing yeah, I remember rather than the thrilling finishes. Here comes Fuller. His fourth over from the pavilion end, balls to uh, to Jennings. Oh, is that one to go through to Ben Brown? And there is no run. Well, so I've got a couple of updates to do. Can I leave you? That's absolutely fine. Glorious day here at the Utility Bowl. I'm mentioning that record-breaking crowd yesterday for an opening day of the county championship, and it's a good crowd in today. Plenty of people assembled, assembled around the members' pavilion. Although I must say, it does tend to be in the shade. And when it's a glorious day like this, you always look at the people sat in the sunshine, thinking maybe they've got the better spot. As Fuller is in, it's full, driven by Jennings to cover for no run. Jennings here, 34 off 89 balls. Really looks like he could be the anchor for this innings for Lancashire. They've got plenty more batting to come. Tom Bruce. George Bell, Matthew Hurst as well. Tom Bailey, Jack Blaverwick, Will Williams and Nathan Lyon. 
who people who have followed him in international cricket will know that he can give it a proper whack at the end of the innings. So I'm sure he'll be looking forward to that after bowling quite a few overs in the first innings. Fuller bowls back of the length up on his tiptoes as Jennings working the ball wristily into the onside out towards deep mid wicket. Takes a single, 127 for two. We mentioned that game between Durham and Warwickshire and all the other games of the county championship going on. A few of the teams taken their tea break already, but in the game between Essex and Kent, Essex 530 for seven declared and Kent 117 for one in reply. Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire. Nottinghamshire were 399 all out. Worcestershire currently 85 for three as Fuller around the wicket darts that one in. Turns it squared as Balderson, who's faced seven deliveries now, still yet to get off the mark, which hints to the bowling of Hampshire. They're applying the pressure currently at the moment. Surrey and Somerset. Well, Somerset with 285 all out at the Oval, and Surrey 263 for three. Of course, plenty of eyes on Surrey this season as they look to win three county championships in a row. Final season. Alex Stewart at the club as well. Tom Sibley there getting 100 for Surrey. Fuller down the leg side, a diving take from Ben Brown as he tumbles over. It's another top ball, the score 127 for two. And then in Division Two, you've got Glamorgan 237 all out in their first innings in reply. Derbyshire 198 for nine. Gloucestershire, Yorkshire, plenty of eyes on that game as well as Harry Brook and Joe Root in that side. But both being dismissed by Actor, who is a bowler who's come through the South Asian Cricket Academy. He picked up five wickets in that first innings, five for 89. Another success story, of course, after the two great hundreds by Kashif Ali in the first round of the county championship. Again down the leg side from James Fuller to finish the over. It's another dot ball, 127 for two. So lots of success stories coming out of that game, but currently Yorkshire after 326 all out in their first innings. Gloucestershire 202 for six. Leicestershire and Sussex. Leicestershire 338 all out and Sussex 206 for three with Haynes scoring a century in that game. And then finally between North Ants and Middlesex. North Ants were 552 for six declared and Middlesex 22 for none. Only nine overs into that game. Plenty of action. Every ball of every game on the BBC Sport website and app. As Dawson waits to begin his 11th over. He's conceded 45 runs so far, yet to take a wicket. He's got a leg slip and a slip. Backward point, deep cover, mid off, mid wicket, square leg, long on and deep square. It's a spread out field. As he bowls, a flat delivery shout for leg before, but a muted appeal in the end. He looked enthusiastic for just a few moments there as Dawson began launching himself down the pitch, but must have been a bit of bat involved there from Jennings. For those following on the stream, I'm sure I've already seen a replay of that one. We'll be able to take another look in just a second, Dawson. Comes in past the stumps, flights this one up. It's full and it's clipped back to him for no run. And of course, it's going to be a busy old summer with T20 Blast, 100 later on, one day cup. Has been some concerns expressed over how much cricket is being played. That's just in the men's game as pushing out the front foot, pushing into the covers. No run taken, but of course in the women's game, the Rachel Hayhoe Flint 50 over trophy and the Charlotte Edwards Cup. I'll add just both won by the Southern Vipers last year. You can catch plenty of action of that as well. There's been some good overseas signings in that as well. Dawson bowling, coming down the pitch, defending is Jennings. And Kevin, <laughs> you're joining us for about one minute. Well, uh, two overs. Two overs, oh that's alright then. Uh, a bit. I'll let you off. You're right. I, I, all I've seen the last two days is about how all these regional sides have signed overseas. I've lost track of it a bit, but I know Erin Burns is going to the Diamonds when she was previously, I think, focused around Birmingham. It's bowling on the pads. This one's 
worked out towards deep square for a single by Jennings. He moves to 36, 129 for two. I know the Vipers have signed Charlie Knott, yep. leg spinning batter. Another signing was made by the Sunrisers. And I've forgotten the name now entirely, but she plays for the Brisbane Heat. She's a seamer who bangs it into the pitch hard. So that's going to be exciting to watch. And Amanda Jade Wellington at the Western Storm. Now that is going to be exciting. Might have to get down to a few of those games. One of the best leg spinners in the world has Dawson. Bowls now, quicker delivery. Goes back to that one, Spalderson. Plays it cautiously into the onside. It's the end of the over, 128 for two. Balderson yet to get off the mark still. He's playing sensible innings out there so far, but I'm sure it'll just be at the back of his mind to pick up that single wherever he can, or a boundary, of course. Nicola Hancock, Sunrisers. Yes. Tell us a little bit more. Tell us more. About Nicholas, Nicola Hancock. Well, as I said, she plays for the Brisbane Heat, and a lot of her wickets have come from her hitting the deck hard. Um, she's a bowler in the women's game in particular who really utilises the shorter ball. And as a result, she's quite effective with the slur ball bounces as well. I've seen her pick up quite a few wickets, almost caught in the ring at mid-off and mid-on when the ball's got a bit high on the batters trying to play a cross-bat shot. So I think it'll be an exciting signing. He's full around the wickets. Who Jennings punches it up to mid-on. And Thunder... Signed Katie Mack and Georgia Vol. Lots of Australian players coming across, which which makes sense because if you look at the kind of England players going over to play in the Big Bash, there was a, a, a lot of the main England players like Maya Bouchier, Alice Capsey, who, who went over there and, and played, but also you had the likes of Danny Gibson who wanted to almost make a further mark and actually worked really well into her favour. Georgia Adams was over there as well. And you can kind of see some fringe players making the most of these opportunities to go over to Australia, play in the Big Bash. I've seen a few players in the New Zealand Super Smash and then they have a bit of a swap and they come over for the summer. Yeah. I, think, I, I think it must be a great life. You just follow the sun everywhere you go. Lovely. We're following the sun here. It's a beautiful afternoon. A bit warm. I think I need to put my sun cream on. <laughs> They've just been looking at the ball, Mohamed Abbas showing the ball to the umpire but it's back in the hands of Fuller once more he's round the wicket runs towards us bowls to Jennings Jennings drives on the up straight to cover point who's Nick Gubbins I'm a bit concerned for our milk at the back of the box if the sun moves around just a tiny bit more we've got about four cartons of milk there which I'm sure wouldn't benefit from direct sunlight did it taste alright earlier? I think it was fine yeah. the big test will be tomorrow I can see oat milk if we can start shaking it and it feels like there's something solid in there, then maybe we'll have to give it a pass. <laughs> By day four, you're going to be getting food poisoning. If it's the same milk, yeah, I'd be slightly be concerned. Touching. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I've never tasted oat milk in my life, so I don't know what that's like. Here comes Fuller. Jennings works that to mid-wicket. No run. Filled it by Prest. I would say it's like liquid porridge. Is it? It's very pleasant with cereal potentially as well. Which one did you have this morning? I had the lactose-free milk. And that tastes like? Cow's milk without the lactose enzyme in oh, it. Right, yes. For, the, for us mere mortals, what does that For actually taste like? <laughs> slightly sweeter cow's milk. Okay. There we go. For those not versed in the wonders of modern society and how many milks we, we have, yeah. it's a great time to be alive. <laughs> Jennings is forward, another accurate delivery from Fuller. What a spell this has been. Normally we see him concede a few runs as well as taking the odd important wicket here. He's taken the important wicket of Josh Bohannon, but actually his runs conceded is less than the number of overs he's been bowling. He's into his fifth. And what's the other carton of milk? Because there's three up there. I think there's, a, there's an almond. An almond. <laughs> you don't have to it's ask almond. me what that tastes like as well. It tastes oh, like almonds, I think. Does it really? Oh, no. Crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're three cartons of milk all in your sort of sphere, aren't they, really? Oh, it's in the air and he's, oh, he's dropped! He's put down at point and Fuller sinks to his knees. Oh, that was a chance. And it's gone. Keaton Jennings looked up in the air and wondered what he'd done. He's had a reprieve and he don't think he can quite believe it. I think 
One thing I was about to mention earlier is, you know, obviously in the longer format, it's almost harder as a fielder to, to stay focused because the ball might not come to you for overs on end. Yeah. But it's those chances, particularly on surfaces like that, you've just got to take them. And the ball was in his hands. And actually, usually the ball kind of falls out when the fielder's elbows hit the ground. But I actually think it started falling before then. He just couldn't quite keep his grip. Oh, it's Nick Gubbins, I think, there. Oh, dear. That's a definite chance as that's a length ball. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, that's a good over. Gubbins is just... Got his hands on his knees there, he knows it's just one of those things. You don't mean to put catches down, but that may just prove costly. Yeah, it was nice to see Hampshire teammate running up to him and giving him a bit of a pat on the back because, you know, no one intends to do that, but it, it sits with you. And Jennings has been out there for 101 balls now. Everyone knows what a class player he is and the damage he can do on a surface like this as well, where you can grind down you know Lancashire might be looking at it and say bat for the rest of today bat for as much as we can tomorrow and you know even see if that's enough it's, it's interesting at the moment to see how a, a result will arise from this game because there is such a, a distance between the wickets being taken but that was a serious chance for Hampshire as a full delivery slightly over pitched in fact which is driven by Balderson into the covers for a single he gets off the mark well it was reminiscent last night of Will Williams dropping Liam Dawson, similar sort of area, similar type of shot. And uh, uh, it, it didn't prove too costly from a Lancashire point of view. Dawson had 20, uh, 51 at the time, he made 86 in the end. Oh dear. Gubbin, I'd back Gubbins 19 times out of 20, at least. He's in it. Close catching mid-wicket now is Dawson bowls and sticking out the front pad is Jennings, solid in defence. Dawson fields off his bowling. 129 for two, could have been three. But in the final over before the tea break, at least it will be something they can go in, have a sit down and say, look it happened. He doesn't have to dwell on it too long out there. There's bowling again, defence from Jennings, back down the pitch. Another dot ball. So it was 100 balls before Jennings offered a chance. <laughs> well, did he have that earlier one, which was oh, dropped by Ben Brown? Yes, yes, of course. The bowling of Kyle Abbott. Yes. We think it was an edge, we're pretty confident it was. Dawson bowling, playing around the front pad towards Nick Gubbins at mid-wicket. Dot ball. I, I, I think it must have been an edge earlier yeah. on because we haven't seen that much deviation <laughs> off the pitch, so there must have had to be some material interference. Yeah. Dawson, slower delivery, and again patiently waiting as Jennings plays it into the covers. And we've got an answer, milk-wise, never thought I'd be saying that, from Neil. <laughs> Explorer Coffee, so I feel like he's going to be an expert on this. Of course, other coffee makers are available. <laughs> As Dawson, at the top of his mark. Bowling a much quicker delivery this time to Jennings, who clips it out towards deep mid-wicket. Fielder runs around from deep square to field. End of the over, 130 for two after 41. And I think that will be the tea break. Good session for Lancashire. And that chance going down just now. Jennings dropped at point by Nick Gubbins. How big a moment will that be? But I think you'd say now it, it could still be even just because we know this is a good batting surface. But I think if Hampshire had just taken that wicket, maybe it would have been slightly in their favour. 118 runs scored in that session for those two wickets of Wells and Bahannon. What's that answer then, Mel? Very quickly, oat milk is apparently the preferred milk alternative of the coffee industry as it acts more like regular milk when steamed for lattes and flat whites. The more you know. There you go, we've learned something. So, uh, we're going to take a break for uh, 20 minutes and uh, we will be back with you shortly for the evening session here on day two with Keaton Jennings 37 not out, George Balderson on one not out, Lancashire 130 for two, uh, Trail Hampshire 
by 257 runs.
County Championship Division 1 match between Hampshire and uh, Lancashire. Wickets are hard to come by so far. The state of play as we get into this final session is that Lancashire replying to the Hampshire all-out total earlier on this morning of 367 are 130 for two. Uh, 41 overs have been bowled at them. Keaton Jennings is 37 not out. George Balderson is one not out. Uh, to take you through this uh, last session of play on day two is uh, a little later. Melissa Story. And to take you through this first passage is myself, Kevin James, and from BBC Manchester and Lancashire, it's Scott Reid. I thought Hampshire were excellent in that afternoon session. They built pressure really well, didn't they? Um, Abbott, I think, firstly, and then um, Fuller backed it up from the pavilion end. And the wicket of Bahannon, just on the um, kind of stroke of tea a little bit, was, was an absolute bonus, wasn't it, for Hampshire? Yeah. I think they've done really well. And Keaton Jennings should have gone. More yeah. on that in a moment as Abbott comes in round the wicket to Jennings. He pushes forward up towards uh, mid-off. Yes. And uh, just before T, Jennings went to uh, play a cut shot and couldn't keep it down. And it sort of looped, didn't it, to Nick Gubbins at cover point, who couldn't keep hold of it. His, it was just above his head, but he was there. He had it. His hands were around it. But it inexplicably... The ball dropped out of his hands to the ground and we back him to take that uh, on many occasions, more often than drop it, that's for sure. And there was a few sighs of ooh in the uh, Hampshire ranks and probably around the ground as well, outside the off stump, left alone. And Keaton Jennings himself, I think, is just he, looked as if did. to say, my gosh, I can't believe you've dropped that. Well, he did that thing, Jennings, where he, and he, he, he does this quite a bit when he, when he gets out. He kind of tosses his bat up in the air and catches it. And he'd done that. Yeah. So he hit it straight to Gubbins, stepped back, and then tossed his bat up, caught it, and then in that moment, then could see that Gubbins had dropped the ball. So yeah, he, he was absolutely convinced he was he was out. It was, yeah. It's a it's a lifeline for the yeah. captain. Drives into the gap in the covers, and there'll be runs here. It won't go all the way to the rope. Gubbins, the man at cover, diving, but uh, a good yard or so away from the delivery. And that's three uh, from the shot. And that's three runs to Keaton Jennings. Takes him on to 40. 133 for two. Lancashire trail by 234. So that would have been, uh, uh, I would have capped off an absolutely terrific session for Hampshire had they got Keaton's wicket just on the stroke of tee. Um, but they've managed to build pressure. They've managed to make it difficult on, on, a, on a, a good pitch with a ball that's not doing a lot. Yes. So I think I mean, we mentioned how well Lancashire did this morning. I think they were excellent in the field, and I think Hampshire likewise. I think the bowling from both sides has been excellent. There's a drive from Balderson, reaches Gubbings, and there's no run, I think, all round. Mm. I think everybody's worked hard on a pitch which spinner, seamer, quicker bowler has not really given anybody much help at all. Yeah, I think, I think it's been a pretty impressive effort all round. Um, it's over to the batters now, isn't it, from a Lancashire point of view. So, Hampshire, four batters get into at least 50. Two got to 50. Gubbins and Vince, two got into the 80s. Preston, uh, Dawson. Lancashire need a couple to, to contribute in, similar, in a similar way. Abbott round the wicket again from the pavilion end. Wide. Balderson leaves alone. Uh, Abbott bowled a very good spell just before T. Yeah, yep. Into his 11th over here. Nearly completed 11. Number 37, but... James Fuller was excellent. Five overs, three maidens, one for three. He picked up the wicket of Josh Bohannon, who looked very good for his 30, but perhaps felt that he just got a, a, a little bit becalmed. Went to force a shot on the offside. Good length ball, got a bottom edge or an inside edge onto his stumps. It was a result of some very good bowling, not just from Fuller, but also being backed up at the other end. That created a bit of pressure outside the off stump. Again, Balderson uh, leaves alone. And it was Fuller, actually, that uh, saw Nick Gubbins drop mm -hmm. Keaton Jennings. And he sunk to his knees to James Fuller. He couldn't believe it. And he wasn't the only one, really. I think Nick Gubbins himself is probably one of those. End of the other, 133 for two. Yeah, so a real 
lifeline for the Lancashire captain who's batted really patiently. I mean, he's, he's 40 from 109 deliveries. And he's sim Bohannon at the start of the bad innings was really quite aggressive. Wells played his usual kind of flamboyant way. Jennings has played a different style. He's got his head down, he's played in a, at his own pace. Yeah. He'll be hoping to, to try and build a, a, a big innings here. It's quite, it's quite an important part of, of, of this because you're batting on it now because they've got rid of two of the top three, Hampshire. Tom Bruce still to come. They've got George Balderson, who's had a, who had a fine season last year. Got George Bell, Matty Hirsch, got a couple of the younger guys in the middle order as well. So, important little period this for Lancashire. Captain in particular, they've got a crucial role to play here. You can see um, uh, more Bass to open up the bowling after tea from the, the Hilton Hotel end of the ground. It's Jennings, who's on strike. 133 for two. Bass comes right up around the wicket to uh, to Jennings. It's down the leg side and taken by uh, Ben Brown low down to his, his left. Throw it to his right and there is no run. So a Bass has positioned two fielders on the leg side boundary. A deep square leg and a fine leg. He's got a one he's got one slip in place, that's Sir James Vince, the captain. And there's a short um, mid wicket. Which is uh, Tom Prest. There's a short extra cover in Liam Dawson, mid off and a mid on, and a cover and a backward point. Jennings leaves this one outside the off stump, through to Ben Brown, and there is no run. Fletcher Middleton just at a backward point, and Nick Cubbins who's at mid off, Kyle Abbott's at mid on, leaving uh, Ian Holland completely. Uh, Fielding circle on that offside. 1 3 3 for 2. I guess you're still trailing by 234 runs. Here comes the wind. Yeah, the breeze has picked up a bit. A bass for Hampshire. Balls just back of a length and carved away by Keaton Jennings. Down towards the deep back will point boundary for four runs. A little bit of width there for the Lancashire captain to freeze arms up with. And then guides the ball nicely enough away down through back will point for four more. It's 137 for two. Mm. Jennings moves on to 44. It's a Dawson ball for a, a long spell this afternoon from this Hilton Hotel end. To, to keep this end pretty secure and the seam has rotated from the other end. It's flicked away down to fine leg. It might be four more for Jennings. Yes, it is. One that was uh, cut behind square on the offside. The next one glanced away off his pads as the basketball's around the wicket to him. Just helped it down towards fine leg for four more. Jennings moves on to 48. It's 141 for two. With uh, a couple of balls left of the over. So eight off it so far. As a bass gets himself settled into this uh, opening spell. And he's uh, setting off again past the umpire into to Jennings. And turns it off his pads down towards fine leg just for a single this time. And, uh, Jennings ticks along to. 49 not out, so slowly creeping up towards that half century mark. Lancashire now 142 for two. Congratulations if, like Scott, you picked out the winning horse oh, at the Grand National. Don't remind me. I didn't put a bet on, by no. the way. That's, that's, that's criminal. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. It's <laughs> a bass. To, uh, um, Balderson, well that's down to third man for four runs for George Balderson but uh, it's left a bass looking a little grumpy the fast bowler at the end of the over Lancashire now 146 for two but Balderson has five and Jennings on 49 so I don't know what price it came in at 7 so to 1 it was how much? 7 to 1 7 to 1 
you put your usual 50 quid on. Exactly. I'd have been all right, wouldn't I? Mm. I'd have bought you a drink tonight. But it's all right, Kevin, because yours came second. Well, yes, and I and I did put a couple of quid you on, did, did you? but not much. I think it'll just about cover mine and yours drink. Lovely. But that's, but that's all right. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melissa's was trailing, wasn't it? We, yeah. we we saw the text commentary and it was trailing, it's trailing about eight minutes into the race. Panda boy. As uh, Jennings pushing that out square out of the offside, Carl Abbott continuing from the pavilion end round uh, the wicket. So, uh, yeah. I didn't actually realise it was the favourite that I picked. No. I just liked the name. I am Maximus. Yeah. And we were going just off that, weren't we, really? But I don't think we put mm. an extensive amount of research into this. We hadn't. Into this. No. No, I think I only spent about 30 seconds on mine last night, reading the BBC Sport website. <laughs> Plays inside the line there, quite deliberately keeping Jennings as the ball goes through to Ben Brown. So 146 for two here in Lancashire. We're into the 44th over of their reply. Hampshire earlier bowled out for 367, added 62 for their last four wickets this morning. The innings lasted about an hour and 25 after resuming on 3.05 for six. Liam Dawson, 61 not out overnight, was the second wicket to fall for 86. Nathan Lyon finishing with three wickets. He picked up the last one of Kyle Abbott, who's bowling now, and Jennings pushes forward. Again, it's a good length ball, and again, Jennings happy to just push that out on the offside. Get past that, says Keaton Jennings. He's on 49. That life that he had that we were talking about before T was on 36. Sunshine is still out. The um, couple of gusts of wind we had a few minutes ago seem to have gone. That's good news. And it's a very pleasant evening. It's been a pleasant afternoon. It was a pleasant afternoon yesterday. The weather is slowly but surely improving. He's walking into that and I, he's playing at that. They got excited there. Abbott still got his hands in the air. That bounced a bit off the track as well. Let's watch that on the replay. You'll see Jennings walking into that if you're watching on the live picture feed. Uh, but just gets one to bounce and leaves Jennings. Mm. Of course, Kyle Abbott will be used to this kookaburra ball. Yeah, that's Having true. played yeah. test cricket for South Africa and grown up in South Africa, a kookaburra would have been in his hand throughout his career until he came here, of course. So he's probably more experienced with this ball than most. Comes in again. Balls. Jennings, I think, is definitely playing inside the line there. Seems to be doing it more and more. It's almost as if, not that he gets unsure, but I think if he feels the bowler maybe has just found a nice rhythm and a nice spot, that he seems to then bring out this non-shot shot. <laughs> but, uh, it's good bowling. As we saw in the Hampshire innings, we've seen tight bowling from everybody that's been on, really. I haven't really seen a period of play where any of the batters have been able to sort of just cut loose. Jennings does play at this one and pushes that out into the covers. One or two have come in and gone and threatened, haven't they, to sort of up the scoring rate and maybe briefly have. That's a maiden over for Kyle Abbott. Half his 12 overs now have been maidens, number 30. At seven, we saw Tom Press go through a nice little spell when he made his 85 yesterday. Vincent Gubbins threatened, didn't they, with their partnership of 84 yesterday afternoon. Luke Wells played really well for his 55, 69 balls. Josh Bahannon started fairly quickly, but nobody seems to be able to sort of keep that up for any length of time. Those are the ones that have threatened it. Everybody else just sort of played their normal game. And if you bowl accurately on here, slowish nature of the pitch it's been difficult to get away yeah credit to the uh, uh, reflection on the quality of the bowling on both sides when you, mm. you look at the scores elsewhere in the country There's Abbas is uh, into to Balderson it's uh, tickled away down to fine leg for a single everyone's using this cooker up ball and you're seeing an absolute stack of runs being piled up in, in other games around the country the bat is dominating the ball in almost all the other games well it's not quite been the case here and certainly not today we've seen actually the bowlers who have managed to really kind of cause problems for the batters and make it quite difficult and you've not really seen 
the other little counter attack that Bahannon starts at his innings the way that Wells batted perhaps. There's a bass balls again left by Jennings, so to the keeper no run, but I think some really good disciplined bowling. Yeah. On, on both sides. We've seen an absolutely stack of runs elsewhere. I mean Essex five hundred and thirty for seven declared. Kent in reply one hundred and sixty for one. I said the Warwickshire score was in Durham's response now. They're 130 for two in, in reply to that. Plenty of runs for Nottinghamshire, plenty of runs at the Oval as well. So, quite kind of gone according to the other games, this one here. So far, pass in, swiped away for four by Keaton Jennings. That will bring up a 50. As the ball drills its way out towards the deep backward point boundary, the Lancashire captain gets his uh, first half century of the summer. He's played with great patience and great care. That's Keaton Jennings. That was walloped away for four. <laughs> 40th time he's passed 50 in first class cricket in his 175th match. So, also brought up the Lancashire 150 as well. 151 for two. Jennings to 53 with that. And uh, plays nicely off the front foot in defence. And finds Liam Dawson extra cover. And there's no run. Yeah, when you look around, actually, and you see their scores in Division 1, and we are. You know, late in today too. There could be a few draws on the come the end of uh, Monday evening, unless somebody really puts a charge in. Will anybody risk victory? More risk a defeat for victory. A bass to, to Jennings. That's played up towards Kyle Abbott at mid on no run. So there was only one result last week, wasn't there? Essex yep. beating Knots. You look at the scores now, it's difficult to find a winner in any of those, isn't it? At the moment, I know well, we're not quite halfway through. Are we? Potentially see something developing at the Oval, couldn't you? Surrey's got a bit yeah. of a lead, they've got five wickets in hand. Some set collapse in their first things. You wouldn't be surprised if that True. potentially worked its way towards a result. The bass to Jennings, oh, looking to cut the ball, but plays underneath it. And uh, through it goes to Ben Brown at the end of the over. 1-5-1 one, one for two, Lancashire Bobberson on six and Jennings on 53. 28 overs till the end of day two. I think we're going to get all those in, looking at the conditions. Hazy sky, but that's, uh, that's all it is. Sunshine is still burning through to some extent. You mentioned kind of possibly risking a defeat to try and get a win um, and that's something I've heard Dale Benkinstein allude to and something that Mark Chilton the cricket director has also suggested that Lancashire might look to try and change through the course of this season their approach to games and maybe the suggestion they were a little bit cautious previously interesting as Abbott bowls round the wicket to Balderson who Takes that off fairly straight as the ball works its way to square leg, fielded by Ian Holland. A bit maybe risk averse, and yeah. the idea is uh, it's traditionally, certainly when you're playing it in Manchester, you kind of you, you try and back once, uh, bat once, and bat big, and that's how you're best positioned to try and win games. And actually, that might not be the way to try and win games, certainly at uh, Emirates Old Trafford, because you, you need to you need time to try and bowl teams out twice. Obviously, batting ones takes a lot of time. So it was just quite interesting to hear what he was saying. He was speaking to Kevin Howes on Five Sports Extra last week with Mark Chilton about maybe just being a little bit more... Risk. Positive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Balderson again takes it from fairly straight. Goes out again to Ian Holland on the leg side. You might have to try and risk the possibility of yeah. losing to try and win games. Because you don't really go anywhere with... Uh, has it changed a bit with eight points again for a draw? But certainly the last few years, you didn't go anywhere with draws. Draws got you nowhere. No. Whereas actually this year, it's a lot to give up. Eight points, mm. isn't it? Well, it feels a lot to give up now. Five felt nothing no, at all. Didn't, no. I know it's only three points difference. and But when you look at some of the positions at the end of the year, you know sometimes it's one or two points that makes all the difference. Here's Gabbert. Balderson drives straight. 
and he's going to take a quick single and that's a lower bass I think there diving as well keeps them down to a single total moves on to 152 for two Lancashire Trail by 215 I think it's perhaps one of the factors behind um, the decision that the club and Glen Chapel made about you know just 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 going their separate ways a little bit and trying a fresh approach and a, and a fresh fresh ideas and this idea of maybe just, say being a little bit more positive yeah. as you say yeah Abbott Bowles Jennings leaves alone I, I have to say when you look at the table and you only look at the table you don't look at anything else because there's always reasons for this and that that you guys are a better side than fifth yeah for whatever reason that you finished fifth and I you had a lot of draws and what have you but I, I think I, I always thought you guys were a better side than that well the previous two seasons I think they finished second didn't they um, mm. the, the season before last they, they finished runners up in all three competitions as uh, mm. Abbott Bowles straight to Jennings pushes up to short mid wicket as we remember on T20 finals day yeah. Ooh, which finals day, Scott? I mean, yeah. there's just so many. I, can't I know. I, I, I feel your pain with that, actually. Yeah. Ten. I mean, it, it, I've got to scroll through ten, Scott. <laughs> I know you've only been there nine. Nine. We've been there nine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, two years ago. Well, it was one of the all-time great finals. Whoever won or lost. When you look back, form, I know at the time it's probably painful for one side more than the other. But uh, one of the all-time great finals. Abbott Bowles, outside the off stump, and that's uh, left alone. But I have to say, I do remember two or three semi-finals leading up to the to final in, in years gone by at Edgbaston, that you guys have got the better of us. Mm. So things have a habit of evening themselves out. I know you guys took that defeat graciously. <laughs> Absolutely, of course we did. That wasn't the word I heard. <laughs> Very well, all in, all in our stride. <laughs> one, one, five, two for two. But it's just, no, it's, it's fun being there, no matter what. I mean, yes, annoying if you're out in the semi final. And Hampshire have had more than their fair share of losing semi finals up there, including last year. But uh, it's all about being there, isn't it? And it is, it is, however many times you go up there, it is a great day back into September again this year isn't oh, it? No, that's not good is it? that's not rubbish, good isn't it? that is rubbish you're right most of the overseas players that would have played earlier on but won't be back will they it's, yeah. it's, that's not good I'm sure there's a good reason but that hasn't been passed on well, I think the final group game is in July and the final's in mm. September it's you oh it's Dawson into uh, Bannon sorry I was getting grumpy uh, it's driven <laughs> away into the offside straight to extra cover and there's no run isn't it find something you can always find something to moan about? But I think generally, I don't, I, I don't know too many people, and I'm talking of people that play as well as people who don't play, that think it's a great idea of extending the competition as long as it is. It's back with left arm spin for the first time after T. Oh, he's pulling to Balderson, who's just rocked forward and thrust that front pad forward. Ball goes, goes past and into the gloves of, of Ben Brown. Is that turned out of the rough? Watch the replay. We just have done, although it's a bit bright, isn't it, to see the screen. Dawson to uh, Balderson, who's back and defending, and there's no run. So it's what um, more bass to op opening up after tea from the the hotel end, but just a couple of overs for a bass. Dawson quickly back into the attack as he bowled from the same through most of the afternoon. He's creeping in again and fizzing one in towards Bolderson, who's off the back foot, forcing the ball away to next recover. And again, there is no run. 152 for two. Dawson into his 13th over then. Forward short leg and a slip. Backward square leg, a deep square leg. Backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, and the short mid wicket. And he's going left arm over the wicket to Bolderson, who's a left hander. Driven to uh, to mid off, and George Balderson takes the single, so he moves on to eight, 153 for two now. One ball left of Dawson's 
first over of this final session of the second day. Forecast is good again for tomorrow. A bit dicey for Monday, certainly in the morning. So Jennings off the back foot works it to mid wicket. Nick Gubbins fields. That's the end of the over, just a single off it. 153 for two. Lancashire. Robertson on eight and Jennings on 53. So what have we had? We've had uh, 12 wickets fall haven't we, in the game so far. I'm just looking at the Essex-Kent game. They've had eight wickets fall. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, 13 wickets fall in the Nottinghamshire-Worcestershire game and 15 in the Surrey-Somerset and five in the Warwickshire-Durham game. <laughs> so you're right, going back to that point about the ball and the conditions and what have you, it's... I don't know. Is, is this the right? Is this the right way to go? Good pitches and Cookerborough ball, whereas we had before too much the other way. Greenish pitches, a bit up and down pitches with the Dukes. There's got to be a happy medium there somewhere, isn't there? As uh, Abbott bowls, it's touched into the ground and fielded a deep gully. My Fletcher Middleton. There's got to be a happy medium somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. Um be, inter be interesting again next week. We're back to Duke's balls next week, aren't mm. we? So we? See what the scores are like next week because the batters certainly have had a chance to get get in get in touch. We've seen is it six double centuries in the first two rounds of the of the season, which All right. is some going, isn't it? it? Is especially with the conditions of last week. <laughs> yeah, it's pushed away on the onside by Balderson. I think we've had two this in this round so far, and I think we had. Four last in last week, I think, including the treble. Yeah, yeah, including that treble. Yeah, so mm. batters have got themselves time in the middle, ready for the Duke's ball to come to return next week. See what impact that's had. Yeah. I mean, it's a long season. You're going to have if you play 14 games. You're going to have periods where form fluctuates and pitches change. So maybe it's just, it's just a part of it. Is Abbott bowls. Balderson works that into the gap on the onside. Hits it a little stronger as well. That should go for four. Nicely timed. By the 23-year-old. That was good timing, wasn't it? Takes him on to 12. 157 for two. Trail by 210 to Lancashire. Nice looking shot. Yeah, it was. Just waited for it. So a length ball from Abbott. Maybe a little too straight. But nothing wrong with the length. Bit of a breakthrough year for him last year, George Balderson, who mentioned to uh, Melissa before, he got two centuries last season, his first centuries for in first-class cricket. Faces Abbott and finds the same gap, but not hit with the same timing. So it's just a single, 158 for two. And previously he got to the, into the 90s three times and out in the 90s three times, and last season twice he was able to, to convert and get, his, get to three figures, and then he finished with 500 and odd runs I think and 20 odd wickets so he had he had a, he had a good season a yeah. solid season for a young player average 32 with the bat 34 with the ball it's not too you know that's a, that's a okay. decent all round season isn't it mm. steady hasn't played that much cricket no it's only his 34th or 35th I think outside the off stump and that's left alone which is not a lot So just this, oh, there's one slip now. Vince is coming out. He's going to position himself somewhere towards the umpire. That's where he's walking to. He's going to be a square leg, deepish gully. Backward, it's backward square leg really, but there for the flick rather than the catch. Ah, but again, running towards us and bowls and... Keeping well inside the line there, Keaton Jennings to end that over. Another good over from Abbott, although five runs were completed off it, or scored off it. 158 for two. I said some fancy costumes in this hotel today, you know. Have you seen some of these fancy costumes? Yes. I was in the lift with um, this woman before, and she had the most magnificent kind of ball gown on thing. This looks like something that you'd see in Strictly Come Dancing, that type of outfit. Now, unless she just wears that casually on a Saturday afternoon, or whether there's something going on in the hotel, 
There's a dancing competition that'll going on it, in right. the ballroom. Okay, yes. that'll be it. Yes. Uh, the only reason I know that is because somebody told me we got in the lift. Right. Who okay. was also wearing something some flamboyant. Something flamboyant, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dancing competition. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of people in sequins and... Yes. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what competition it is, but yeah. Here's Liam Dawson into uh, to George Balderson. Balderson plays forward in defence, and there's no run. It's a bit like a could be a bit like a, a mini Strictly Come Dancing. Then you could have the judging panel, and you'll hold your scorecard up. It's number seven. Give you eight. Give you a nine for that. That type of thing. Mm. Okay. Would you be a good judge at that? Do you think? Um, Sounds like you've done a bit of dancing in your past. A long time ago. Oh, hello. Dawson in to, to Balderson, who comes down the pitch. That's a good shot. looking shot. That's four runs. It'll skip towards Dawson and um, absolutely middles out through a straight mid off for four. He's on to 17, 162 for two. Well, before you go, you must explain. Well, I, 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 I used to do that when I was a lot younger. Maybe I was about 12 or 13 with my, with my um, nana. Yeah. Okay. Me and my nan used to go. Used to go dancing. I don't think I was any good. Ballroom and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She taught you? She did. Yeah. Dawson balls. It's off the back foot by Balderson and there's no run. You do a mean American smooth? I, I, I can't say I remember any of the moves now. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what an American smooth is. It sounds like a cocktail now, but um, <laughs> it was. I seem to remember kind of enjoying it, but I was. Yeah. Pretty young, maybe yeah, 10, 11, maybe that age. Okay. Dawson to Balderson, who's forward in defence, and there's no run. Maybe I should go and watch them tonight. See if I, see if the the flame burns again. It might be one of those. It's a day competition because I noticed oh, yeah. that there were people here when I arrived. Oh right, okay. Mm -hmm. So it was obviously starting quite. I think it's one of these that's all day. Right. Of course, sounds quite serious. Mm. Dawson over the wicket to Balderson. Oh, I'm just gonna trotting forward and the ball gets through him and hits Ben Brown and drops down to forward short leg. This is a bit quicker that from Dawson. Yeah, and it just looks as though maybe one or two of the follow through footmarks are starting to wear a little. Just giving the spinners a little bit more encouragement, which will be interesting when it, Nathan Lyon comes to bowl again. Final ball of the over. It's driven, but it comes off the inner half of the bat. Looking to try and punch it to mid off and ball deflects to mid on. End of the over, 162 for two. Am I done? Should I dance my way out the commentary box? Well, show us your moves. Well, you'll have to. You. I, can't just do, I can't just perform like that. I need to Can warm up. Oh, oh, of course you do. Spoken like a true pro. There we are. I've learned something about Scott. All these years I've been working with him and he used to do some ballroom dancing when he was younger. Did you do any of that, Melissa? No, I was never quite a dancer. I've got quite big feet, and I have since I was quite young. So I don't think I was designed for intricate foot movements. Right. I think I was designed to put three times my body weight through the left one every time I bowl. And pull that arm over your shoulder. Yeah. Through. Yes. Designed to put yourself into excruciating positions, which the human body is not meant to do. Correct. The joy of cricket. It's a very un, uh, un uh, what's the word? Unnatural act bowling. Do you reckon you could spell that one, or would you have a bit of difficulty? I like struggle you did to with say interference? it. <laughs> yes, that was a. Yes, Mel helped me with my spelling at the tea break. Uh, Fuller's into the attack here, bowled superbly before T, pulled, helped down to the fine leg. His first delivery by Jennings moves on to 54 and it's 163 for two. Lancashire trail by 204. It really is nice just to have, you know, and to, to observe so much county cricket happening this round, which isn't being interfered with, with rain. <laughs> because, you, you know, it is a bit of a gamble early season and there's plenty of discussion to be had. I know Michael Averton did a brilliant article the other day about scheduling of the Red Bull game, but... You know, you do get lucky with weeks like this. For sure. Fuller's round the wicket. Balderson plays that late and works it into the gap behind square. Runs down towards third. It won't go all the way. Picked up and thrown back by Fletcher Middleton. And Balderson, I think, has picked up two. He has. 
moves on to 19, 165 for 2. It's just too many Red Bull games, isn't it? It'd be easier to schedule if you play 10 or even 12, which I think is coming, don't you? I, I get the feeling it's coming. It's just when. I suspect so. I, I particularly think for those players who are still balancing multiple formats, people will start to get injured and not as many counties have the depth they would want. Balderson off the back foot. Lovely shot in front of Square. Finds the gap again. Hit a little harder. It still won't quite reach the rope. It's picked up just a yard or so inside. Balderson picks up three. Moves on to 22. 165, yeah. 168 for two, that'll be. Yeah, nice there from Alderson, who took, I think, 11 del deliveries to get off the mark. Now moved on to 22, off 36, and looking a lot more comfortable. But, I mean, you know, if you look towards the end of last season, the amount of bowlers who were on loan to different counties, if someone had kept track of it, it would have looked like a, I don't know, an FBI investigation, all these bits of string attached to different counties. Length ball to... Jennings, he plays it out square on the offside. And it was a bit of a mess because, you know, you had counties who had completely used up their reserves and just who weren't able to, to bowl their regular bowlers because they were absolutely exhausted. And, you know, I think either we'll keep playing the same amount of cricket and players will get injured, players will have to make a decision about what formats they want to prioritise and play in. You know, counties might have to look into getting larger squads, recruiting more overseas players, but then the finance comes into that. Or, you know, we, we play less games and preserve the player's health. Full of delivery, which Keaton Jennings plays back to uh, the bowler. Well, I would say, uh, I mean, let's say, for instance, let's pick a figure out of the year. Ten first-class games, that wouldn't put so much strain on the counties. It's, just, it, it's so difficult as well, though, because then, you know, let's say a, a county who doesn't have a 100 team will then be going, actually, you've cut off our chances to get revenue in removing those two Red Bull games. Yes, they're not the main revenue achiever for most counties, but I, I guess for them they're going, we need to have as much cricket as possible to get in crowds to get in money. Fuller round the wicket. Jennings flicks that away square. There's a man out deep. It's just a single to him. 55, he moves on to 169 for two. One thing I'm going to be intrigued in is this private investment, which is being spoken about, and they're trying to attract it into the hundred. It will be how that's distributed, because you know they'll be looking. They're looking first to sell off interests in the the eight franchise teams rather than the competition as a whole. That's good for them because it means they'll almost be able to facilitate two-stage sale, starting with the teams and then sell again with the competition if that was the direction they wanted to go. But you almost hope that the private investment will funnel through the ECB because it was if it's a purchase to the 100 team owning counties, you almost fear that all the money will just go to them for, for the private investment whilst actually if it was funneled through the ECB, whatever money is paid into those eight teams, the ECB can make sure it's equally distributed between the 18 counties, which seems more equitable. But you don't know the, the, the inner goings on of, of these deals, which is always a concern for the smaller counties, as this one from Dawson's worked into the onside by Jennings for no run. And not smaller counties to say, but non-hundred. Owning franchise teams, which is a bit more of a mouthful. So, uh, when I read something, it may have been the same thing you've read. And you may have seen other things. As Dawson is in, using his feet and hitting this one into the onside. He didn't time it. And it's a bit fluky in the end. Ras is the shot again, does... Jennings gets a single, 170 for two, Lancashire. I saw a figure of 51%. Is that right? The ECB saying, or they might allow, or are working towards allowing counties with 100 base teams or grounds with 100 base teams to sell off 51%. So majority share. Majority yeah. share. So that means somewhere along the line there's 49% available. So is, are you saying, I, I, did I not read it right? Or have you read somewhere that part of that 59% or maybe it's a 40, 51 or part of the 49% later down the line is available to everybody? Well, I think that's what's the concern some people are voicing as a flatter delivery from Dawson's work to the second of the two mid wickets. I think more I've seen people express concern on social media that if that does happen, you know, the profits of the sale will be concentrated within those eight franchise teams to the benefit of those eight counties rather than 
being monitored and delegated by the ECB, is this time driven back to Dawson by Balderson for no run, and then just creating this bigger, you know, financial almost chasm between those 100 owning teams and the non 100 owning teams. And, you know, when you look at those who have recently had financial issues or might need to even considering in, you know, private owning into counties as well, which are currently member owned. Dawson in, going on the back foot as Boldson plays back down the pitch for no run, 170 for two. One ball left in this over. But either way, I, I guess what I'm saying is hoping there'll be effective safeguards to make sure that, you know, if you're going to be giving away a majority share in these teams, obviously not in the competition, that's the key thing, but in the teams, you just wonder how the other counties who don't benefit from the 100 and the financial benefits of the 100 are going to, you know, be able to make sure that they reap rewards from this as well. Yes, I know at the start of the 100, there was investment which was distributed between all 18 counties. It's coming down the pitch and defending his Balderson. Just readjusted at the last minute there. It looked as if he was going to open up down the ground, but readjusted his shot. 170 for two after 51 overs. But I guess, you know, that, that's the concern for everyone when, you know, you see clubs like Gloucestershire who currently haven't published their uh, accounts, I don't think, still. And there's speculation about levels of debt that they might be in. And comparing that to, you know, obviously it's a big comparison to make, but to the Oval where they not only benefit from being in the capital, benefiting from hosting lots of other events apart from cricket, but also reap the rewards of four competitions which get good crowds in. You know, it's never going to be entirely equal because, you know, this is a business and they can't, I guess, facilitate everything to be equal. Full of stud of a new over. Bolts to Jennings down the leg side. Flicks it away past the diving Ben Brown. What's it hit? Waiting for the umpire signal. It's hit his pad or part of his body. Uh, four leg buys. Takes the Lancashire total on to 174 for two. They trail by 193. No, I, I get it, but I think I, I don't understand the financial side of it, whatever, but I would say that some part of whatever's being sold off in maybe two tranches, whether it's part competition, part team, part whatever, that other counties will get some of that. It's just what and what percentage, but I think that the pressure is on the hosting grounds of these 100 teams, and there might be more pressure in the future if they start getting taken over James on the back foot pushed on the onside that there's going to be more investment needed because there'll be pressure to play those games and that pressure will come because if you have a wet August or I think this competition starting about third week of July this year yeah. isn't it the pressure will be that somehow you will need to put these games on they, that nobody will accept the fact that because it's raining the game ain't on which will require even more investment in some shape or form so Whoever, which whoever team, whichever county's got these teams, they will be spending proportionally a lot more of their income than the counties that don't have anything. Now that's speaking as somebody who doesn't really understand it, but that's how I see it. It's just trying to flick that away, Jennings. The ball literally is just about <laughs> a few inches away from leg stump. He just leaves it and waits for Vince to come in to pick the ball up. So you see what I'm saying? It, 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 you know, there is pressure on certain counties and the counties, i.e. the counties that host 100 teams to actually spend more money. So they're going to need more money. The counties that haven't got that won't have that pressure. That is true. It's a relentless cycle and you understand why they're, you know, inviting private investment because there was a, an earlier offer as well, I think, which requested the majority share potentially in the whole competition. Jennings does get a bat on that one, flicks it down to fine leg, moves on to 57, 175 for two. Which, yeah, they turned down in December of 2022. They received an Who? offer to be apparently worth 400 million for 75 percent. This but is the ECB. Yeah, mm. but they were like, we think the competition has more potential. They've waited a few years and they, they now see the value of selling rights and in individual teams and then the competition. So it's an investment which, you know, some would say has been worthwhile. And you know why they, of course, need private investment, because the calibre of overseas players potentially in the men's hundred hasn't been of the, the calibre which they would have liked. And they want it to be the second best, you know, shorter format competition in the world. That's uh, a full delivery, which is steered down to third man by Balderson. 
moves on to 23, 176 for two. To mention the 50 partnership between Balderson and Jennings as well, just that previous delivery. Because that, you know, looking at it now, saying it's the second best white ball competition in the world, I don't think it is. Because, you know, obviously the IPL's first, you've got the SA20, which is sponsored by a lot of those IPL teams, which is shot up in popularity. You've got the PSL, then you have plenty of other leagues, Major League Cricket in America, plenty in Saudi Arabia and the kind of Middle East area. Sri Lankan Premier League, Bangladesh. Mm. Length ball, Jennings plays that up the pitch. That's the end of the over. Full has completed seven overs, one for 12. He's putting a good stint either side of T. 176 for two. And now, of course, we've got the Scottish T10. Oh, yeah. Which starts on the day of the 100 final. So if you don't make the final, at least you can go up to Scotland. Nice sunny Scotland. Playing a quick two-week T10 tournament. I mean, I, I played in a T10 tournament when I was based down here in Southampton with Hursley Park. Mm. And it was incredible. You just blinked and the game was over. <laughs> and there was so much pressure on every delivery. And I think I, I just felt panicked every ball. I don't think it was it was quite for me, but we got to play the final at, at the Oval and, and luckily managed to, to win, which I didn't contribute at all to, but I was there. I've got the medal to show it. Was that the game Emily Windsor got runs in? I think so. Was it? That was, I remember, I remember the, um, I remember seeing some pictures of that, that game. Yeah. Dawson to continue, bowling his 16th over now. No wickets for him yet as he bowls outside the off stump on the back foot, pushing out to backward point. It's Balderson. He's 23 off 42. Well, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm listing up the international grounds I've been able to play at because I've played here, the Utility Bowl. On this ground? On this ground. I've oh. played at the Oval. Yeah. It's coming down the pitch and almost walking past the ball there was Balderson. He lost his footing a bit but pushes it back to Dawson. I've technically played at the international ground in France. Where's in, that? In Nantes. Okay. I think that's how you say it. I've Nantes, played, yeah, it is Nantes. Yeah. I played at the international ground in Kandy, in Sri Lanka. Mm. And then last summer I got to play at the county ground in Bristol. Mm. Full ball dug out by Balderson back to Dawson. 176 for two. What was the game here? The game here was for a T20 competition called Pro AM, which basically it was for men and women. I think there was three teams in the women's competition, a few more in the men's. That's Dawson. Bowles and on the back foot, looking to punch past Dawson in his follow through, but can't beat him. Another dot ball. And it basically was designed to treat you like a pro for two weeks. You would have you know, S&C plans and training and they'd give you kit and lots of sponsors and you'd go out here and play at the Utility Bowl for a few games. I got to face Kate Cross, which mm. was frankly terrifying. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. Full of ball, which this time he can drive past Dawson. A great tumbling stop. And the fielder at mid on. Still yeah, playing for England, is she? Yep, she is. She's had a, a good... Uh, ODI series against New Zealand. England won, women won four out of five of those ODIs. Sophie Devine took them apart a bit in the final one. I think she hit sort of like two or three sixes in a row to not only win the game but also get to her hundred, which was quite remarkable. That's Dawson. This time a reverse sweep and he's got enough contact on it to get it down to the boundary. Just Jennings. Well, moving on to 61. It was a full ball from Dawson. And he really had to get down low, meet it just after the bounce. But it was fine enough to beat the keeper, Brown, who moved quite quickly. And the fielder at short third, 181 for two, Lancashire. Is there um, any first-class um, grounds you've never played at? Any first-class? Obviously, which were in existence whilst you played. Because, as you said, you haven't played here, but it was built in 2001. Yeah, after I finished. But any grounds you didn't play at? Well, all the main grounds, obviously. So any of the ones outside of that. Blackpool? I didn't. That, that, funny enough, that was one ground I was just about to say. Blackpool I didn't play at. Southport? Uh, played. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think I played there either. No, I'm not sure how much Lancashire played there at Southport back in the 80s and 90s. I've got a feeling they might have gone through a phase where they didn't play much there, but somebody will correct me if that if that's wrong. Um, 
there's one or two. There is one or two, but I'd have to really think. <laughs> Here's Fuller. Length ball, pushed up to mid-off, and there is uh, no run. So what grounds are you looking at this season to complement the ones you've just mentioned? Well, I know I'm going to be playing, in terms of playing, I'm going to be playing at the county ground in, at Taunton. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if I get picked, for Gloucestershire versus Somerset, which is going to be a big local derby. Yeah. In terms of commentary, there's only two of the first-class grounds I haven't been to yet. And I believe that is Leicestershire and Derbyshire's grounds I've never been to. And I don't think I'm going to be visiting this summer as well, unfortunately. Because there is international cricket there, isn't there? He's wrapped on the pad there. Big shout from Fuller. It didn't look close enough from this distance. And bearing in mind the sort of decisions that have been turned down so far. Just watching again on the replay. Have a look. He's around the wicket. Next stumpish. Yeah, I, think, I mean, if it was hitting, it would be umpire's call top of leg yeah, stump. So I yeah. think the umpire's made the correct call there. I think the way the uh, decisions have been going so far in this game, that's fair enough. Um, actually, Emily Wins has texted me. Oh, there we go. Come she on. She loves a debate. Our friend Emily. There comes Fuller again. That's driven up to mid on and there's no run. Uh, Emily says, remember the 18 counties have to vote yet on this 100 thing, so there must be something in it to share money across all, otherwise they won't get voted through. Of course, all counties have to vote, and it has to be two-thirds, doesn't it? So, yeah. Good so point. Yeah. Thank you. Emily's uh, on commentary next week, I think, for a day. That's good. With us, yeah. When does the Southern Viper season kick off? It's it kicks soon, off. It? Yes, it is. It kicks off, I think, um, he says, looking now, because he's not sure. Uh, they are at Beckenham against the Stars on the 20th of April on the Saturday in the Rachel Hayho, driven up to mid-on firmly by Balderson but he can't get it past the fielder there that's Harry Bass, I think so yeah that kicks off then and there's as you know home and away in Rachel Hayho Flint to go with the home and away in the Charlotte Edwards and there's an awful lot of games for the regional sides in their last season and the Vipers fun. defending two titles which mm. they're a side who are used to that They've won plenty of competitions before and I think almost flourish having a bit of a target on their back. Mm. I think it makes them play better. It'll be a great shame when the brand of Southern Vipers disappears and uh, up to mid on because they've brought a, they've got themselves a formidable reputation, haven't they? And they'll always be supportive of a team who wears a slightly unusual coloured kit. Orange. Orange. I've been watching the IPL recently, Kev, mm. when there's been no county cricket on. Half the teams wear blue. They play against each other, and it's like when Hampshire and Gloucestershire play against each other in the one-day cup, and it's almost identical. The amount of teams in the, the men's circuit as well who wear blue kits, and that's the one thing I'd say about the women's. There's, there's, only, one, there's only one blue kit in the women's. Somebody needs to come up with different colours. That's a nice flick, fine to the boundary by George Balderson. A little too straight there from James Fuller to end that over, and Balderson capitalises. Deft flick. He moves on to 28, 185 for 2, 182 behind. Uh, just to come off topic for a minute, because earlier we were talking about draw and the points, because originally it was 5, it's gone up to 8 this year, and it has been sort of other various numbers, all in the single figures, I think, over the years. Uh, Liam Williamson has emailed sonantcricket at gmail.com and says, on the topic of those points for a draw, I wish above all else they keep it consistent. Would it not be best to stick it at six points? I think it has been in the past at some point. They, they just keep playing about with it because it, it depends on how they feel teams are playing a season, aren't they, where they're playing for draws on it. Uh, could be completely wrong, but it does feel a little like uh, Hampshire have suffered a little draw points in recent seasons. Uh, loving being back on the ground in this lovely sun. Enjoying the commentary. Dawson. Over the wicket, bowling to Jennings, who's solid in defence, back down the pitch. I mean, I guess there's so many factors, you know, they're playing around with the, the different types of balls being used, the different kinds of points, because they're trying to find that almost perfect combination. But it's difficult because the conditions are different each year and team yeah. dynamics are so different that I don't think there's an exact formula to it. As this time works the ball to mid-wicket, can't beat the fielder, a call of weight on from Jennings, who's on 61 off 145 balls. You're right, there's too many variables in the mix. And they, you know, when you, when you lower the points, then the teams go for wins, and they probably felt that they're doing it too much with the conditions. 
Dawson in, using his feet, working the ball past mid-wicket this time, fielded at long on, single taken, 186 for two. Up the points for a draw, and probably sides feel that if they get the majority of draws during the season, they'll at least avoid the drop. It's, uh, it's a I mean, difficult one. You can see the Lancashire season last year, if there had been a few more points available for draws, then it could have been yeah. a pretty different picture. As Dawson's bowling on the back foot, pushing out into the vacant cover region, but Dawson fields off his own bowling, another dot ball. I do wonder whether, I felt like Hampshire last year, the surfaces they, they produced and the way I mentioned earlier that they were able to bowl teams out a lot quicker than some of the other Division One sides did benefit in a way, or at least adjusted their style to that different point system with less being available for a draw. On the front foot, defending his Balderson for no run. Whilst, you know, it, it's difficult because it's also highlighting what would you like to have players practice more? Is it their technique? Is it gameplay? Or is it having to you know, think really hard how to force a result in four days and potentially be a bit more reckless. As driven firmly, low from toss from Dawson, finds the fielder at mid-off and they managed to get through for a run. 187 for two after 55 overs. Because, you know, it hasn't been around for a few weeks now, but you can never forget Basball. Oh. It's always there. It's always lurking in the corner of the room. Nobody's mentioned it for two days, have we? I don't think so. No, it's been the first time it's been brought up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's like when you're dressing gowns on the back of your door and it freaks you out in the middle of the night because you think it's a person. It's just bad. <laughs> I just feel it's lost a little bit of its aura because of what happened in India. Has it? I think it's, it's, it's almost got so convoluted now that everyone's got a different definition of what it means. And the players are actively going, we do not like this phrase, please stop using it. But then other players are going out in the media and saying quite, you know, I think counterproductive things about the movement. Others, you can tell it's making a real positive to the younger players. And, you know, you look at a player like Zach Crawley and how he's really come out of his shell under that leadership. But I just, I just concern that so many different motives are overlapping now about what this means for the side that I just worry it is interfering with their clarity of, of how they're playing. But also, you know, it's a tough tour going to India, and mm. I don't think anyone really thought they were going to win over there. Fuller to Balderson. Balderson drives straight. That's going for four. Kyle Abbott's not picking that up at mid-off. Just trails the line of the ball as it goes over the rope. That's a nice-looking shot. Balderson moves on to 33. Good to, to partnership developing here between these two. 125, they came together with the crease. 191 for two it is now. I think it'd be interesting if anyone listening has any thoughts on anything we've discussed really over the last half an hour. Solent cricket at gmail.com. Should I say it for a second time for good luck? Go on. Solent cricket at gmail.com or at Solent Sport on X or Twitter, however you like to know it. He's uh, full of down the leg side, bounces just in front of Ben Brown, does well. Do you know what, I was just looking at the table for last year, you were talking about draws and extra points. Lancashire, far and away, had the most draws, 10. The next highest was Somerset with seven, and they were seventh. But Lancashire were 18 points behind Warwickshire, so would have, would have those extra points for a draw this year made any difference? Probably not, actually, that's a big, big gap to make up. I think it, it was tough for Lancashire last year. As we mentioned, the surfaces weren't yeah. conducive to victories within four days. Agreed. Here's Fuller. Balderson just works that square on the next side. Sometimes the weather interfered. I've never been to Manchester and it's not great. Have you never been? No, I, I, no I've been there. Oh, sorry. Maybe eight or nine times now and it's always been raining. I don't think... You know, I'm really not trying to stereotype. I'm finding it quite entertaining at this point. I almost want it to keep raining when I visit because it's a fun story. I can keep adding more and more <laughs> trips onto it. You'll never guess what, it rained again. <laughs> I think it's, it's a miraculous place. And I love Manchester because it's got trams. Right. I'm a massive fan of public transport, particularly trams. I wish Bristol had them. It's, it's my one criticism of, of the city where I live. It's this. It's a bit tramless. No trams. But um, the good thing about um, 
well, Old Trafford especially, the media centre. We love the media centre there. I've never been there. Have you not? So when you've been to Manchester, you've not actually done anything there in terms of work? Nope. It's pushed up towards mid-wicket. Best media centre on the circuit. You can't tell me this now. I've got to try mm. and work out how I can get up there now. Have you got and no games to do up there? I don't think so. And I've just mm. said it rains all the time, so they're not exactly going to invite me in. <laughs> I had to try and get into the Oval the other day after all I've said about Surrey. I thought they were going to arrest me at the gates. <laughs> they almost tried to keep me out by a deceptive doorway, which I just kept pushing to get through three or four times before realising the door said pull. There, you know, it's, it's booby traps everywhere. <laughs> Here's Fuller, Balderson Drive. Doesn't time that one. Comes out towards mid-wicket. It's quite remarkable how much dust is coming off the surface now. I mean, that one was really dug out by Balderson. And, you know, Fuller is bowling a fuller length, but it's, you know, with, with the bad weather we've had around, not for the last few days, but to see the pitch that dry mm, I know. may hint that them. I'd like to think there'll be some turn. I'd love for there to be some turn because you've got two of the best spinners probably playing in the county championship in these two sides just love to see that battle. Well, it'd be nice to see some wickets, I guess, if you're that so inclined. As Balderson pulls that away. There's a man out to a deep square leg. That's uh, Mohamed. No, it's not. It's uh, Ian Holland. And that's just a single. And it's 192 for two. We've got 17 overs to do uh, in the day. With Balderson on 34. Keaton Jennings, who had that life on 36 just before T when he cut James Fuller and he, he got it on the top of the bat. There was no pace in the shot. He couldn't keep it down. And Nick Gubbins put down not a difficult chance at point. And uh, that's proving a bit costly. He's on 62. That's Scott Reed from BBC Manchester and Lancashire is back. And uh, alongside him for the next half an hour will be Melissa Story. Cheers, Kev. Um, we've got 17 overs left tonight. We've got Dawson bowling and probably bowl through most of this of the um, of this final uh, part of the day from the uh, the Hilton Hotel uh, end of the ground oh actually no in saying that we're going to see Tom Prest and Tom Prest uh, coming into the attack at 192 for two so a change of bowling Dawson's quite lengthy spell uh, coming to uh, to an end uh, Prest having performed very well with the bat yesterday he batted really well and said to Kevin last night that it was pretty cool to face Nathan Lyon I could have actually been pretty cool to face Nathan Lyon I, I, I would enjoy it for a, a certain <laughs> you, you know what I would find even cooler being at the non-striker's <laughs> end yeah, that's fair. Nathan Lyon is that's fair yeah yeah <laughs> here comes Tom Prest in a, a bowling oh, Balderson goes right back into his crease. That ball has gone down towards uh, fine leg. And Balderson's got through for, for a single. A little thin edge on that. Moves on to 35. We've seen a couple of deliveries from Liam Dawson from this hotel end. Just grip and turn a little bit. There was one to Balderson just before I went off commentary, actually, which pitched outside off stump and, and turned back in. Balderson left it, went past the off stump. Maybe just signs, perhaps. Well, a little bit of assistance for the spinners here. He's got uh, Lancashire's captain now, Keaton Jennings, on stride. And that's uh, just tickled away off his toes out towards um, deep backwards square leg uh, for a single. He moves on to 63, 194 for two. We've got a few messages coming in. Okay. One just about what me and Kevin were speaking about with private investment in the 100. There's uh, Balderson plays forward in defence, no wrong. We've just got confirmation that essentially the proposal is that host teams get 51%, which they could keep all of, or they could sell to investors. So that's part one. <laughs> Pressed from around the wicket balls. Balderson looks to sweep. It's uh, the pads of Ben Brown, the keeper, no wrong. Isn't this entertaining? The ECB has 49% right. and they will sell 30%. The issue is whether all of this 30% is shared by all the counties, including the hosts, or just by the non-hosts counties. It's uh, 
played down towards fine leg by Bolderson, but for no run. So that issue of things being shared between all of the counties is that 30%, the ECBs, 30%. If that confirms anything for anyone or just confuses them more. I think I'm in the latter camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's pressed into Bobberson who's back and defending. And there's no run. End of Tom Press first over of the uh, of the day. Just uh, a couple of runs off it. 194 uh, for two. Bobberson 35, Jennings on 63. We've also got an email from Chris Maudsley who's mentioned me and Kevin's conversation about which outgrounds he played in and mm -hmm. he said that Lancashire regularly played at Southport in the 80s and 90s he used to very happily get dragged out of the school to <laughs> manage the school board and Mozimacron once handed me his bat as he walked down the S&B steps and I dropped it like a tree trunk <laughs> excellent that's a great good claim memories. to fame yeah good memories yeah, back there again this year, Lancashire at Southport and Burtdale Cricket Club. It's a really nice venue. Really like going to watch Lancashire play there. Which of the venues was it where I think the test match against India got cancelled, but there was a Thunder game happening down the road? And I think lots of people went to the outground. That's right, yeah. And they, they played at Sale Cricket Club. Yes. It was Sale that Thunder were playing. And it was absolutely heaving with <laughs> yeah. people wearing fancy dress. They had to go get extra kegs in behind the bar and food truck showed up and I, I remember seeing all the photos from that and it looked like good fun must have been a fun experience for the Thunder players as well as Holland change of bowling from the pavilion end just as a few stretches at the top of his mark Jennings who's on strike feels like he's been batting for most of the day he's 63 off 147 balls it's been a great inning so far as Holland Comes in around the wicket, down the leg side, and a bit of bat on that. There's enough to get it down to the boundary rope for four. And the score for Lancashire moves to 198 for two. There's been a few of those deliveries, it feels, recently from the Hampshire bowlers. We spoke about how tight their lines were in the afternoon session, but I think there's maybe been four or five which have just been shot down the leg side and either a bit of a tickle or actually Ben Brown can't get his gloves on them and it's just proving to be a bit costly here as Lancashire near the 200 mark having only lost two wickets Holland in again this time a better line on the stumps and pushed a short third for no run the ball is used by uh, Hampshire uh, so far with uh, Mohamed Abbas 12 overs 1 for 41 Kyle Abbott 14 overs for 43 uh, Liam Dawson's ball, 17 overs for 61. James Fuller with that brilliant spell before T, nine overs, one for 21. Tom Preston just bowled his first over. As Holland is in, a fuller ball, another big puff of dust from the surface as Jennings defends for no run. And Holland is now starting his uh, fifth over of the day for 21 runs so far. There's no Keith Barker in this side, mm. of course, and. Felix Organ, who was in and around the team last year, offered some valuable off-spin at times as well. You've still got Nick Gubbins can bowl as an option, a bit of leg spin. As Holland is in, and again, this time on the back foot, punching the ball to mid-on for no run. I would like to see James Vince with the ball in hand. Would you? I just think it would it would be great fun. <laughs> Nothing screams county championship like James Vince taking the final over of the day. <laughs> And maybe getting a wicket caught down the leg side. A bit like the <laughs> Alistair Cook wicket of Ishant Sharma. In comes Holland again. Full and driven up straight to him in his follow through. It's good to get some hands on that one. And just look at as he glanced behind him to check if Bolderson was anywhere outside of his crease. I think the modern player is a bit more aware of their position at the crease after the last few years. You see bowlers all the time, don't you? Now trying to deliberately deflect it back onto the stumps. I would really rather not to get my fingers in the way, to be honest with you. As in comes Holland again. This one's driven past him. Finds mid off. He's striking them firmly. But can't beat the inner ring. 198 for two at the end of the 58th over. This is good from Keaton Jennings and George Bollers. And this is 73 run partnership. And uh, Keaton's batted in the same manner hasn't he really right the way through the his uh, innings Balderson took some time to get off the mark I think he took 12 deliveries to get his first run and he, he came in 
uh, just he heading up towards the tea break with Lancashire on the, the back of a very good spell of bowling by Hampshire. They managed to create some pressure, managed to find the wicket of Josh Bannon. So we had that tricky little spell where he couldn't get it off the mark, got to tea, and he's built on quite nicely since then. We'll continue with the off spin of Tom Press and Paulson looks to try and sweep it. He picks out short fine leg and there's no run. I guess I, I understand what Hampshire are doing here with Press because it's not quite as consistent with Dawson, so the chances of there being a wicket on a surface like this might even be higher. It's a bit, a bit extra loop does Press. He brings Bobberson forward in defence, no run. Because it feels at this point with these two going along so nicely for Lancashire, you almost need a bit of batter error just to find this next breakthrough. They're looking comfortable. Around the wicket again, tosses it up and it's cracked away into the onside. It's a good stop at uh, short mid-wicket. And there is uh, no run. Fletcher Middleton did really well. That was hit pretty firmly by Bolson. Good stop low down to his left by Middleton. Pressed again. A little flatter this time to Bolson. He gets forward and jabs it back down the pitch, and there's no run. On well, 98 for two. Bolson on 35. Pressed in. This is sh uh, short. Bolson off the back foot. He's able to, uh, to drill that away through the offside for a single. Takes him to 36, now it's 199 for two. We were speaking a little earlier about the number of double centuries already scored in mm. this year's county championship. We've been sent a bit of a breakdown for the okay. last few years. Right. It's pressed in balls. Oh, that comes back in towards uh, um, Jennings. He then tries to force it away into the offside. End of the over, um, 199 for two. It's quite unpredictable about how many <laughs> runs are scored so early in the season because this year there's already been four 200 plus scores across Div 1 and Div 2. So four, is it? Four. Okay. In 2023, there was no 200 plus scores in April and only six in total. In 2022, wow. there was 23 200 plus scores in total <laughs> and nine in April. And then in 2021, there was eight 200 plus scores, five in April. Blimey. So that one year in 2022, 23 there was, there was 200 plus scores. And nine in April. And nine in April. Wow, okay. We could be on to challenge that this year. I th this is a very good chance with the way it started, yeah. As in comes Holland. Bowls, full length, I mean, defended for no run. There, I don't know who, who, the, where the stats are, uh, are coming from, but the, there is this general consensus that it's, it is difficult to bat in April and I'm, I'm sure I saw maybe a season or two ago the average over the last 10 years for runs scored in each month of the season and actually April wasn't that bad yeah April was reasonably it was it, the, the averages were actually got worse as Holland is in back of a length fired down the leg side and a dive from Ben Brown he's up to the stumps the ball racing down towards fine leg and away for four as a bass gives up the chase in the end Lancashire score goes past 200, 203 for two. There's not too many people left in the crowd now, but there's still a hearty round of applause. Me. But I know exactly what you mean. And Did you see that as well? We, yeah, and I think we were chatting earlier about, obviously, the, the quality of the pitches being produced early season are really high because the ground staff can focus entirely on them rather than preparing one for a T20 next week, one for a test match coming up in a few days. As Holland is in yep. and a gorgeous on drive, can't beat the fielder. He timed it nicely. They get through for a single in the end, 204 for two. Jennings on 67, Alderson on 37. But I, I, I mean, it's interesting, you know, you do see the, the game where the Duke ball does its thing and a team gets bowled out for low 120-ish scores, but I guess there's still plenty of opportunity to score runs, and this year more than most with these early rounds of, of Kookaburra ball. Outside the off stump, a thick edge to short third, stopped well by the fielder inside the ring. Top ball. I reckon there might be parties celebrating the end of these Kookaburra rounds. <laughs> Pretty sure Durham are going to have a big one. I bet the bowlers are going to arrange a very special party. Yeah. If you're Chris, Chris Rushworth right now, you're yeah. really looking forward to that next round. be a bonfire made of Kookaburra balls. 
sure the plastic covering on them would <laughs> smell delightful when burnt. Outside the off stump and a bit of a loose shot there from Jennings, which is a rare sight. Just had a waft at that one. Goes through to Brown. Good take up to the stump. Stop ball. Turn from four for two. Maybe that could be a ritual. If you burn kookaburra balls and all the county bowlers hold hands and chant at the same time, then in the next round, they'll all get fifers. In comes Holland again, outside the off stump, four again, driving down on one knee as Jennings gets inside edge onto pad. The ball trickles out into the covers, and it's the end of the 60th over, 204 for two, Lancashire. Kent have made a very good start, haven't they, to their reply to the Essex declaration. 530 for seven declared Essex, and Daniel Bell Drummond is 128 not out, and Ben Compton's 92 not out, and Kent to 231 for one. I do wonder, looking at those stats about early season scores, how many of those big scores were scored by Ben Compton? <laughs> those <laughs> quite a few. Quite a few against Lancashire. I think. Two centuries in that lot against Lancashire. It's like bowling at a brick wall. <laughs> Worcestershire have started um, reasonably nicely against Nottinghamshire in their match at Trent Bridge. Pressed in. Paulson tries to sweep through to the keeper. Rob Jones is 92 not out. Worcestershire 181 for four, applying to Nottingham's, Nottinghamshire's 399 all out. Trailed by 220 runs. Press to Balderson. The back foot and plays it back to the bowler. No run. Surrey's lead is 51 now against Somerset at 338 for five. Century for Don Sibley. Ben Folks is 57 not out. And forward goes. Balderson will deflect down to a short fine leg and there's no run. Big start of the season for Ben Folks as well with you always feel sorry for him that every time he's in that England men's squad there's constant speculation about whether his place is safe. Presto Balderson off the back foot. Back to Tom Press and again there's no run. And Durham are 164 for three in their reply to that whopping 698 for three declared by Warwickshire. And another entertaining duck by Colin Ackerman. Excellent. In comes uh, Preston Bowles and Balderson gets forward in defence and again there's no run. It must be utterly heartbreaking to go see so many people go on to score hundreds and, and get a duck. Punched off the back foot by Balderson to Gubbins, an extra cover. Tidy stuff from Prest. It's a maiden, in fact. Not uh, for the want of trying from Balderson. He was doing his best to try and pick out the gaps. That last delivery, he fired it away to into the offside, but straight to Nick Gubbins. End of the over. 204 for two, Lancashire. And they trail by 163 runs. Jennings on 67 and Balderson's on 37. You were saying how when Balderson scored his centuries before he was batting a bit lower down the order. It must be a different sensation for him now, occupying this position higher up the order, forming a partnership with Keaton Jennings and just seeing what kind of role he can offer to this Lancashire team. Just a bit higher up the order, it's outside the off stump. It's this delivery from Holland, driven by Jennings straight to the fielder for no run. I mean, it's, it's such a, a great amount of responsibility and to be with someone at the crease like Jennings, this, this could be a you know a really breakthrough kind of season, you'd hope. Yeah, you've got a couple of places in that in the batting lineup that they're having to try and fill because there's no Dane Velas and there's no Stephen Croft. As Holland bowls full, worked into the onside, straight to the field at mid on. Again, another dot ball. So they've got a couple of spots in the team that they're looking to try and try and fill and um, Balderson has, has been given a chance at four. He batted at four last week against against Surrey. So he got runs last year further down the order. Order he has previously opened the batting as well for Lancashire. It's Holland past the umpire now, and this time he makes great contact down the ground, and away for four runs. Jennings. Every now and again, you just get this bit of firepower when it's in his arc. He doesn't hold back. Moves on to 71 of 160 balls. Lancashire 208 for two. Yeah, that's right in his range, that wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, his eyes lit up, I think, with that one. 
thought it was getting really dark then and realised I haven't taken my sunglasses <laughs> off for about three hours. It's, it's, it's a bit like you're a bit on and off with your sunglasses. I'm the same. The sun's disappeared again. You don't, you don't need them. It's that type of day. In comes Holland. And another powerful stroke from Jennings. Doesn't quite make the contact of the previous ball. It goes out towards deep mid-wicket. Square leg runs round to field. Gets it back to Brown. Single to the total, 209 for two. They might be thinking this is not a bad time to bat now, actually, the way that Jennings has, has just taken a little look at Ian Holland. They've got Holland and, and Prest bowling in, in tandem now. It's right at the end of the day, 60-odd overs old, this, this Cookerbra ball. Jennings has, has batted for most of the day. I'll be looking at this thinking this is actually quite an ideal time to bat and try and press on. As Holland is in, fourth stump line, pushed off the back foot by Balderson to mid-off. There'll be a new ball due pretty much first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so, yeah, they, they might look at this as being, a, and obviously the ball has come back fresh. They might view this as being a challenge just to try, rather than be a little bit cautious and just try and drift to the close of play, these two might look at this opportunity and think, well, actually, we can, we can try and press on a little bit here. It's Holland on the crease again, defended by Balderson. And it's the end of the over, 209 for two. I mean, you know, and sending Hampshire off at the end of the day with momentum on Lancashire's side, just in the back of their head, knowing that they haven't taken the third wicket, particularly after that drop of Keaton Jennings just before tea. I'll just read out this email we've received from Paul Spencer, solentcricket at gmail.com, where previously me and Kev were speaking about how many blue kits there is in <laughs> white ball cricket. There's okay. too many of them. He said, you mentioned the amount of blue kits in English domestic white ball cricket. The 1992 Men's World Cup was the first to use coloured outfits and all of the countries had different coloured kits. They were classics too. I had the red Zimbabwe one. It's pressed to uh, Jennings off the back foot, takes a single to mid off. But he can't find it anymore. He says, I wish I still had it. So that. But he said, do you remember the coral all pink kit that the West Indies wore, Kev? Absolute classic. No adverts on the shirts or any other colours, just pure coral pink. Wonderful. Pressed in to Balderson. There's a little bit flatter and a touch quicker. And he's shuffling back and defending. There's no run. That's from Paul Spencer in Lancaster. Nice. I don't remember that particular kit. I'm going to have to look it up now because I'm a big pink fan. So I... The, the, the one I remember from that World Cup was the Pakistan kit, the kind of vivid green that they that they had. It's played into the offside by Balderson, but for no run. That's, that's the kit I remember from that uh, 92 World Cup. Oh, that's spectacular. <laughs> Looks like something out. I don't know, an Austin Powers film. <laughs> that's magnificent. Pressed to Balderson, going back. Playing the ball safely back to Tom Prest, who fields off his own bowling, and there is no run. 2 10 for two. Do you say the 1992 Pakistan kit? Yeah, no, yeah that's lovely. Iconic kind Lime of green. green. Yeah, it's lovely. Forward again goes Balderson, and there is uh, no run. One I always seem to remember seeing photos of is that New Zealand kit where they were wearing grey. They kind of looked like pyjamas. <laughs> But ones which you've accidentally put in the wash, they were white and then put them in the dark wash. <laughs> Balderson off the back foot. Now he wants a quick single up to mid on here. Just plays it <laughs> off uh, to, towards mid on and, and gets through for a quick single. Pick up an underarm throw towards the stumps by Ali Orr, but he's safely through and Balderson moves on to 38, 211 for two. I fear Ali Orr there looked to move with quite a lot of speed and then as soon as he went down, he kind of fell in slow motion and you can see from the state of his white there's a big clump of mud forming around his knee so the ground staff might be a bit unhappy if there's a dent left there it's always that way at the start of the season i know probably plenty of club grounds around the country who are trying to get pre-season fixtures going or just the early season fixtures going are going to have a, a few players whites looking like they've played a rugby match full driven by balderson straight to the cover fielder Holland continuing here into his eighth over. I've still got stains on my whites from, I think, 2017. <laughs> I can never get them out. Time for some fresh whites this year. Yeah, I'll be lucky whites. Uh, not particularly, oh, no. Right, okay. maybe, I, maybe I should. Can you buy lucky whites? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. need to invest in those. <laughs> yeah. Holland around the wicket, full, driven firmly straight to mid on. 
made good contact with that Borderson. 38. He's done that quite a bit, hasn't he, but he has made quite nice, firm contact with the ball and hit it hard and hit it straight to fielders quite a few times. Which is compared to, as we mentioned, at the start of his innings where he just struggled to get off the mark and looked a bit more tentative in working the ball around. That's really changed now. He's looking so confident in the middle. Holland in tip, back of a length, this time defending, full body behind the bat. 211 for two. A few people just heading towards the gates now, maybe making sure they get home before dinner. No plenty of people are making the most of free after tea here at the Utility Bowl. Oh, nice. That's a good idea. As in comes Holland, straying onto the pads, flicked in the air. Could be a wicket taken at deep mid-wicket. It's Holland. And an important breakthrough. Ali Orr with the catch. And Balderson goes after us saying he was hitting the ball so nicely. He goes for 38, 91 balls. And as we predicted, the wickets which fall are mainly due to a, a batter misjudgment. Mm, picking up the man in the D, was it Tom Press who took the catch? Uh, Ali Orr. Sorry, Ali Orr took the catch. Yeah, frustrating that, isn't it? You can, the way you can tell the way he's walking off and carrying his bat, that he's uh, a little frustrated at... Um, He's picked out Ali or out in, out in the deep. It's a bonus wicket that for Hampshire. These that, them two look really well set. You're kind of almost expecting them to try and to, to get to the close of play and be there again tomorrow morning. I almost uh, I usually dislike using against the run of play, but that, that really it was. Felt a bit, yeah, it, it, did. it it came out of nowhere and as you say the reaction of Balderson showed that he's gonna be frustrated with that one. I just mm. wonder who's coming out to the middle here. For Lancashire, if they'll change up the batting order or stick to the plan. Okay. Well, it looks it looks a bit like Tom Bruce. Yeah, it is Tom Bruce. He comes out to join his captain. He might just be fancying. I mean, we were saying that the conditions look good to bat, and actually that dismissal, Balderson still made a really good contact with it. You almost feel like he didn't quite commit to the shot. He was looking to play it through that region and then hit it airily and then didn't hit it hard enough. But, you know, Bruce might be coming out here to the middle going, it's coming onto the bat nicely. The Hampshire bowlers might be feeling a bit tired. I've got half an hour left. It's not the same as when they're using the juke ball and sometimes the final half an hour of the day can be the hardest. He might just see this as a chance to maybe get a quick 20 runs to his name, bat a bit with the captain and mm -hmm. get Lancashire to a comfortable position if not already very comfortable at the end of the second day. It's 17 last week on his uh, debut in for Lancashire against uh, against Surrey. Had a bit of a collapse last week. They were going along quite nicely, Lancashire. And they lost uh, their last eight wickets for 50 runs, 202 all out, and they were they were 150 for two at T. So it was a bit of a post T collapse against uh, Surrey in the match last week. So he made 17 on his debut, just his second match. He's here for the whole season in New Zealand. Batter, got a very, very good record in first class cricket in New Zealand, averaging, I think, upwards of 50 runs, I think, in, in, in New Zealand first class cricket. He sounds like a really valuable player to have around the changing room. As you say, with that strong record, as in comes Holland, it's edged, and what a catch! One-handed, low down to his left. Liam Dawson. Hampshire have got to catch him first, because first ball, Bruce, the faintest of edges off the bowling of Holland. And that is a remarkable reaction catch. At the end of the day, when the players are just starting to feel that little bit tired, as we just said, Liam Dawson produces some excellence. Lancashire, 211 for four, and Ian Holland is on a hat-trick. It's an outstanding catch, isn't it? Blimey. That's a fantastic reaction catch, low down to his left-hand side for, uh, by, by Liam Dawson. I mean, to, to have got there, actually, to be in a position to react and get there, because it is low down, it's kind of barely ankle height. And then having got there and got something on it to, to get that, the fingers wrapped around the ball and to, 
to not spill it. So it's a, it was a brilliant effort just to get there and then to keep a hold of it. So yeah, fantastic catch by Liam Dawson. And it's little moments like this, isn't it? I was just saying five minutes ago, Lancashire might look at this period now when the ball's not doing much because it's 60 overs old and it's the end of the day and maybe one or two bodies are tired. They might look at this as a chance to try and kind of counter-attack a little bit and press on and actually what we've seen is two quick wickets and all of a sudden Hampshire are up again and they're thinking actually this could be a very very awkward nine overs left tonight for Lancashire to try and bat. Absolutely and you know I think Hampshire if they get to the end of the, the day now of Lancashire four down they'll probably be feeling quite happy of course yes the, there was that dropped catch by Gubbins potentially in dropped catch behind the stumps by Brown but you can see their body language after that dismissal you know sometimes it just takes that that magic moment from one player to really lift up the rest of your team. And as you say, because of that moment, it could be a really crucial finishing period here for both of these teams to see which team comes out on top by the end of the day. Bell, George Bell coming to the middle for a hat-trick ball. That would really be against the run of play if we kind of meandered along this whole day and finished with a hat-trick. But stranger things have happened. There's now a slip, first slip and a third slip, two close catches. James Vince has almost stood right next to the non-striker, Keaton Jennings, who has just watched two quite unusual dismissals, really, the complete opposite of each other. But it's Ian Holland then for a hat-trick ball. Bowling to George Bell. It's full and, oh my goodness, straight through to Brown. There was thoughts of, a, in, thoughts of an edge, thoughts of a stumping. That would have been... A major moment. And Ian Holland's getting the ball to move. We have not seen this yet today. A wicket maiden from Holland. 211 for four after 64. And I'll be handing over to Kevin James for this final session. I don't know what session. the excitement's about. He just played inside the line of that, did uh, George Bell? Let that one go through to the keeper. No problem. That's a brilliant over by Ian Holland. Um, super stuff. Yeah, it's what an interesting... Um, Kind of little twist at the back end of the second day. There's nine overs left tonight, so it's a bit of batting to do. Now Jennings is well set at one end, but now we've got George Bell, who's um, come out to uh, to join him. They're going to take pressed out the attack, and they're going to bring Dawson back in. It's kind of um, a little tiny spell there, Tom Whoa. Press, but Dawson returns, and well, how things can change pretty quickly, Kev. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There is Dawson then to Keaton Jennings, who's unbeaten on 73. Jennings kind of calmly just going back and working the ball away to square leg, but for no run. Uh, Ian Holland has that sort of neck. I remember a, a championship game at Surrey a few years back, a flat, flat over wicket. And Rory Burns was scoring runs for fun. There's Dawson to Jennings, just paddles it around the corner. It's a good stop. A backward square leg, no room. Um, against, against Hampshire usually, but he, he was just in that sort of uh, vein around that time and he was scoring millions and so was everybody else. And, and Ian Holland came on and the wicket suddenly looked different. He, he's, he's that sort of bowler sometimes. Dawson to Jennings. Even more responsibility on Jennings now to try yeah. and get to the close of play. He defends no run. It's because it's, it, it, you know, he looks innocuous. It's just a, you know, what you would call a county medium pacer and yet he, produce, he just every now and then he produces little things like that Dawson from the Hilton Hotel and balls and Jennings turns it away to the leg side again there's no run 211 for four two wickets in two balls for Ian Holland eight overs two for 27 his figures what a handy little role he's played here for, for Hampshire yeah. in this uh, final session Dawson to, to Jennings. It's turned out to mid wicket. Again, there's no run. Every decision that James Vince has made so far has, has worked a little bit, hasn't it? He's, 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 he's made a bowling change and it, it tends to, something tends to happen. Worked with Fuller, didn't it? Before two. Yeah. Floodlights are flickering on as Dawson bowls and Jennings rolls it away through square leg. Again, there is uh, no run. So uh, Liam Dawson coming back into the attack. Starts with a maiden to back up a double wicket over from the, at the other end from uh, Ian Holland, who will be eager to, to have another go. 211 for four, Jennings 73, Bell on naught, floodlights are on. 
And apart from one or two. Apart from one or two bombs, which might need changing. Uh, and there's eight overs left in the day. <laughs> yeah. If you're the um, utility bowl electrician and you were watching the live picture feed, then you think, oh, there's a little job for me there. <laughs> Where's the, uh, the extra long ladders? <laughs> they can get me going up there, I tell you. Scared the life out of me. Uh, we've got eight overs left to do in day two. It, it, the game needed that to move along, didn't it, really? There's still only 14 wickets taken. We're almost halfway in the game. As Holland comes in and uh, Bell pushes forward. I have to say, Ian Holland, or why wouldn't he? He's just coming in just a little quicker. Probably hitting the deck just a fraction harder. That first ball to George Bell. Wow. What, I mean, what, did, what did it miss? I didn't actually... I saw it, but I didn't, couldn't quite work out. Did it... Just missed the bat, just missed the stumps? Both. Everything. <laughs> there he is again. He's got three on the drive on the leg side and two on the off. Forward is Bell. Very difficult being the new batter late on when two wickets have fallen and you're the, the hat-trick ball. You just feel everybody's on top of you, crowding you, not just the bowler, the fielders as well. Almost expecting something where perhaps the... The day was drifting a fraction for Hampshire. They've stayed on it, but in terms of thinking, they would be picking up many more than one wicket. They picked up two. And Bell's forward, and here he is trying to make sure that it's not three, because this would most definitely be a good final hour for Hampshire. But the game is still a long way away, isn't it, from being certain of a result. This is still a good pitch. Not a lot of pace in it. The bowlers are having to work really hard, as Lancashire did. For any anything. And Balderson, I'm afraid, as as one or two others on both sides have done, just given just giving his wicket away. There. And one brought two, as they say, as a drive, and that's going up for four runs. That's a beautiful shot from uh, George Bell. That's the perfect way to answer back when a fielding side has suddenly got their tails up. Yeah, it's a confident lad, George Bell. He's a very handsome looking player when he gets going, plays some lovely shots. Nice way for him to uh, to yep. get going. Beautiful. A beautiful opening to his innings. 215 for four, 152. The Lancashire trail by, so they're just about or they're just about to save the following, <laughs> which I don't think was ever in doubt on this pitch. Holland comes in again. Still an attacking field, a little bit more yeah. leg stumpish, and it's driven up to mid-on. Well, I mean there's, there's this is this is potentially the chance for Hampshire to try and muscle themselves in front there because there's a new ball due first, pretty much first thing tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And they've got through the bulk of Lancashire's batting. Matty Hurst is a young lad who's, who's not really played much first-class cricket. And then you're into the, the kind of the all-rounders a bit, Bailey, Blatherwick and the bowlers. Yeah. So the, the, there's a half a chance here for Hampshire now. Well, the wicket tonight would be certainly handy. Bell plays that late, works that into the gap behind square on the offside or is after it. We'll pick it up inside the rope. They take two, I think they do. And Bell will move on to six at the end of that over. Jennings is still there on 73, having had a life on 36. That's becoming increasingly expensive in terms of time as much as anything else. 217 for four. Lancashire will be determined not to give this up. They're still 150 runs behind. They've got to try and, first and foremost from this position, try and make it um, not safe, but they need to get themselves parity with Hampshire as near as they can and that will take further time out of the game Jennings has battered well and Bell's started positively he's a good player and Hurst clearly has got a bit about him because that's why he's, he's, he's been picked for the first two matches of the, of the season yeah. but there's just a half a chance here isn't there if they can get one more tonight Hampshire yeah. new ball first thing tomorrow morning they could get themselves quite a decent first innings lead here yeah. well, it's just a matter of whether there's time left with this pitch Here's Dawson to uh, Jennings. Takes a single through mid on. Moves on to 74, 218 for four. Uh, all credit to Paul Spencer, who emailed a little earlier, sonandcricket at gmail.com, who was less than complimentary about Ian Holland's bowling. And he has just emailed back to saying that earlier comment was ill judged. That was after Ian Holland was on a hat trick. So well done, Paul, for admitting that perhaps. That first comment wasn't great. It was all right, but it wasn't great. Bell's Didn't think he was going to take a wicket. <laughs> Bell's got two around the bat, and Dawson comes around the wicket to him, and he defends. 
and there's no run. 218 for four. Dawson into his 19th over. He's not got a wicket, but he's done a pretty decent job for, for his side. Unhelpful pitch for the spinner. This bell turns this next delivery to mid on. And uh, a bass fields, and there is no run. Silly point and a slip, and the two close catches around the batter. Fletcher Middleton and James Vince all crouching down. A little flatter this time from Dawson to Bell, who defends. No run. Picked up by Dawson off his own bowling. Wandering back to his mark. It's a short break out of the attack with Tom Prest. The off spinner replacing him. Just gave him a little bit of a breather, but as soon as those couple of wickets fell, he's straight back in. Again, Bell going back, and that gets the... Hampshire Field is a little excited as he defends to the leg side, no run. Gets a bit low as well, isn't it? Mm. Sort of speared in, didn't it? It's one of those Dawson deliveries that uh, just comes a fraction back in with the arm, skids off the turf a fraction. Final ball of the over, then six left tonight. Dawson to Bell, and that's uh, dabbed away off his front foot into the onside, and Kyle Abbott fields at mid wicket. And it's 218 for four. Got a similar uh, couple of emails here from Scott Derbyshire, who's a, a Lancashire fan, sonandcricket at gmail.com. He says, I've been listening all afternoon whilst in the garden digging up tree stumps. <laughs> now I'm sat relaxing with a cold glass of, well, it says Pinot here. I presume he means vino. There is a drink called Pinot. There's a white wine, Pinot Grigio. Could be the, the, well, there is a, yeah, yeah it could Pinot. be that. Actually, it could it mean be that. that. But there is also, Come spelled on, differently, Kevin. there's another drink called Pinot. I don't know oh, if you right. have you ever heard of that. It's, uh, it's, it's very common in the Charente area <laughs> of France, which is mainly a brandy area. But Pinot is sort of a, an offshoot of that. It's a different kind of drink. Yeah, that's true. But it's spelled differently than P-I-N-O. Have you been Googling again? No, no, no. I do know this because I have a friend who, um, when he comes over for dinner, usually brings a bottle of it. Okay. So I do know. Yeah, I do know. But it's not spelled like that. And you're right. I think it could be Vino or Pinot Grigio. Other white wines available. Uh, that's cut down to a backward of point. Uh, watching the live feed, says uh, Scott. And hopefully won't see any more stumps uprooted this afternoon. Keep up the superb commentary. And then he says, I shouldn't have said that email or sent that email. Two wickets have fallen from the next two balls after I pressed go. So, <laughs> there you go. A couple of those emails just changed. But you're right, I don't think any of us were expecting a wicket tonight until George Balderson did what he did. That's cut away and that's going for four. Very fine there from Keaton Jennings. There was width there from Ian Holland. And Jennings picked his gap perfectly past uh, Liam Dawson. You don't want to have anything in the air, go anywhere near Liam Dawson yeah, after that catch. Know. What a catch that it's was. Stunner, wasn't it? I don't think we're going to see many better in the slips for a while. I won't say all season because it's a long season. That was an outstanding catch. Fast, hard, mm. low. Mm. I mean, that was Premier League goalkeepers would have been <laughs> happy getting down as low as that <laughs> yeah. in the near post. It was. <laughs> 2.22 for four. And Holland's at the top of his mark. He's continuing round the wicket. Dawson's been pushed back now down to third. As he comes in again to Jennings, straighter. Jennings playing that up towards uh, mid on. Jennings has 78 from 172. We think he edged one early on to Ben Brown. It sort of flew a little bit off the edge, and Ben Brown wasn't able to hold on to it. That was early on in his innings, and then he most certainly gave a catch to Nick Gubbins at point on 36. Oh, I'm sure I'll ruin those. That's Jennings. Like spatting long. Cuts that away out into the deep where it's fielded by James Fuller, who's had a good day today. Two good spells from him. Got rid of Josh Bohannon, who looked good for his 30 just before T, before he played on. He was a little bit impatient, wasn't he? Josh Bohannon just played a little bit away from his body on the out, just looking to work it away and got a inside edge onto his stumps. But it was a reward that was fully justified with Fuller's spell. I think fair to say and then unfortunately he was uh, the bowler when Jennings was dropped 2.23 for four brings George Bell back on strike to Ian Holland who's over the wicket now from that pavilion end Bell's forward just back to the bowler 
Yeah, I think it was reward for Fuller. I thought I think we were saying at the time, weren't we? We'd, you sensed a little bit of pressure was starting to 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 be built by the Hampshire bowlers. Mm -hmm. Abbott from the pavilion end, and then backed up by Fuller, and Fuller got the reward for it with a dismissal of Bahannon. But it was just it was it was a period in the game where batting looked quite challenging, actually. Yes. Bell gets another length ball, which he plays quietly out on the offside, and that's the end of Ian Holland's uh, over. Ten overs, two for 38. That's a, a good return from him. It's a good return from anybody on this wicket, really, yep. to be fair. 2.23 for four. Got an email here from Jamal Makloof, solentcricket at gmail.com. He says, sorry, Hampshire fans. I've been out all day. First ball after I get home wicket, and now another. So can only assume that we would have more <laughs> if I'd been at home all day. Well, that's probably true so we'll blame you Jamal <laughs> for Hampshire only picking up four wickets all day and they've got five overs left to, to try and get another one I think it's your captain Keaton Jennings is on strike Dawson in balls Jennings plays it back to uh, to Dawson 79 not out Keaton Jennings 223 for four Evening sunshine. Mm. Down the pitch he comes, works out to the right of Middleton, who's at uh, forward short leg, takes a single. Moves on to 80 now, 224 for four. There was another part to Jamal's email, but it, uh, I won't embarrass Melissa. It just said, great to hear Melissa back. Best young commentator about. Anyway. Oh, well, she is an award winner. She is an award winner. Mm -hmm. and Dawson left arm round the wicket balls. Forward goes Bell and defends, <laughs> and there's no run. Is that going on your Twitter feed, Mel? <laughs> <laughs> Two twenty-four for four. Bell on six. Jennings on eighty. And Dawson stands at the top of his mark off maybe five or six paces and bounces in and fizzes one in towards Bell this time reaches for it gets a good stride in Bell batting front of the pad the ball rolls down towards Abbas who's at mid on he scoops it up and walking backwards throws it towards Dawson who settles back into the top of his mark and brushes him past the umpire and balls again to Bell it's just worked off his front pad out towards the, the leg side where Kyle Abbott comes round from mid wicket to field. Bell moves on to seven now, 225 for four. There is this ball that Liam Dawson's developed that looks as though it's just like every other ball yeah. that just sort of comes out of the hand and well, there's, no, there's no turn. But every, about once or twice in overnight, he's getting this ball just to curve in a fraction, isn't he? Just spears in a little bit. It's rolled away through the onside by Jennings. Again, just for a single, moves on to 81 now. 226 for four. End of the overs up as well. Four overs left tonight. And the sun gets a little stronger, which is most welcome. It's nice and bright out there. So 141, the difference between these two sides as we head towards the halfway mark in the game. For me, the pitch has got to deteriorate a fraction for, for us to really have a... I, d I, I don't know. I would guess I don't think either of these sides wants to give the other one mm. too much. I know what you said about Dale Benkenstein, who wants to play a bit more positively. Maybe that may happen. I think that's in general over a course of the season. Yeah. I think you, you, your first, your second game into a match, effectively your first because of the rain last week. You're playing against a team that's a potential rival for a yeah. top spot. It's a long, it's a long season to give too yeah, much away. Yeah, I agree, and I think these two sides would expect to be there or thereabouts, won't they? So, yeah, second game of the season. I mean, yeah, would you set a side on this? Would you realistically think you can bowl a side out on this mm. in less than a day? Which effectively it will be, wouldn't it? Here comes Abbott, and Jennings plays that late into the gap square on the offside. And he will pick up a single, moves on to 82. So, yeah, something's something's got to happen. Maybe. Some rough, a bit more rough for Lyon and Dawson to bowl into before either side can get excited about even thinking they can take 10 wickets. Just don't see that happening. I think we're going to be playing this game out until somebody either has a bit of a collapse. Mm -hmm. 
think we're going to have to play to a result, which I just don't see it personally. And as you said, I think there's a little bit of rain on Monday, just a little. I think in the morning there is, yeah. yeah. So we might lose just a little bit of time there. That I think will be. That certainly won't be helpful. I remember two years ago in this fixture there was rain all day, wasn't it? Yeah, day four. It was. Yeah. We hung around for ages, didn't we, on that fourth day? Yeah. Well, I think Hampshire had sort of hopes of bowling Lancashire out. It's Abbott bowls. It's driven and well stopped by Gubbins diving to his left at short mid wicket. One of two. Yeah. I mean, the wicket was a little bit more helpful, wasn't yeah, it, I think it, it was, yeah. for that game? So I think Hampshire were hoping that uh, they would at least. Well, they had to take all 10 Lancashire wickets in that game, didn't they? On that last day to even have a hope of winning that. But there was no chance, really. It was, if it didn't rain all day, it was pretty close mm. to it, wasn't it? It was just low cloud and yep. just not very nice. Abbott Bell plays it into the ground, out into the covers. Abbott's been good today, just hasn't uh, picked up a wicket. Abbas. This was good, picked up the first one at Luke Wells and chipped to mid wicket. I think almost Fuller got his wicket. I thought that's he had a little three over spell, Abbott, before Fuller came on. Yes. And Fuller got behind him, but I, th I thought he was set up a little bit with the way that Abbott started. It was a bit of teamwork from that far end between Abbott and, and Fuller, I think, to create that pressure that Agreed. resulted in the mistake then. It was a good combination, wasn't it? As Abbott comes in the game, and another good length ball from Abbott. I said earlier that uh, he's running in well. I know it's, it's his first bowl of the season, so you would expect that. But uh, he does look fit. He does look lean. He looks very hungry to have a good season this year. It must take a while, though, Kev. I mean, I know it's the first game. Sure everyone's loads of energy and stuff. But to get back into the grooves and rhythms of fast bowling, mm. you can't, can't just rock up and do it, can you? I agree. And he didn't, uh, it, as, as far as I know, he didn't play any cricket of note during the winter. Nothing in South Africa. Bell plays that out into the covers. He, he may have played some club. I just don't know. I didn't ask him that, actually. But uh, pre-season, I think uh, he, he felt good. He, as I say, he took four wickets in one of the days play here against Worcester. And I know they were affected a little bit by rain, but um, I think he did enough bowling that he was happy and everybody else was happy. And they got enough cricket in pre-season to sort of justify sort of going into last week. Right. You know, feeling okay. I don't, what was your pre season campaign this year? They went to um, India. Oh, did yeah, they? Yeah, they played a, a three day match in India. Oh, okay. Abbott to Bell. Full Bell works that to short mid wicket. Come for the Yorker there, I think, Abbott. End of the over. We've got three overs to do. Lancashire 227 for four, trail by 140. Well, that's a trip, isn't it? Mm. Pre season and a half. Yeah, I think they played some, a T20 game or a couple of T20 games, but a 50 over match, and then they played against a state side in, in India for a three day match. And then they had a game against Loughborough scheduled. I don't think they played. Um, but when they returned to this country, I think they had a three day game against Loughborough, but I say I think the rain pretty much washed it out. Nothing against another county then? No. 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 So nothing on English pitches, really. Just just yeah. India and then straight mm. into it. We were um, commentating on the pre-season tour of India. Were you? Yeah. With Dawson balls and Jennings plays it off the front foot into the offside for no run. From Manchester? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was uh, getting oh, to... Right. We did it from, from the ground, from Old Trafford. Uh -huh. And we were there at half three in the morning. Commentated in from the ground on, oh, on, the, on the, the players out in uh, in India. Yeah. Okay. It was an experience to be there at half three in the morning. <laughs> Dawson <laughs> balls to Bell. That's worked out to mid wicket and through he goes for a single. He moves on to eight, two twenty nine for four. But it, I mean, it was an outstanding effort to have got. They they sent. Um, as we welcome uh, sports extra listeners here to the. Uh, Utility ball. We've got uh, Dawson bowling for uh, for Hampshire. Jennings, a Lancashire captain on strike, is off the back foot this delivery. Just defended away into the offside for no run. Two twenty nine for four. Um, it's been quite a, a a lively half an hour here, where it looked like Jennings and Balderson were just um, going to see through the day and get Lancashire into a pretty healthy position with wickets in hand. 
and he defends Jennings. It's rolling up towards mid off and there's no run. And then two wickets in two balls. Ian Holland. First George Balderson picking out uh, Ali Orr at deep mid wicket. And then uh, the very next delivery, Tom Bruce edged behind and, and Liam Dawson took an absolutely sensational one handed low catch to his left hand side. Two wickets in two balls. George Bell survived the hat trick ball, which was a very, very good delivery by Ian Holland. And now Lancashire 229 for four, still trailed by 138. Captain still going, Jennings on 83. And this has worked out towards mid wicket. And there's no run. Scott Reid and Kevin James with you. We've got two overs left today. Yeah, it has livened things up a little bit because this game does feel like it's going to be a draw here. You can't really see a side bowling the other out twice, not with the conditions here as they are. Dawson to Jennings, flatter and quicker, and he takes a single and just working it across his front pad through mid wicket. Takes one, moves to 84. Dawson collects his cap. He'll have one more over tonight, it would look like. We've got two left. Abbott bowling from the far end, Lancashire. 230 for four, trail by 137. Well, I think today is very much mirrored yesterday, where you think, certainly from a batting point of view, somebody looks like they're just going to start to make an impression, and then they've gone. And we saw that on two or three occasions yesterday with the Hampshire batters, Vince and Gubbins especially, yesterday afternoon. And then we, we saw that at the start of the Lancashire innings. Here's Abbott round the wicket. He's bowled well today without much luck. Outside the off-stunt kick, Jennings is not tempted. Luke Wells had played f brilliantly for his 55, didn't he? 69 balls was looks on top of the bowling. And then he just chipped a bass to mid-wicket. Just fell over it a little bit, didn't he? Really wasn't quite in control of the shot. And it was a good catch by Tom Prest at short mid-wicket, low down. Josh Bohannon looked good for his 30, didn't he? Bright and breezy and then... James Fuller bowled a terrific spell, didn't he, before yep. tea? Just accurate, but a little bit more pace. And Josh Bohannon tried to work him through the offside, bat a little bit away from the body, got an inside edge onto the stumps. Jennings works that onto the leg side for a single. Moves on to 85, 231 for four. Lancashire trail by 136. And Balderson and uh, Jennings put on 86, and then Balderson just chipped Ian Holland out in the deep mm. mid wicket. And you think, what, 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 why have you done that? He looked comfortable for his 38, and it's been a bit, pretty much a story of that, hasn't it? Yeah. Throughout both sides' innings. Yeah. I mean, Hampshire were batting. The Gubbins and Vince both got to 50, thinking one of them could perhaps go on. And then um, Prest and Dawson get into the 80s. Yeah. Dawson won a four wickets today that fell, that completed the Hampshire innings. That's worked down to fine leg by... George Bell, and he moves on to nine, and it's 232 for four. I think what we've seen across the two days so far is some very good bowling, actually. I'm, I'm sure around the grounds, the conversations have been about the Cooker ball being used and the effect and the impact it's having, and that's clearly been seen on the scores. Here, I don't know, it just feels like maybe a slightly different tale to it a little bit. Um, Tom Bailey last night said, look, we, we got away with it a bit when you look at the scores elsewhere. It looks like the, the bowlers have had, to a degree, a decent amount of control through the course of the first couple of days, I think. Yeah, it's been some good bowling all mm. round. Here's uh, Abbott. Bowls and uh, Jennings just gets turned around a fraction, but he still managed to steer the ball towards the mid-off uh, area. I don't think anybody's bowled a bad spell. And... Because the pitch is, is, is a slow of nature, isn't it? So if the ball is in the right areas, it's quite difficult to pierce the field. Um, but it's not done a lot. The new ball has done a little bit. Will Williams, I thought, was a bit unlucky when he opened up. Tom Bailey was there or thereabouts always. And certainly Abbas and Abbott have been. Fuller, been good today. Everybody, every, you know, everybody on both sides. The spinners, Nathan Lyon, certainly pushed out on the offside and there is uh, no run so n they've never really allowed the batters any rope what what hay the batters have made they've done it because they're good batters yeah but it's never lasted as long as you thought it might no you you, you would expect when you again you look at the scores elsewhere you're expecting somebody in the in this lot to have got a century so far yeah there's four batters in the Hampshire si uh, side that have got to at least 50 two got into the 80s we've had Jennings in, into his 80s now. Wells got to a 50 as well, but no one's gone on yet and got a, a big score that, you, no. that you've seen elsewhere. Because the bowling's always been at you, isn't it? Always. 
Jennings plays inside the line, lets that go past. That's the end of the penultimate over of day two. With Lancashire 232 for four, deficit of 135. But Jennings has had his luck. Yes. Yeah. Dropped just before T by Nick Guppins at cover point. He'd take that. I said, I've said at the time, 19 times out of 20, I would say 39 times out of 40, wouldn't you? And yeah, it, just, it, was it, it wasn't hit stronger. hard, no, was it? It no. was a bit of a loopy cut shot that came off the top of the bat. And Jennings thought he was out. He the minute the ball left the bat, he thought he was out, didn't he? You could see. Yeah. And somehow Nick Gummins put it down. It happens. But that, that, and that was off James Fuller, which was very unlucky because he was bowling particularly well at the time. And um, we think that there might have been an edge through to Ben Brown earlier in uh, Keaton Jennings' innings, which actually the ball did deviate after the edge, didn't it? Which made it difficult for Ben Brown, but even so, two hands in, out. So Jennings has had to, even had to have his bit of luck to get to 85. The final over of the day will be sent down by Liam Dawson, his 22nd of the day. Left arm around the wicket to George Bell, young right-hand batter for Lancashire. And that's worked away into the offside, and there is uh, no run. But there's no doubt about it, the excitement of the day was those three or four minutes just <laughs> before six o'clock. When Ian Holland just bowled medium pace, what's not to like, but what nothing nothing brilliant. Two wickets and two balls. Dawson to Bell. And that's clipped towards Abbas at mid-on, and there's no run. Great excitement, wasn't it? All around the ground all of a sudden. <laughs> we were all settling in for, you know, Lancashire just getting to the close. Two down. And to be honest, <laughs> it's about as close as you can get to having a hat trick without actually getting one. <laughs> it was a good ball. Yeah, it was a good hat trick ball. Dawson to Bell rocks onto the front foot. He's got a, a good stride in. He's not a tall man, Bell, but as much as he can get right forward with his bat in front of his pad, he has done. The ball bouncing back down to Dawson. So three deliveries left of the day. 232 for four, Lancashire trail by 135. Dawson has twirled away for 22 overs from the Hilton Hotel end of the ground. It's off the back foot by Bell. He looks to try and carve it through the offside. And it's um, stopped by James Fuller at uh, extra cover, tumbling away to his right. Again, there's no run. So two balls left, slip and a forward short leg. Another two catches close and around the bat. Bell thinks of taking one. His captain says yes. And he just guides that one behind square on the leg side. Looks up to his skipper and he was halfway down. So they do cross for, for one. And it's now 233 for four. And with one ball left of the day's play, Lancashire will have, within the first kind of half an hour or so, to 130 behind, so still work to do with the bat in this first innings for the Red Rose. Final ball of the day, Dawson will ball over the wicket to Jennings. And Jennings plays forward in defence and there's no run. Tucks his bat under his arm and makes his way out towards the, the pavilion. Um, interesting couple of days. It, there's been quite a, quite a bit to talk about in this, in this game. It's not been all one way, it's not been batters bossing it all the way through that's not been the story of this fixture here so far in its entirety 233 for four Lancashire deficit at the close of play on day two is 134 runs thanks very much Scott thank you very much uh, Scott will be back tomorrow I'll be back tomorrow and uh, Melissa will be back tomorrow as well and uh, and the analyst Simon Hughes uh, will all be with you and I think there's a bit of Dave Allen as well the honorary archivist just for a little while in the afternoon session so there is a plethora of um, commentators for you to enjoy tomorrow. Hope you've enjoyed today. We've enjoyed today. See you just before 11 o'clock.